Hello and welcome to the weekly Inside the Lab live experience. I'm Terrence, your host and conductor and operator of this here live ride, and I am thrilled to have you here with me today on this Sunday, which again, our live show is normally on a Saturday, if you're just now tuning in or you're watching on a replay and you're curious. Uh, our live show normally is on a Saturday about three or four o'clock, but I had to flex it to a Sunday and nonetheless, but here we are, you know, here we are in this, it's beautiful Sunday. We're not going to keep everybody too long, but this is one of the most important topics, arguably that we will most likely cover multiple times here on this channel. And that's just a few things to look out before, not even a few, more specifically five things you should know before buying or, you know, building a gaming PC here in 2021. And as the market continues to shift, or continues to change right and this is happening at a dynamic pace or a dynamic rate gpu prices right no stranger <clears throat> excuse me no stranger here to most of us in the community because this is something we talked about so many different times on so many different occasions but with the gpu um scarcity issue continuing to run rampant across the market or the industry right and even higher end cpus like the 5800X and the 5900X and the 5950X are very much still a little difficult to find, not because they're being scalped, because some instances you might could pick one up on the used market. And it's sad because I say the used market, although the CPU likely isn't a used product, it's brand new sealed in a box and it's still very much selling for about 100 to $200 more. So there's that's still that issue even on the CPU front and the GPU issue continuing to, you know, uh, get worse if you will um it's important to continue to address this conversation for those of you who are looking to build or buy a gaming pc in 2021 if you're here on the live stream now and say i already have you say lab i already have my pc i'm not looking to build or um you know buy a, a pre-built gaming pc well you could very much still add value to the conversation and add topic or or, or add value to the conversation and to the topic my bad um, but, and I also do want to apologize for the late delay, the late response literally before, uh, before I went, before I was getting ready to go live, right at about one forty-five, our internet just went out. Like I noticed on the restream chat just kind of disappeared and it was like, please reconnect to the internet. And I had temporarily lost, temporarily lost internet connection. So that sucked a little bit, but hello and welcome to everybody. I'm so, uh, so thrilled to have you here. We're going to jump right into it. In a second, as more people roll in, I saw early in the chat we had a few people to check in a little early. Crazy 1K and Tricyon and Z Fluid and Bad Habit and Thunder. Gentlemen, it's good to see you as always. If any of you are still present here in the live show, it's good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this flexed Sunday live stream. Over on social media, I said I was willing because I still, after the anniversary live stream, I was in like a, a certain place that as a creator, I guess that just I felt really positive and really good about what we're doing here in this community. And after that live stream, I went back and even still, you know, watch it again myself as a viewer, although I was there I and produced, you know, the live show, the anniversary live stream. I went back and watched it as a viewer and I just was inspired by myself. You know what I mean? And so it was just a great time and it was a great experiment, something that, uh, of course, we're going to continue to do. And if you're, you know, here right now with this on this live stream or if you're on the you're watching on the replay and you're like, what the heck are you guys and gals even talking about? We're talking about our anniversary live stream that aired on Tuesday. It's about an hour long, but it's a very uh, it's a very straightforward, linear live stream right so it does have high replay value i know some of you that are here have watched the replay or some of you that were uh present during the live show but you you uh fam you guys know <laughs> just as well as i do how uh how good of a time that was and just <clears throat> excuse me how different it was from our traditional weekly live q a where i normally will jump in and, and engage with the chat, as I see, we have uh, Sparta Rules. Anthony, brother Anthony, has decided to step in. And Thunder, of course, saying hello. But normally, I will, you know, I will do that. But in the anniversary live stream, it was just pretty much a. I wanted to have the feeling of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, 
I guess personally, like now when I feel like I'm talking to the community, I'm, t I'm addressing everybody, if you will. And I guess you could say I was addressing everybody in the live stream or the anniversary live show, but I wanted it to feel personal, right? A, a, few, do a few dozen people can watch it, sure, but each individual, individual set of eyes, I wanted that moment or experience to feel personal so i really think we were able to achieve that in the anniversary live stream so if you haven't just seen it i highly recommend you give it a watch it's an hour please 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 only watch it if you have about a netflix what i call a netflix hour you say what's a netflix hour you know you can sit down and watch a netflix show uninterrupted or maybe pause it to take a bathroom break or get something to eat or attend to the children or, or your pets or what have you but if you got a netflix hour definitely give it a watch um i shared a lot of personal and just just some of a little bit more about myself in that anniversary live stream you're definitely going to want to give that one a watch but um in this live stream, we're talking about five things you should know before buying or building a gaming PC. And now before we jump into it, as more as we continue to have more people roll in, we're going to switch over to everybody's favorite segment. Here recently, we started doing housekeeping in the beginning and then house cleaning towards the end for just in case we've had viewers come on that were present for the housekeeping segment in the beginning, but they had to check out and leave the live show before the conclusion and maybe we had some people you know vice versa come on and before they leave so we do it in the beginning we do it in the end it's house housekeeping in the beginning and house cleaning at the end just a little fyi as this show continues to evolve during the anniversary live stream we talked about the history of the live show and then the future of the live show and how i believe this is live stream number 32 dose for those of you who are not fluent in the espanol but this is live stream number 32 and so the live stream will very much continue to evolve especially as we get closer to the halfway mark right we get close and by the halfway mark because 100 just seems to be you know a milestone that at least on social media right in terms of social media and especially right here on youtube right when you're first starting out and you're trying to get you know you like you start out from a goose egg like a brand new channel and you're trying to get your first 100 subscribers when you get there that's like a a pretty memorable you know a, a pretty memorable moment in your journey as a creator as you can see back here maybe you can't because it's a little far far away but as you can see back here i have my uh my milestone printed out and plaqued from the uh from the tube buddy app not sponsors of the channel but if you are a creator or a future creator you want to know what the heck is TubeBuddy, buddy you can find the link down in the description box below it's completely free to sign up it is an affiliate link so should you want to uh level up your game at some point in your content creation journey i will receive a very small kickback but um it's good the folks over at tube tube buddy sees that you know we have creators in this community who would like to use their browser extension so even if you just sign up for the free version under my link it still it shows to it it shows to buddy that i am able to you know provide interest in their product right amongst our cre creator community of creators but if you're not it's perfectly fine no obligations no obligations there and before we go off too far on this tangent let's just jump right in to house cleaning right or housekeeping sorry in the beginning is housekeeping and is house cleaning but really fast let's just run through it really quickly because i know some of you here i say you know what lab i've sat through this so many times well are you on our email list i hope you are unity starts with you our community discord right those of you who are in our community discord thank you for accepting the invite link it's one thing to sign up for the email list and receive you know the content in, in this extended form but it's another once you receive that invite list for our discord to join our discord uh, i'm going to continue to get better to engage with the community it just started out like i don't even think it's two weeks old but i have found myself checking my discord more than say my instagram and my twitter i will normally go to discord <clears throat> excuse me i got my water today it's a little it's a little hot in here we're, we're coming up on the warm weather here in this part of the lab we got to get a uh, some type of ac or a fan but i do have my water for her for those hot takes or those hot moments but you're going to want to sign up for our email list sign up for our email list to receive all notifications about any upcoming programming that's going to change with the channel or any upcoming extensions of content say i say our discord or our future facebook group and channel memberships and just other helpful bits and other products and helpful information that 
may provide you with clairvoyance in, in your PC gaming journey. It's totally free to sign up. All I need is your email address, right, and your first name so we know where to find you, what to call you. Very important. Unity does start with you. And also, I don't send out a lot of emails, and when I will start to kind of, when I will start to engage more with the email list, it will be far and few in between, meaning maybe up to one or two emails a month. And if you are a subscriber already to the email list and you do want to sign up for our Discord, right? If you're hearing a lot, if you're hearing a replay and you made it this far, you're like, oh, you know, inside the lab, you guys have a community? Sure, I love to join. Sign up for our email list. Links are all down in the description box below, aka the basement to all of these um, what all of these sites that we're going to go over really quickly here in our housekeeping segment. You can find starting with the email list. You can find that link down in the description box below. And also, please do not leave quite yet. Wait till the end of the live show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those links aren't going anywhere. They will be down in the description box below. So jumping over to our merch because everybody we had a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive feedback here recently on some of our merch some of our recent editions some of our recent series or graphic series as you can see here we have our i am i test our the plug graphics edition stickers even if you just want to say well i don't really want to wear any of your merch lab but i will rock a sticker that's awesome too and i appreciate every single um import, uh, purchase that comes from the website everything is priced modestly i will receive a small profit but i do want to make the merch accessible before i look to make a profit off of march off of merch but there's some really cool gear over here and most recently with the no player in the wild graphic series being one of my favorites and one i will likely probably end up picking up here soon because i really like i really like this shirt but you can depending on where you are in the world right now it's not necessarily hoodie weather but it looks even cooler and the hoodie variant but depending on where you are, like right now over here, over on the East Coast where I'm at, look in the tri-state area, uh, hoodies are practically pretty much out. Like I wore mine earlier to get my coffee this morning and to run errands and I was burning up. So I'm about to pick me up an Inside the Lab t-shirt or a, a specific Inside the Lab t-shirt, right? Maybe like the, uh, maybe the plug or even the PC Gamer. I like this one too. I also like the mug edition which comes in a hoodie and t-shirt if you wanted to, you know, rock the channel logo. Every purchase here goes a long way and really helps support the channel in a very big way. So I will greatly appreciate it. And if you do, <clears throat> if and when you do get merch, take a picture, share it on your socials, tag me and get my attention. And I will share a video reply, If depending on the platform, obviously. If it's on Instagram, I can't necessarily do that. But if it's on Twitter, I can add a short video reply. So if you're on Twitter and you get your merch, take a picture, leave me a little message and tag me in it. And I will retweet you and, and you know, reply with a video message, a special thank you outside of just like a, you know, text format. But yeah, all good stuff. You can you can head over there with the links down in the description box below. If you had any, if you have any disposable income, even if it's a sticker fam, like I don't even care. You know how much a stick, this purchase here could go a long way to support the channel. It just really does. It's small amounts add up, right? But even if it's a sticker, taking pictures of, Hey lab, I picked me up, you know, channel logo sticker. Or I picked you up channel name stickle, <clears throat> excuse me, sticker. There we go. I can't talk today. I got to slow it down. <laughs> but if you tell me you picked up a sticker, take a picture, let me know. Tag me over on your socials, man. I would love to send you a video reply. I tried doing it on the Discord, right, uh, with a few one of our Discord community members, and I found out I'm going to have to upgrade the Discord to Nitro. So if we get the Discord up to, like, 50 people, we're definitely going to upgrade it to Nitro, fam. That way I could send video messages and video replies in the Discord. That kind of ticked me off when I saw that was behind a paywall, essentially. So, But it is what it is. It is what it is. Definitely check out the merch, though. Check out the merch if you're feeling spicy. Get yourself some swag, some inside the lab swag, what we call it labware. So pick up some labware. I have some I have a really cool project that's going to be hopefully put into fruition coming up towards the later, the second half of 2021. That's going to involve merch and more merch and just, you know, promotion in the way we're going to market the merch. Really fun stuff. So you're going to want to definitely keep a lookout for that um, in the future. And of course, community members and everybody will be kept up to date first and foremost our discord converse it's called converse but our discord community so important to me so important that i cultivate our discord community similar to 
the way we cultivate the community right here on YouTube. They're both equally just as important to me. Hence the reason why I go back and I will check Converse. I'll check our Discord community before I will check my IG uh, direct messages and even my Twitter direct messages. So usually, I mean, it, it's perfectly fine to send me a, a, a Instagram DM or a Twitter DM. I'm not saying don't do it. You got to only send me a message over on uh, Converse, over on the Discord. But when it's, when it's Discord, when it's over on Converse, it's a little bit more personal because I am able to immediately directly assist and aid the community when it's in discord versus on ig or twitter i normally get random messages from you know just internet while people out on the internet that's out in the wild needing help or answer a question and just because i really enjoy helping people in this journey i don't i don't ask are you subscribed to the channel i don't ask are you following me i don't ask none of those things are you on discord i don't ask i would just help them out but at the end of the conversation, I say, hey, you know, we we talk about these things over on the live stream or we talk about these things extensively over on the channel. You're going to want to make sure you're either subscribed or sign up to our email list so you can be notified of that content. If it's, you know, should you feel the need that it could help you or benefit you in some way. So long rant over. Sign up for those things. Check out the merch down in the description box below. Jump over to the last um, the last area that you could support the channel in a super direct way, and that's of course heading over to our InsideTheLab.net website. The, the website, you can almost say it's in a beta form. I'm constantly still adding to it, trying to make it robust, trying to make it worth visiting, right, with our community blog, our social media, where you can find all of our social media. In one tightly knit place, you can contact me directly if you want to do it in a formal way. Um, Excuse me, you can check out our complete videography, the about me section if you want to learn more about me, Terrence, right? I'm not going to, and I tell you this every time, I'm not heading over there. If you want to see what's there, head to InsideTheLab.net. Not doing a live stream, though. Wait till after the live show concludes. Then you can head over there. But you can check out all the merch in one spot, learn more about the merch and the mission behind the merch and just the, the, our whole entire videography. If you say, you know what, well, I want to see what was your first video like, and you, know, you don't necessarily want to do it over on the YouTube just head here to the inside the lab.net website. The website is an extension of the content and I am content. I will continue to add content over here on the website as we continue to evolve and level up the channel and level up the content. We're just going to continue to level up family. Think of it like a Pokemon, right? Think of it like a Pokemon, but all three of those sites, you can uh, head, head over to down in the description box below and they really support the channel in a big way now let me switch back here all right let me jump over to the chat really fast before we jump in tristan says with nitro boosters you can send up to 100 megabytes yeah so i saw that when when i tried to send my reply video to to cliff ivan and i saw that notification popped up oh like, okay that's all right what do we gotta do upgrade to nitro let's upgrade to nitro then because i wanted to send a, a video response to cliff um you know purchasing the stickers and so I couldn't, so I had to make, you know, take a little generic picture. Tristan says, only up to 8 megabytes, but you can still send it. Yeah, and you know what? I saw that, but you'd be surprised. Under like a 20, 30 second clip, I still couldn't share it. You know, 20, 50, it's like just enough for maybe a picture, but like a, a, uh, like a video. So the files are just so big. Mrs. Ma says, level up, level up. Yeah, I would sing the Sierra song, but I'm afraid we might get... It might get copyright, <laughs> but yeah, level up, level up, level up, level up, level up. Tracy says, yeah, you can send vid, you can send vids, files, and pics for free though, bro. Yeah, and so I saw that, but again, I wanted to personalize it with the video message, and Discord was like, no, 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 that's not happening, that's not happening. But yeah, I mean, I did, and I did end up just sending just a regular picture over to him, but. Um, it, I mean, it's Converse, so I wanted to make it just a little bit more personal and a little bit more engaging. So, I mean, that don't worry, because that right there is enough to make me want to consider upgrading to Nitro. I had saw Nitro, and there's some other caveats that come along with upgrading to Boost. So, um, I just maybe needed like one or maybe one more other reason why to upgrade to Boost. But like I said, as our Discord community continues to grow... And get bigger then so will the discord aesthetic if you will will continue to improve and will continue to get better get bigger right to compensate for that ever-growing audience that we continue 
to want to continue to get big right so yeah again if you're new here first you're going to want to do is do be sure to give this stream a like and if you're watching on the replay or if you're watching now which i believe most of you already are but if you're here on the replay and i don't want to assume anything hopefully this live stream is the live stream where i would have earned your subscription not just asking hopefully i would have earned your subscription that i am entertaining or education enough educational enough providing you helpful and informative valuable content and that i will have earned your subscription and i do welcome you to subscribe because we have a lot of interesting and fun content coming up here in the month it may seem like it's going to slow down i will say that but that's only because the planning of the anniversary live stream took up time for production for some of our normal vods so that kind of pushed it back by a few days but don't worry we're going to be back up to our normal viewing schedule now speaking of let's jump right into it and as we have more people join in i do want to welcome you to the inside the lab live experience and if you're here on the replay i also want to welcome you to the inside the lab live experience but let's jump right over here and jump into it because this in sun this sun, sunday's live stream or this topic is of course five tips that you should know or that you i mean let me say it with a sense of urgency five tips you need to know before building or buying a gaming pc here in 2021 these are tips that have helped me up until this point tips that i have deployed when helping servicing other client systems or consulting other clients consulting people right here on the web if they are they could be six seven months down the road from even preparing to build their system these are some of the five tips some of these five tips here that i'm going to share with you during this live stream have helped me so the goal is to make sure i present this content in a very clear and direct way that it is able to help you you as well even if you are already a builder even if your system is already built maybe you have a friend or a mate or a partner or a family member who wants to get into PC gaming and maybe you just don't have the words to help deter them from some of the nuances that are often brought up with PC gaming. Fam, you know what I'm talking about. If you are here with me right now, you and I both know at some point in your PC gaming journey, when you have discussed the benefits and maybe even the, the cons, right? The ups and the downs of PC gaming you likely have had an un you know a, a very uncomfortable conversation with a friend right with a mate so this is what we're going to talk about in this live stream right and that's five things you should know before building or buying a gaming pc in 2021 rather that could help a friend or that could help you because if you're brave enough to build a gaming pc in 2021 or if you want to know if a pre-built gaming pc is any good or just an overall good way to get into PC gaming. Maybe you're like, well, I'm unsure. Should I build or should I buy a pre-built gaming PC lab? You, you know, community, holla at me. You guys tell me, right? But in this live stream, I'm going to help you address some of those nuances, address some of those issues, okay? And talk about five, five things you need to know, okay? Five things you need, you need to know. And most importantly, you should consider here in 2021. That is what we are discussing in this live stream of, and of course, answering any and all of your questions along the way. So if you're new here and you're just now, or you're just now joining us, if you're new here or you're just now joining us, I want to again, officially welcome you to the Inside the Lab weekly live experience, our weekly live experience show. If you didn't know, I'm Terrence, your conductor, host and operator of this here ride. And without, with that out of the way, without further ado, let's ready up, buckle up, let's just jump right into the content, y'all, because I tell you what, of course, you, I've made, I, I've made this no secret at this point, y'all have heard me say this, but I love going live, and I love talking to you, fam, I love engaging, although it's a very one-way conversation, because I can't hear or see you, but you can still let me know what's going on in the text, or over in the chat, because before, before I jump into it, let me say hello to Cliff, Cliff has joined us. What's up, Cliff? It's good to see you. That is XLR Gaming. He says, what's up, cool cats, right? A little bit of Curl Baskins <laughs> vibes coming in. It's good to see you, Cliff. Right? Tristan says, yo, what's up? Yeah, and Cliff says, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up Cliff? It's good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As we are uh, perfect timing, Cliff, because we are just getting ready to jump in to 
the conversation. That's five tips you should know before built for buying or building a gaming PC, right? And I believe this is going to help a lot of people, right? This is going to help a lot of people. Rather you are here right now, or you're going to be watching this on the live stream or on the, on the replay, or you are catching it a a highlight, right? Because our highlight series it's continuously ongoing and um. While it seem, may seem like it's a big gimmicky, but there are a lot of missed opportunity. Let me switch back here because this is super important. Our highlights may seem like a little bit gimmicky, gimmicky, and I'm not a big fan of repurposing content unless it's done in a heavy branded way. And it's still very much similar to the normal uh, content that's presented. But our highlights uh, and our live streams, more importantly... So many eyes miss out on our live streams, just given the uh, sh given how they're structured. So the idea behind these highlights is to pull some of those best moments, pull some of those valuable moments and memorable moments from our live stream. And then, of course, present it in an easier, digestible uh, format and video. Hey, though, Bad Habit says, what this, what's happening, Bad Habit? I know you were in the uh, in the pre-party chat before my Internet with Kapunk. We started a little later as we were supposed to start at 145, but right when I was about to hit live, I saw the restream chat disappear. And believe it or not, even right now, uh, the YouTube chat <laughs> is kind of frozen from that beginning point when the internet went out, although the stream is uh, up and healthy. But uh, I can't see the YouTube chat on the back end. I'm relying on Streamlabs' <laughs> chat because it's... It's uh, not it's not showing up on YouTube, but oh, well, right? Murphy's Law. If, if something can go wrong, it will. You just got to be prepared for it. But don't matter. We here. We here. And bad habits here. And bad habits, we're just getting ready to jump into our first tip, right? Our first tip. We're just getting ready to jump into our first tip. And that is number one. Decide on the type of games you want to play and your targeted resolution and refresh rate. Right now, it's so important because this is going to help you get a good idea on how much money you may have to spend on your system. You this is going to help you either a not overspend. Like if you want to play Minecraft, you don't need to spend. You don't need a fifteen hundred dollar PC build unless you're going to be doing other things with that game. But if you want to play vanilla games like Fortnite and Minecraft and Rob. Bucks, I always say it wrong. Roblox. If you want to play those kind of games, you don't need a fifteen hundred dollar system. Or if you want to, if you want to invest in a fifteen hundred dollar setup, then it's good that you can maybe put the majority of those of that money in areas or places that's going to help enhance your experience in a significant way. For example, if you don't need a lot of performance in your game, for example, if you Minecraft let's say 1080p 75 hertz monitor and you want to play minecraft that's perfectly fine maybe you can put some of that other money into the rest of your setup maybe invest in a robust audio solution get a decent kbm right a decent network solution we talked about all these things on the previous live show right remember that Remember we talked about that in the pre-build custom or wait conversation we had if you want to watch that you can find the link down in our uh weekly live inside the lab most recent playlist man try saying that five times but either way number one type of games you want to play right we just covered that your resolution just covered that too is that 1920 by 1080p if you're a 1080p based gamer that's really going to you know weigh in on your decision on your cpu what cpu to buy and what gpu to buy because depending on your resolution your system is going to be strained in a very different way if it's 1080p it's a little bit more balanced Right, that load is a bit more balanced, especially once you factor in CPU settings or settings that directly or have a major impact on the CPU at 1080p. And then there's 1440p, which the CPU still very much plays a role. This could depend on the game, but you are going to need a beefy GPU at that resolution and one with at least more than four gigabytes of VRAM if that's the resolution you're interested in playing. So this is why it's important to determine your type of games, your resolution, and then of course your refresh rate, right? Because your system is going to have a maximum frame rate output that is going to be able to uh, be able to distribute to your monitor. There's no getting around that. You, in your heart, may want a 144 hertz monitor because you know that's going to help 
make you a give you a competitive edge if you're playing competitive if you're playing games competitively or it's going to give you a more fluid experience in your games because remember games are digital flip books right they are a series of images being rapidly flashed across your screen to give you the to give you the illusion of motion so the higher your uh, refresh rate then the smoother those frames will come into display on your monitor but if you cannot get 144 hertz out of your system then it wouldn't make sense necessarily to invest in a monitor at that refresh rate uh, this also could depend on the type of games you want to play if you're playing games like overwatch csgo fortnite even call of duty warzone don't flame me too hard in the replay comments or right here on the live show because those are just some of the competitive games that came to mind off off the top but if you're playing any one of those games and a high refresh rate is going to be important to the overall configuration of your system so this is why it's important as tip number one before you buy or build your gaming PC is to, is decide on the type of games you want to play and that doesn't mean you say lab well what do you mean I, I you know I'm younger maybe maybe we have young we do have younger friends and family in the audience maybe I'm like 16 15 or 17 maybe I like to play a specific game right now but I will obviously grow and want to play other games and that's perfectly fine too that is the beauty with PC gaming and that's the ability to upgrade as your individual needs increase as you want to play more demanding games as you want to game at a higher resolution you're not locked right you're not up and stuck <laughs> you're not locked into a specific kind of configuration set up right like a console no shade to consoles consoles have a purpose pcs have character part of that part of that character entails being able to upgrade it so don't worry about if you only play one type of game now you can always upgrade to be able to play and run more demanding games but likely the games you want to play now are games you're going to play for months at an end especially if it's in your heart and desire to say well i want to play destiny on a piece on the pc destiny 2 i want to play destiny 2 on a pc i mean that game runs that that game is a good example of a game that's fun to play at a high resolution and i don't play destiny 2 in a competitive level whatsoever but i do think the game has a beautiful world and i do like the overall aesthetic in the game and playing that game at a high resolution at a high frame rate is a good example of when you would want to do that but with your type of games one sub recommendation i have is that you check the minimum and recommended specs of the game or games that you want to play now they should be taken with a bit of caution but they are good starting points why is that we went over extensively fam why that is if you recall in a few live shows back we went over a great deal as to why that is and we use cyberpunk as an example before playing cyberpunk we use cyberpunk as an example that it's not always clear if the developers or the publisher are being transparent with the community with consumers right on how well their game is going to run on a on a certain hardware configuration and we saw this with cyberpunk 2077 right and i'm gonna bring up and i want to use an example here i want to use metro metro exodus as an example here as you can see now with most pc game settings it's good to also check right your game at your targeted resolution some developers will list a game and what they what they recommend you play it at at say 1080p 1440p and you know 26 2160p which is 4k let me jump really fast here in the chat cliff says roblox for the win and normally i would look up here at the chat i just want to give you a little fyi to, to anybody who just joined and normally i look up here but before the live stream started uh, our internet just went totally out youtube's uh, live studio on the back end the stream updated but nothing else updated so like i can't tell what's the quality of the live stream <laughs> i can't see the chat up here so i'm relying on stream labs chat which i normally don't do so this is why i'm more so looking down uh the chat normally i would look up there on the monitor but the chat is stuck on the beginning like it's still stuck on when bad habit and z fluent and tricyon and thunder and, and crazy bryce crazy 1k i was like yo in the beginning where is lab at but i'm looking down here 
I do want to give a shout out to Ron. Ron says, better late than never. It's good to see you, Myron. Yeah, right? Late is better than never. Is what I would, is another way to say that. And Cliff says, lab and, lab and his Fortnite. <laughs> Man, I came in, I'm so casual with Fortnite. And I came in so late. I came in so late. When I was creating content, uh, Fortnite had a, it was a little bit more popular than it is now. I saw a poll on, on right here on YouTube with the creator with a, a really large, it was like some half a million users participated in his vote. And the questions were pretty much what's the better game right now? And Minecraft, Minecraft, Fortnite, and Among Us was all the options. It suffice it to say, we knew it was number one. That was Minecraft by a stretch, fam. It was like 46, 22, and like something to that extent, and like 23. It was something like that. But, uh, you know, it was Minecraft, Fortnite, and then Among Us, which Among Us isn't as popular. It's kind of it came and gone. And let me see here. As Mrs. Mod says, or Cliff says, Bad habits. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so I'm trying to get used to the chat being down here for today. But bad habits says uh, Roblox has taken over. Yeah, and I can't get into Roblox. Like I would need. I just I just can't. With it. it took me a while to to get over Fortnite's aesthetic. And before I used to say it was a game that reminded me of a of a Disney cartoon or a Disney show, and so I wouldn't touch the game at all. I was playing PUBG, so you see the difference in assets, right? Fortnite compared to PUBG. But I, I love Fortnite. Guilty pleasure, I guess, if you can say. I play it super casual, though. Me, Mrs. Mod, and it's just a fun game that I can just jump in with my kids and, and um, you know, play. I don't like the sweats, though. I'm on record. Man, This the sweats... The, let me switch back here, man. This is a this is an off-topic slight rant, but I don't like the sweats in Fortnite. I don't understand it. Like, you, you, you're engaged in, in a firefight or in combat, and you see the person, you know, 15, 20 yards away... And you start firing at them, and you're expecting to receive, you know, return fire. But instead, they start building clubhouses and forts and little boxes and stairs with platforms shooting down on you. And it's just like, you know, you're trying to shoot up, and you're like, you're concentrating fire on the structure while they're concentrating fire on you. When you should be concentrating fire up on them. But instead, they're just like building all around you, and then you on the ground level with them, and then they'll just build you in a box, and you're just like... I get lost. I completely check out, but normally I am decent enough where I'll finish in like top two, top three, top five even. But an, at that point, normally I run into the sweats and I just, man, I rage so hard. I'm not even a good rager. I don't rage quit. I'm barely even a good ranter, fam. This is a, a ranty as a rant is going to get from from lab, but they'll start building around you and they'll build you in this in this tesseract they'll build you in a cube and you're just like what a what a, what a and you're just shooting around and they you know they jumping up in the air and shooting down you with the shotgun man i hate it i'm not a fan of it that's i check out of the game once i get into the top three or top four and i'm shooting at the person i'm like instead of them turning around and shooting back at me they turn around and start building walls like they start building a crib and stuff it's just super frustrating i that's when i start not liking a game in a very heavy way like depending on where i finish and how the fight ended i may jump back in and just to kind of redeem myself and walk away with a better match out outcome but i just normally in the top five there's almost always sweats in the game and they don't really make it fun the sweat if i could play fortnite without the building part like if there was dedicated servers Without the building part of it, I would definitely, I would play it a little bit more heavy. Like, I really would. And dare I say it, if I wanted to play competitively and that wasn't a part of it, I would. And I could be wrong. Maybe there are servers out there like that. Lab doesn't know. I don't know. But I do like to jump into the game and play. But it, it's a it's a game that where you use guns to eliminate your other, you know, the other opponent. How we here building neighborhoods together and stairs, stairs to heaven and everything else in the game it really sucks and if you play like that and you're here watching fam i don't want to alienate you that is perfectly on your playing style like my son is he's not a sweat but he will build in like defense situations if you will which i guess that's almost like it's a contradiction because that's almost what all the sweats do but he's more like an offensive and attack and that's how kind of like i am i'm like let's let's let our aim be the deciding factor not you building a freaking shed around me and then you building stairs with a platform and then you're like pop pop shooting down at me and i'm like shooting up and it's just i'm like fam come on how is this even competitive this isn't even competitive at this point so rant over 
I'm not a fan of sweats in Fortnite. If you are sweaty in Fortnite, kudos to you. Play me one one v one me without the building because I'm pretty I have pretty good aim on the game and I can you know hit my marks from pretty far down the line. Many rant over. I do apologize. <laughs> Uh, Cliff says, oh, believe me, I have a 12 year old daughter and I'm well versed in Roblox. Yeah. My kids has, my kids is what put me onto Roblox. I didn't know anything about it. And they're just like, Robux, Robux, Robux. I'm like, what's a Robux? And then it's like subscriptions and they're like, I want this chain and they wanted that. And I, yeah, yeah. But if I, if I didn't have young kids, I wouldn't know anything about the browser based platform or you can download a launcher too. But for the most part, most people just play it in their browser. And if you want to play, you know, Roblox and you're here and you're like, hey, Lab, stop, 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 <laughs> stop defaming Roblox. That's my groove. That's my jam. You can play Roblox. And the funny thing is you can play Roblox on a super potato. So let's do stick around. We're going to jump back into the topic here because these rants cause people to dip out. And I don't want anybody to leave just yet because we've got a lot of value to deliver and go over. But I do want to get caught up really quickly here in the chat. Mrs. Ma says, got love Fortnite. Yeah. And Cliff says that that's how you got the W. Tristan says, I really need to play Metro Exodus. I never played it on my new PC. Fam, listen. Metro Exodus is a really dope game. Now, I know you have an RTX-based graphics card, Tristan. 2070 Super. So it's a perfect game that you can... It's about middle of the way to run some form of ray tracing. Um, not sure about DLSS because I didn't use DLSS when I played. But I played... At the time, I played on a 2080 and a 2080 Ti. Like, I had just switched over in my main gaming editing rig but metro exodus is an amazing game it's an amazing experience it's essentially a open world linear game they try to give you an illusion that it's an open world game but you pretty much just traverse through certain areas of the game which is like one large map with little small parts that you can kind of that you're confined to to do a lot in and explore but metro exodus is I put that probably in my top five favorite PC games for the last couple of years. Metro Exodus looked good, you know, ran good, had an interesting uh, mechanic to it um, with ray tracing enabled. It looked stunning in some points. I stopped playing the game just to admire the environments and just admire how the light, the, you know, the ray tracing and how the light pathing was being simulated, right, compared to like real world because there's so many places you go to in that game that has like little nooks and crannies and you're like down in sewers or you're in abandoned homes and there's like maybe a subtle light source here maybe a subtle light source there and metro exodus supports one of my favorite forms of ray tracing and that's global illumination so in certain parts of the game between day and night is literally the difference is like day and night in terms of you know, hard shadows and shadows behaving the way they're supposed to, some parts being dark, some parts being completely dark, right? While you're outside and you can't make out what's in the inside until you get out until you get in there. It's really it's really dope. And it's in my opinion, Metro Exodus is one of the better examples of ray tracing being RTX being implemented. And it's one of the first games, Battlefield Five aside, because Battlefield Five and Ray Tracing doesn't really make much sense. But it's one of the games that in my opinion that really uh implemented rtx and really implemented ray tracing in a meaningful way it's not too impactful on your fps the game is super demanding to begin with anyway depending on your resolution and quality preset but at lower resolutions you can you can change your ray tracing settings and it's i don't want to get too much into ray tracing because that's actually to give you all who who's here right now with us on the live stream that's actually next week or the up the next video that we're going to publish right and that is to conclude our series our tetralogy if you will with our six months later review of the rtx 3090 right so do be on the lookout for that and if you haven't if you're like what the heck first of all you like lab what the heck is a tetralogy well it's a four part um it's a four part series the first part we unbox it the second part you know we we just tested it in for, in terms of pure rasterization ability and how many frames it can output at a higher resolution at both 1440p and 4k and then we tested dlss which dlss i may need to you know trick the seo and trip and trick the optimization behind that video because it hasn't gotten as much reach that i would add hope for but it's a solid video nonetheless and i understand deep learning super sampling not everybody's interested in it um 
I will add though that there I did have some kind of astonishing revel revel revelations when we tested DLSS 2.0 in that video. And so in the fourth part of that tetralogy, we're going to be talking about ray tracing here in 2021. And Metro Exodus is a game that I wanted to include onto the benchmark and mix, but there were other games that came out way after Metro Exodus that I wanted to put into the mix that could have had that could have had ray tracing implemented a little better because they weren't out, you know, when RTX came out. I keep wanting to look up there for the chat. Man, I, I got to get used to it. It's down there. <laughs> chat down says the building. Let me go back up a little bit. Hold on. Z Fluent. Z Fluent is good to see you. I'm not sure if you're still here, Z. Zion, what's happening, fam? It's good to see you. Chat down says, I used to love Fortnite, but all this AI made it uncompetitive. It's understandable. I mean, I guess if you're not playing in like a dedicated tournament, you just want to jump in. I, I can understand it, but... um. I when I see the sweats like I could tell a bot between a real player and like they just kind of behave so differently. But totally understandable. Tricion says, sounds like someone boxed you like a flopper. <laughs> <laughs> man, it be happening. They be box man, you I might as well all I'm missing is the gloves in the ring, fam. Cause I'll be I'll be boxed in. Yeah, it's so annoying. I'll be hating. I'll be like, why why do they box why? Just just fire at me. Shoot back. What are you doing? So annoying. That that's when the game that's that's when I'm hugely turned off by the game. Like Ms. Mata tell you, I will just be like, I don't want to even want to play them. I'm like, you know what? This I'll be like, this is stupid. I'll be I'm saying explic explic explicatives, but this is a family friendly community, so I ain't gonna say it here. But if I do want to, oh, let me plug in really fast though, because as friendly as uh family friendly orientated i am proudful in this community do know that once the channel ship memberships launch that we will be launching it inside the lab dark to where i shouldn't even say no more i shouldn't even say no more but we will be launching it inside the lab dark when our channel memberships do launch and just to give you an idea it's so much more personal programming if you will it's gonna be so fun inside the lab dark there's so many things I have planned, written down, scheduled plan that I just have yet to share with the community because they're very much this, you know, running this brand or running this channel very much is akin to like a business. So there's so many, there's a roadmap I have in terms of where we want to be as a community, where we want to be as a community in tandem of where I want to be as a creator. <laughs> that, 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 you know, that roadmap is meant to serve both parties to get us to that destination, right? But yeah. All right, and let's jump back into it, but really fast, because Cliff is laughing, and, and, and C. Fluid says, get box Zion. Are you a are you a sweat? Are you a sweat, Zion? Hashtag sweat. I think Zion's a sweat. Travis says, the building of Fortnite is what made Fortnite big. That's also what makes the game a different eSport from others. I played it for like two hours on my old PC, but that was a horrible experience. I mean, yeah, I, I totally get that. But also, the game has still very much evolved since it first came out right like i remember when i first started playing you had the unlimited launch pads and i i thought it was a gimmicky scam because yeah people would just build stairs and jump off and run away from you right i found myself doing it too once i saw how effective it was then one time i jumped into it and they just took it away <laughs> right so i understand that's what made the game but so many things that made that game so great epic has either taken modified tried to implement take away everybody remembers the mechs which I, I wasn't really playing heavy when the mechs were around. When I did play it, I thought it was a stupid thing to put in a Battle Royale game. But people really didn't like the mechs, so they took it away after putting in just the name of Feud and changes to the map and just the overall. I still think they should. I want similar gun movements. That's in PUBG. If there's one thing that Fortnite can benefit from, in my opinion, is that. And just the different ways you can move and position your gun from around buildings, shooting around buildings, not just jumping up and down like you're in a Halo game. If you're old enough, you remember how we played Halo back in the day. Everybody just jumped around. And when, even when Halo introduced jetpacks, the online, the competitive community hated it. They hated it. At the time, our game studio was sponsoring an MLG, uh, an MLG gamer who was playing Halo, and he made a whole video about it. It made him quit playing Halo. I, it just, it, I mean, they add things, but most of, normally when, when something like a game, especially in a game that's a live service or a game that's constantly changing, it deviates so far from what made it great, it starts to alienate its player base. And this is why Fortnite has dropped off.
Cliff says, Exodus just got a new update. Yeah, I saw that with full RTX lighting. They redid it from the ground up. First AAA to use ray tracing lighting. They also retweaked other performance because the game was a hog. But uh, I did see that. And now that I think about it, that may want to prompt me to put it into the into the benchmark for Ray when we benchmark when we when we test ray tracing. And I should test, you know, Metro Exodus. And Tristan says, Yeah, I also want to play it because of that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't want to get into the ray tracing conversation too extensively because there's an upcoming video dedicated to that specifically with the fastest graphics card on the in the world, right? The RTX 3090. So arguably the best graphics card to run ray tracing on, and that's the RTX 3090. So we're going to talk about what ray tracing is and, you know, how you can even enable ray tracing, when it's worth enabling ray tracing, and moments and times when you should consider enabling DLSS at the same time because the test that I've gathered so far and I've been testing ray tracing here over the last week, really, the last like four or five days, I've been testing, just benchmarking the game, seeing the different FPS hits and what settings have the most significant impact on your FPS and which ones maybe aren't worth enabling to to, to take that FPS impact hit. So a lot of things to, to consider with ray tracing, but we are going to talk about that extensively. So if you want to understand ray tracing, most importantly, RTX, which is available over on the AMD side with visual... Uh, I believe it's Fidelity, Visual Fidelity, <laughs> Visually FX. It is available and out now, which I saw MSI Afterburner had an, an update to uh, help with overclocking 6000 series graphics cards. So, but yeah, ray tracing is pretty dope. Ray tracing is pretty dope. So if you want to learn more about ray tracing, first of all, you're going to want to give the stream a like. So we had a few people dive in and jump out. But first of all, give the stream a like and, subscri and subscribe if you haven't yet to catch that video. But let's jump right back over in to the conversation. Many ran over, fam. I told you guys and gals, I'm not even a good ranter. But, um, but on the subject of Metro Exodus, so with Metro Exodus, right, Metro Exodus, the developers, which is, uh, what is it, id? I believe it's it no not it can't i can't necessarily see but they're telling us your minimum which i'd imagine is 1080p where it says 1080p 30 fps that's likely 1080p low settings to achieve that 30 fps mark so they're saying at least a fourth generation i5 eight gigabytes of, of dram and a gtx 670 that's older so they're saying between a gtx 670 and a GTX 1050, and then over on the Radeon side, a 7870. Or you can put, you could say between a 7870 and maybe even a Polaris base RX 470 or 480 or even a 500 series on up. As you can see, going right from 1080p 30 FPS, they're recommending for 1080p 60 FPS, which is a, 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 a this is a significant jump in my honest opinion. A GTX 1070 or a GTX 2060. Somewhere in between there. And then over on AMD side, a Vega 56. So even for 1080p 60, they're not even recommending a 500 series Polaris based GPU that I recommended, say, for 1080p 30 FPS. But to keep in line with our first tip, for those of you who weren't here, and that was to decide on the type of games you want to play, your targeted resolution, and your refresh rate. This is why you would want to use or at least use the recommended specifications from the developer as a starting point. As a starting point. So you know, if you say, again, you're deciding on your resolution and your refresh rate. And I use Metro Exodus uh, settings here as an example because it does show us the recommended specs at each of the different resolutions and frame rates or, or refresh rates in terms of monitor their refresh rates the games their frame rates but you can see here if you want to bump it up and level up to 1440p so if you say well i know i don't want a game at 1080p i was playing games already at 1080p when i stopped playing games i want to get back into modern pc gaming i don't want to do it at 1080p off the top i want to start at a higher resolution and so let's say you want to play Metro Exodus or I use Metro Exodus as a baseline because it's such an incredibly demanding game, but the it's worth the eye candy. I have yet to really see a game with uh, detail graphics, detail lighting, and the model, the, the 3D models, the character models, they're not that great, but it's really the environments that shine in this game. So at 1440p, those extra few hundred pixels really 
you know, helps the game stand out. But if you want a game at 1440p, here's what you know. You're going to want to build a system somewhere within this configuration. So you know an i5-6600K, right, and a GTX 1050 isn't going to cut it, a 1050Ti isn't going to cut it for 1440p, right? A 1660 Super isn't going to cut it, isn't going to cut it either. They're, right, they're saying you're going to need a – sorry, I have to lean in because it's a little small for me. But they're recommending a GTX 1080 Ti right now, which even then is still a little – could be a little difficult to find. And if you do find it, you're probably looking at a graphics card that's going to run you between, you know, at least four to $500 even right now. And then even on Team Red side with a AMD, they go from 50, a Vega 56 to a Vega 64, which – is surprising because there's AMD at the time didn't really have anything else high end to offer. Everybody wants to forget their uh, their Radeon their their uh, Radeon 7, their Radeon 7 with these 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. That thing was abysmal, and so this is why they can't even offer that. And it gets even more telling because once we get up to 4K extreme settings. They don't even have an AMD graphics card that they recommend. It's just a straight RTX 2080 Ti. So even if 4K is a resolution you want to get into gaming at, just know that you will need a higher-end system off the bat. But for absolutely bare minimum gaming, look at Metro Exodus. 1080p 30fps and fourth generation i5, not even overclockable. 8 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 670, right? So these are all parts that likely you will be on the used market trying to procure but you will be able to start at a very low entry now there's not much upgrade you know upgradability on an older platform right fourth generation intel but again we recommend you upgrade to the fastest possible cpu in that generation which would be a 4790k an i7 4790k if you would start out on that platform or on that generation which you can see here going over to recommend it is Ironically, I didn't even see this, but a 4770, a 4770K a over on the recommended. So this is why I say no matter what, even on your platform, just starting out, you always have the option of upgrading to your, you know, upgrading to the fastest CPU on that platform. Okay, on that platform, even over here on 1440p high settings and 8700K. So if you're on a Z370 chipset or a Z390 uh, chipset, and you have an 8700K, and you say, you know what, I'm not getting done at 1440p. I want to try a 4K, and they're recommending that I have a 9900K. You still very much could upgrade your motherboard, or you don't have to upgrade your motherboard. I'm sorry. You could upgrade your CPU from an 8700K to a 9900K. And so this is going to put you in a, you know, a, a path to where you are able to run the game at either a higher resolution or a higher graphic settings that you couldn't previously before. Now, I would recommend you take a step forward and say, you know what? I want to play at 1080p 30fps. I probably should configure a system somewhere around 1080p 60fps. That way it lessens the blunt or lessens the impact of having to upgrade should you should. Again, the developer's word isn't necessarily clear. And the game still very much isn't running well at that configuration. This is why, it's again, it's good to take the minimum and recommended specs with caution they're a good starting point but they shouldn't necessarily be used as an exact map with your system but they're a good starting point especially if you're unsure of how graphically demanding the game's going to be because just going from 30 fps 1080p 30 fps to 1080p 60 fps we're going from an h an amd 70 a 70 way up to a 50 uh uh vega 56 so skipping over R9 390, skipping over R no RX 480 or RX 580, straight to Vega 56, just a 2x our FPS. So this is why it's good. It, take it grain of caution, you know, you take it with caution, grain of salt, even even if you will. But they are good starting points. Okay, this will give you an idea how much graphic power, if anything, you may need. And I I said eight, but <laughs> VRAM two gigabytes of VRAM. I don't think I'd want to play this game with two gigabytes of VRAM. And this is why I'm saying should you should you be take should you take that like at face value that you only need two gigabytes of VRAM to run this game? Or DDR4? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's VRAM. I was looking at that wrong. Two gigabytes of VRAM. Even still, 
Uh, that's like an RX, not even an RX 560, which has two gigabytes of VRAM. They're saying no, go HD 7870. Let me jump over into chat really fast. More people roll in. Take your eyes over, glance over Metro X's PC specs. Good. Get a firm understanding of how important it is to take 10 to 15 seconds of your time when researching your parts and you know deep down in your mind you want you might say i want to really play rainbow six siege like i think i can i was good on the console right and that's perfectly fine to have that mindset because you know you're going to have so many more benefits versus playing a competitive game like rainbow six siege fortnite um, any of those competitive games that are available on the console you'll have way more uh you have a you have a bigger competitive edge by playing over on the PC, right? But familiarize yourself with PC specs because you should take a moment and Google uh, recommended specs for Rainbow Six Siege and see what pops up. You say, oh, okay, well, they're saying I can run the game for 1080p, 60fps, or for 1080p, 144 hertz. This is what I'm going to need. And I'm glad I didn't because, remember, that was something we covered too in a previous conversation, and that's, Doing have cert, doing your due diligence and your research and um, the researching part of your build to avoid you having those moments to where you sit down and you're like, man, my system's not performing the best way I wanted to. And now you have to turn around and immediately make an upgrade at a much earlier point that you would have had to should you have done your necessary research on your parts. Cliff says, okay, with the new update, and Tristan says, yeah, I want to play it. Cliff says, feature sets to consider when buying a pre-built. Yeah, and uh, that's that's actually a whole segment that we're going to get into, a whole separate tip that we're definitely going to get into. We talk about pre-builds so much. Um, it's not as, ex it, we don't go into it here. We're not going to go into it as extensively ha like we have in the past, which I will invite you to check out the pre-build custom, pre-build, buy, or wait, or build, pre-build, custom whatever this title but that conversation is where we talked about pre-builds like real heavy where we went in on a fourteen hundred dollar setup and we talked about how with a fourteen hundred dollar setup that included your keyboard your monitor everything you needed on top of that taking a thousand dollars of that budget and getting a decent pre-built and what you should look for with a thousand dollar pre-built and so we're actually going to revisit that here uh cliff so kudos to you good job good, you know thanks for bringing that up because yeah we are going to look into that it's very important as i understand not everybody is comfortable with you know building a pc and they're they make they could be afraid that they're going to damage a part that's going to you know not allow them to play their pc or maybe they're going to have to wait a little longer so they just want it to come in a box and all they have to do is plug it in nothing wrong with that but to keep up with the theme of this live show, we are going to talk about a few things you should look for when buying a pre-built here in 2021. And Cliff says, oof, poor Radeon 7. We barely knew you. Yeah, it was, it, it literally, it like, they, AMD discontinued it, I believe, exactly 30 days. It came out in, like, January. It was discontinued in February, something like that. Or it came out in, like, September, October, and it was discontinued in January. It did not last long at all. It was, like, it over heated it was barely faster than an rtx 2070 although it had twice as many twice as much vram which vram doesn't necessarily make you run your games faster but still it, for and for it was like 800 dollars. it cost more than an rtx 2070 so it was just a very bad launch that amd yeah wanted everybody to forget bad habit says so how about a 6800 xt or a 6900 xt that should be able to run exodus at 4k right yeah absolutely so they're recommending an RTX 2080 Ti here, and that's a good point that Bad Habit makes. If the graphics card isn't being isn't listed that you want to go with, look at the performance metrics and see how within margin or how close within margin those graphics cards are. But we do know that a 6800 XT and a 6900 XT is up to like 20% faster than an RTX 2080 Ti. So in that case, it's one of those situations where more is better. And so you are you are exceeding the performance metric of what they're already recommending you go with for the maximum preset, which to coincide with with, uh, with Bad Habit is saying, that's at the 4K Extreme preset, which, holy smokes, I don't even think a 2080 Ti is going to achieve your 4K 60 FPS in Extreme. And this is where it's one of those situations where you got to take the PC specs with a little bit of caution 
because I played Metro Exodus. If you've played Metro Exodus, testify for me. 4K Extreme. I don't even think I played the game at Extreme Settings with the 2080 Ti. I didn't. I don't think I did, fam. I think I had to modify some of those settings. I didn't play at 14. I didn't play at um. Uh, I didn't play at 4K either. Towards the end, I played at ultra wide. I played at 1440p with the 2080 Ti. And even then, I wasn't at extreme settings. That, that might have been like 20, uh, 1440p high or ultra, and that was on an 8700K and a GPU that was faster than the RTX 2070. But what I do I think you can play run that game 4K 60fps on extreme settings with the 2080 Ti? Not necessarily, fam. I think that will require some settings tweaking. Now, that could change with this recent update, but I seriously doubt it. Because this is t this is in terms of pure rasterization at that point, and that update was meant to better implement some of the ray tracing features. On top of that, which 4K Extreme with ray tracing enabled, you're definitely not touching 4K 60 FPS. You may need to uh, turn DLSS on. Tristan says, "Well, I played it at a minimal settings at 720p because I wanted 60 FPS. Yeah, and that's certainly one of the caveats to PC gaming, right? And that's the ability to modify your settings. That's one reason why I really like PC gaming, which frustrated me as an early console adapter, was that I couldn't tweak the settings. Should I, if I wanted to compensate for, uh, you know, for a discrepancy? In this case, Tristan said I wanted to play at 60 FPS, so I ran the game at 720p." Me, I'm a big time, big on graphics, and dropping the resolution down to 720p, I'd probably rather just lower my settings and keep the resolution. And that's because you're not tweaking the way the game looks so much so when you're doing, when you're keeping, you're maintaining your native resolution, but dropping the settings, the game will rely on the entirety of the crispness, the crispness, the crispness of 1080p. Versus the game needing to be tweaked in individual settings to say increase the level of detail in models, increase the level of detail in textures, increase the, um, you know, the way shadows are or increase the volumet volumetric, volum volumetric lighting, any of those settings. If you're just leaving it to 1080p and low settings, you don't have to change anything else with the game. The game, the entire game will be rendered at 1080p. Versus trying to mix and match the settings, but that's me personally. That's me personally. But you definitely have the option. I I super recommend you doing that if you're on like older hardware and you're unable to run modern games. Lower the resolution, increase your settings. Again, that's if you're on like you know potato like hardware or maybe like second generation Intel i7 2700K or something to that extent. RX 480 or GTS 670, some of the games here. Lower your resolution down in 720p but up your settings but that's again only if you're on um only if you're on older hardware depending on your play style for example tricyon's play style said i can lower it down from 1080p to 720p it's only a few hundred pixels i'm missing out right but again that could very much depend on you and the type of games you play but metro exodus is a single player game and this is why ray tracing in my opinion also was implemented really well here which we don't even see ray tracing settings on our, you know, recommended and minimum specifications chart. So that's interesting too. 11 gigabytes of VRAM. Absolutely at 4K. Absolutely. Some folks saying, why does the RTX 3090 need 24 gigabytes of VRAM? Whew. I don't know if it's a memory leak, but games like Crisis Remastered at 4K. Okay. Not at the can it run Crisis preset, but the one below it. That game was taking over 16 gigabytes of VRAM. You don't believe me? Don't head in there now. But watch the uh, RTX 3090 series, and you will see it in the VRAM usage up in the top left-hand corner. You will see that the game that the that the game was easily pulling more than even 11 gigabytes of VRAM. Which I could be wrong on this, but I'd imagine even Metro would take more than 11 gigabytes of VRAM at this preset. It's such a detailed game in a large environment. So just again another reason why you want to uh take the specific the settings the game settings with a grain of salt even as we look over here at control really fast because control even is about the same thing you're looking at the fourth generation i5 which it must be something with the instruction sets 
with some of these monitoring games, you may need uh, a specific instruction set like AVX2 on the CPU. This is why they recommend. This is also why it's good to check your um, the settings for the game or games you want to play. I chose a fairly monitoring game and a game that just came out. But even with Control, right, even with Control, Control may have one of those newer AVX instruction sets you're going to need. As the developers of Control recommending an i5. 4690 or an FX 43 4350 and a GTX 78 a 780 and 8 gigabytes of RAM. So you can get away with this again on a potato like system. You may find yourself over in the used market. Clearly, you're not going to be able to find a GTX 780 anywhere other than perhaps eBay or if you're lucky enough to come across a seller that's letting you know letting go of GTX 780s. The GTX 780 has two gigabytes of VRAM or three gigabytes of VRAM, I believe. So another reason why this this these settings aren't you know doesn't tell you what the game is going to run at 1080p i did this on purpose because not every setting you're going to see is going to tell you that this is the game at 1440p this is the game at 1080p 60 this is the game at 1080p 30. they're not going to tell you that so you kind of have to ascertain and use your acumen or you can always hit me up and ask me over on Instagram and Twitter. If you're not following me on Instagram, shame on you. You should be. I, I went. I did. A, I did a pop up live over on Instagram, fam. Y'all gonna wanna. Y'all gonna wanna check back over there for more of those because it's very different going live on a dedicated social media platform like Instagram, where it's really only the Instagram community. So many people come over to YouTube from other social media platforms, but nobody really goes on Instagram for live unless you want to, you know, catch, you know, your favorite creator or uh, one of your you know, favorite celebrity or something like that. But um, I do plan on doing more like just showing, just popping up over on Instagram saying, Hey, you, <laughs> but with control PC settings and spec settings, they don't tell us uh, what resolution we're gaming at, but you better believe with ray tracing with the RTX 2060, I tested control and uh, I can believe that you can get away with RTX 2060 with ray tracing. I'm going to go on a limb and say this is 1080p, okay? Because the RTX 2060 is a four. You can game at 1440p. But what's important here is that they're showing you the absolute basis what you would want for 1080p, and you would want ray tracing, and that's with an RTX 2060, an i5 7600K. So again, we're we're leaping we're leaping up three generations here. From a fourth generation uh, i5 to a seventh generation KB Lake, yeah, it's KB Lake, to a seventh ge seventh generation KB Lake, or Ryzen 5 1600X. So for OG Ryzen, and the same thing even with ray tracing, right? The CPUs don't change, just the graphics card. Obviously, because you don't want to run ray tracing on the tenth generation uh, GPU, while you can, nobody is going to recommend you do it. I really think that was more so for developers especially like independent and small developers to try to implement ray tracing in some of their media if it's animation or if it's a game that they're developing i more so think that that was who that's for because ray tracing enabled on a 10th generation gpu it is brutal without those dedicated rt cores and tensor cores to you know um to perform the ray tracing tasks the dedicated ray tracing tasks but we're going to say this is 1080p Minimum, this is likely 1080p 30. Recommended is likely 1080p like high. And then ray tracing is likely 1080p bare minimum for ray tracing to you as a user if that's something you would be interested in. But let's say you're not interested in ray tracing and you want to configure your system. You're in trouble, fam, between needing a GTX 1660 or a GeForce GTX 1060. Now, I do want to add that another reason why you want to take your PC, the you know the minimum recommended specs for their game is because just because you can't get a gtx 1660 or a gtx 1060 does not mean you cannot run this game you would want to find yourself in a gpu class that is at least in between those two generations right so we're looking at what a gtx 960 a gtx 970 a 980 a 980 ti a gtx 1050 or a 1050 ti you would still be able to run the game, although you're unable to get a GTX 1660 or a GTX 1060, which may be a little easier to get the latter versus the former right now, right? Everybody wants to get the 16th generation or the 1660 for its newer because it has a newer NVEC encoder, right? 
But GTX 1060 is still one of the most popular GPUs according to the Steam survey and for those who have opted, in, opted into it. But check that out, fam. It doesn't differentiate much between the CPUs. Just between going from 1080p 30 to 1080p 60. So if you want to build your system, you're like, well, I, I, I want to get a Ryzen 5 2600. So you check your mark. You're, you're one generation above what's recommended at 1080p. So you're already doing good. 16 gigabytes, you say, yeah, Lab said, I recommend you get a system off top, at least 16 gigabytes. That's a must. And then you have your GPU, which you're like, well, I can't get a 1660. They're all just way too high, which they are last time I checked. <laughs> or a GTX 1060, which is a little bit more attainable. You may have to scour the used market. Either way, you're going to have to scour the used market. Okay? Because RTX 2060s, fam, they're not on the shelf. And they're not even on the eBay used shelves for respectable prices. They're still very much high. I continue to look. Okay? But this is, this, these should be foundations on the basis of that to which you configure your system. You may have to compromise, just like I just mentioned. If you can't get a 1660 or a GTX 1060, you may have to drop that down and find yourself in a generation class that's above the minimum required because that's one place where you do want to take their their word at because they're going to tell you hey we know our game better than you and we know that regardless you're going to want to at least have this graphics card if you're going to want to have a playable experience the name kev says hello hey what's happening kev it's good to see you the name kev i'm not sure we've seen you join us on our live show but welcome to our weekly live q a experience where we are discussing five things you should know before building or buying a gaming pc here in 2021 uh if you have any questions about the topic at any time please feel free to ask them we will address you right here right now in the real time but we were just on tip number one and that is deciding number one was deciding your type of games your resolution and your refresh rate right now gpus are scarce or they're selling at like bruce wayne like prices <laughs> like they are high and so if you're going to want to go with a pre-built you're still going to find yourself paying like 20 to 30 percent more on average but deciding on these three things is even going to help you in your buying in your buying decision with your pre-built some pre-builds come with the you know monitor already most of them don't so you're going to want to start with your type of games you play the resolution you're going to play at, right? Whether that's 1920 or 14 or 1080p or 1440p or 2160. And then the refresh rate is that 60, 75, 120, 144. This is all going to depend on the type of games you play, the resolution you play, and your refresh rate. The name Kev says, I have a HP desktop and I bought it for playing games, but it's always lagging. So you're not necessarily experiencing lag, Kev. What you're mostly experiencing is your frame rates um, dropping, right? You're getting really inconsistent frame rates. So I want to go on a limb and say more so what you feel like, what you're probably experiencing is like stuttering. It feels like, again, video games are a digital flip book. The more frames, the smoother the book. The less frames, the more choppy it's going to be. So it's not necessarily lag where it's a it's a it's a internet it's a bandwidth issue it's a hardware issue that you're experiencing with your games feeling a little choppy right and that's a frame rate issue. Now you're on a HP a desktop HP I'm not sure if it has a dedicated video card, but Kev um, do let us know what your stats are. Let us know what your what your specs are at least and definitely your CPU your GPU and your RAM. Those three right now, I can tell you, your your uh, storage to some capacity can cause that laggy like experience. But your CPU, your GPU, and your RAM are almost immediately going to have that adverse effect on your FPS to where you're not getting enough. Now it's a pre-built, so it was on HP to make sure it's a very well balanced system, which you shouldn't assume, but I'm going to assume it is fairly balanced. And in that case, a few recommendations we're going to make is to try either lowering your resolution. Right. If you game at 1080p, try lowering your resolution to 720p and up your settings. That way you at least maintain a heavy graphic load on your GPU if you have a dedicated graphics card. And your CPU very much doesn't have to work as hard and you don't introduce like a weird bottleneck effect to where you're going to lose even more performance because 
you told the game or you told your system, hey, run at 720p low settings, right? 720p low settings. And now your CPU is doing more work than your GPU. So your GPU is like, well, we're just going to hang back here and wait for the CPU to catch up. That's a bottleneck. We're going to hang back here. We're going to wait for the CPU to catch up. Meanwhile, your CPU is like at 100%. <laughs> your CPU is at 100%. While your GPU is struggling at like 30 or 40 percent, that is as close to a identif identifiable ben uh, bottleneck that I could get to that we won't dive deeply into this conversation. But when you see that, my friends, you have an issue. You lower your resolution down to 720p. You're putting more of that strain on your CPU. This is why when you see some benchmarks, dedicated benchmarking channels, they'll previously they tested CPUs at 720p low settings. They wanted to create a, a reverse bottleneck because they wanted to see what's the maximum amount of frames the CPU alone could output with it having to do most of the work. So this is why even with your experience in those things, Kev, you're going to want to lower your resolution. As I see you're coming through a, I th an i3, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it has integrated. Okay, so you're on the iGPU, which I'm not sure which i3. If it's like a seventh generation or a sixth generation or fifth generation, it either has uh, integrated graphics like UHD 610 or UHD 630, UHD 730 on like the newer generation Intels. Um, if you can tell us, Kev, what generation is that? Like i3 9500 or 6700 or whatever, 7400, 10, you know, a tenth generation i3. Let us know what generation i3 that is so we have an idea of what generation uh, integrated, uh, you know, what what onboard graphics that you're running with. Now, this is another part of the live stream that we're going to talk about, which we're getting ready to segue into tip number two. But I do want to add that this is another part of this live stream that we're going to go in rather extensively. So, Kev, you're going to want to make sure you hang around for that for as long as possible because we're going to go in you know, the ups and downs of gaming on an integrated iGPU, especially on Intel's integrated graphics. They're just not that great. And so you say you don't know the generation. So my advice to you very much still stands, especially with having a better context into your context within your uh, hardware configuration and your system specs, right? i3 and eight gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so you don't have a lot of room to work with. So you're definitely going to want to try to do what we were just, you might have came right into the conversation at a perfect point, actually. Lower your resolution down. If you're gaming at 1080p, you could start, I, would, I wouldn't even recommend, like normally I would say go from 1080p to like 900p, but for you on an i3, I would almost definitely say drop down and run your games at 1280 by 720p. 1280 by 720p, um, what game are you experiencing that fr those frame rate drops? It's probably likely all of them, but if there's a specific go-to game that you say, you know what, Lab, I want to play that and definitely, like, that's the game I want to play, um, let me know what game that is, and that way I can get a better idea of what setting options you have and that you may need to configure to get a playable experience. I see you say you subscribe. Hey, I can't wait to the Elgato come in. I got some fun stuff geared up for when everybody subscribes and we get the super chats when they roll in. But I do, hey, Kev, I do appreciate subscribing to the channel. Welcome to the Inside the Lab community. We also have a Discord, which I know you weren't here for our house cleaning, keeping segment. But um, if you want to sign up for our Discord, you're going to have to sign up for our email list for now, right? But don't leave now. At the end of the live stream, you can find the link in the description box below to our MailChimp our email list sign up for our email list and join our discord community and that way we could help you in real time with these kind of questions should we or should i not be you know hosting a live stream or um it be on a video so definitely 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 kev welcome to the community welcome to the community we have such helpful and informal fam here um and just members who are always willing to help out and just share their knowledge and share their expertise to help you know gamers like yourself because we welcome all systems all builds here i don't care what you're running with fam right i don't even care if you got a pc you got a place in this community <laughs> kev says i play apex league and valorant okay so i know valorant probably is a little bit hard to overcome and at that point i would recommend 720p low settings because 
your CPU is going to be doing balancing both loads, unfortunately, um, without a dedicated video card. So especially Valorant and Apex and definitely and even League of Legends, which you could probably is probably your your smoothest experience out of all three of those games. But all three of those, Kev, I would run them at 1280 by 720p, start at low settings and see what's playable for you in each of those games. Now, I'm going to tell you now, don't expect anything likely past like 20 FPS on average, 20, 30 FPS on average, even at 720p. Apex, you might be able to achieve that and a little more. What's going to be the hardest to kind of to bump up? That's going to be Valorant. And League is a CPU intensive game anyway. And yeah, I see you said Fortnite. And even Fortnite, Fortnite runs a little better on integrated graphics. Um, but even then, that's another game. Because of the, you know, the limitations of your i3 and it's on integrated graphics, you are going to have to temporarily compensate and lower your resolution. And what you're doing is, Kev, you're trading, you're trading the... You're trading your graphics for refresh rate, right? So how smooth the game is going to feel. And, and in this case, with your hardware configuration, that's a perfectly reasonable trade-off. It really is. In this situation, you would want to make that trade-off. You would want to make that trade-off. Tristan says, Apex is pretty hard to run. I used to have an i3 16 gigabytes of RAM, but with a GTX 1060, it ran around 50 FPS lowest settings for me. Was that at 1080p? Tricyon, again, believe it or not, you would you get such a huge uh, FPS uplift by lowering your resolution because Apex is a game that runs on a PS4, you know what I mean? And those are all based off like FX 8350 Jaguar, you know, based integrated graphics. They're just not that great. And even a third generation, I'm not sure that um, an, a th an i3, I'm not sure the, gener the, uh, the generation, but... Even with an i3, you're likely very close to a, a PS4. We're talking about a console that came out back in 2012 or 2013. So it was running hardware that was manufactured in, what, 2011 and 2012? So Apex can run on a console, which is likely even being re-rendered at on a console. I would, I would like to probably think that the game is probably even being downscaled to 900p to even be able to run or probably even possibly 720p even on a console just to be able to run on a ps4 bad habit says so playing online versus playing solo complaint online will require higher specs than playing solo right well absolutely because your cpu let's use fortnite for example fortnite wants to with a with your distance set to epic it wants to render more things that's in front of you that will help you in that game. Do you necessarily need to do that in a single player game? No. And most of the time, a single player game won't even be this massively open plane that Fortnite is, right? With an open world game, let's use The Witcher, for example, you can dip in and out of buildings. So this is, and, I mean, you can in Fortnite, but let's, let's keep it 100. You spend most of your time on an open map in Fortnite. The Witcher 3 too, what am I talking about? But let's, you go into buildings more in caves and dungeons and things like that. In the Witcher 3. There's also other other obstructions that's going to determine the impact, the you know FPS hit on your CPU. Now it's also you figure games like World of Warcraft, for example. World of Warcraft will require your CPU to work equally hard in that game like it would on a single player game because now your CPU has to also load in. Uh, a certain specific number of players, other players, and NPC. Your CPU also has to process, render, or not. Some cases render if it's a if it's a lighting-based graphic setting, but it has to process, render any lighting, everything else that's going on around you. This could change depending on what you're doing in that game, in a game like League or in a game like WoW, right? So yeah, it, it it would require you to have higher specs. And by higher, all depends on how competitive you want to be, right? Like, for example, Kev can play Fortnite on his i3. Now, Kev has to also make some compromises, though, to get a playable FPS. To whereas, let's say, Tricyon on an RTX 2070, if he even lowered his graphics settings to 720p, <laughs> 
he probably first of all Tristan would probably get some serious screen tearing action going on on his system right but you know if he were to lower his graphic settings down to to match what Kev is running his what Kev would have to be forced to run his hardware at Tristan would certainly have a competitive edge because your frames being rendered faster lets you react and respond to your opponent quicker so Tristan is going to see respond and react to Kev faster than Kev's going to see and respond and react to Tristan so this is why, yes, if you do want to have a competitive edge in solo versus online campaigns, then you do want to take into consideration your PC specs. And by higher, that can be subjective. Higher in terms for Kev's situation, because Kev really, an R9 390, an R7 280X or an R9 280X, either one of those graphics cards would really give you a, a significant uh, boost as you would then be able to run your games at 1080p without the super massive fps hit that you're receiving in your games but to give you specifically uh advice and tips kev i'd recommend you do just what i suggested lower your resolution down to 2080 1280 by 720p start at low settings right if you see your if you see you're at a playable number that's respectable for you apex it's not necessarily a game you play for the eye candy league of legends quite possibly in valorant i'm indifferent because i don't play it but just given its complexity, given the type of game, you may not even need to play that for its overall graphic aesthetics. Having a higher refresh rate or a higher FPS output is going to benefit you more than having a game that looks good. You want it to play good. You want it to run good, not look good. That's just a compromise you have to make right now. Okay. But you should be able to add a dedicated video card here down in the future, especially if you want to... Um, compromise a little bit more and go with even a gtx 770 a gtx 760 a 960 or a 970 these are graphics cards that are about the 100 to 200 hundred dollar price range so long as your motherboard supports it which it should and you have the necessary power requirements on your power supply unit that's important too that's just something you don't have to research and even hit me up if that's something that you're going to you're going to be interested in doing and that's adding a dedicated video card you're going to want to make sure that you have other things in place before you do that. And having the necessary power connectors is one of the biggest things you're going to want to make sure you take care of before one to even decide on a dedicated video card. Because you may have to upgrade your power supply unit too. So instead of putting all your eggs in the basket, say, oh, lab is right. I got 200, I got 200 bones right now. I'm going to go jump over eBay and try to pick me up a graphics card within that, within that class. First, fam, I'm going to tell you to check your power supply unit, check its efficiency rating, check its wattage um, output and check to make sure you have the necessary power connectors before wanting to add a dedicated video card to your system. Tristan says, yes, that was at 1080p. And what if the single player game has a lot of AI? And it, so your C, that's what actually one of the primary tasks of your CPU. And that is to process complicated algorithms, complicated math, which AI is, I believe, algebra? Because it's a lot of like if and and statements. So when I was writing game code, it was like a lot of if, like if this happens, then and you use a lot of integers and a lot of like algebraic expressions. So AI is very much still dependent on math. It's very much, it's, it's, it's path based. So it's say if, if this character is this way, then go this way. If there's this, if player has a hundred percent life, then do this. So it's a lot of if then statements, but your CPU, even if there's a lot of AI, let's, for example, say GTA 5, because I love how people in GTA 5, oh, I got a bottleneck in GTA 5. Depending on what graphic settings you're, you're at, even at GTA 5, if you have a lot of NPCs, if your density, your population density slider is slid all the way to the right, or you have some of the other post-processing graphics turned all the way up, then your CPU is, you will likely see a bottleneck because your CPU is having to process all of those things going around it. Your GPU, the graphics card, the graphics card role is solely responsible for rendering frames. Your graphics card does nothing else on top of also storing the textures for the models. And obviously this is why the higher the resolution you're playing at, the higher the resolution you're playing at, the more VRAM your system starts to take because those models and textures go from being rendered at 1080p so now they're being rendered at four times the pixel density at 2160 by 14 or 3840 by 2160p. So 
now your graphics card has to work a little harder. Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but um, even then, your CPU, yes, still has to, it still has a lot of work to do. This is why at 1080p, the load is so balanced. Depending on what the game is, the load is very much really balanced at 1080p, even if the single player game has a lot of AI, right? Games like League of Legends and World of Warcraft, although you play with other people, the game still very much has a lot of NPCs doing things in heavily dense areas. So you could be playing that game at a higher resolution, but you will still see high CPU utilization. This is why some bottlenecks, it's okay. And not all of your games you want to see a higher CPU, which if you don't know how to, you know, even track your system's metrics, that's a whole nother video and topic. But if you you don't want to see high CPU utilization in the majority of your games, it really depends on the game and the graphic settings and the resolution you're playing at. Okay, very important. We saw this in the DLSS video, the site, the Crisis Remastered DLSS video, and I talked about this at 1440p, excuse me, and 4K. I still had one core being pegged up to like 90% on one core. This was at 14. This was at 4K, at the very high preset. Still was getting 100% GPU utilization, but the CPU utilization was very much still high on one core. That's because the game is processing, I guess, a lot of AI, and you figure you have the jungle area, there's wind blowing on the trees, or there's a lot of math to calculate and process there at the CPU, and I was wondering, it's on a 12 core, 24 thread, 1920X, so something to consider. And Kev says, do you think I can upgrade my PC? Well, Kev, so it's very important that we know your chipset. We know the motherboard you're on. Or we know at least the gen the number that comes after the 3 and the i3, which your CPU. I can't answer that question, although chances are, yes, you're likely able to upgrade, even from the regardless of what generation it is, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, you can very much still upgrade your CPU, which I would recommend you do. Um, but before I recommend you do that, I would recommend trying to add a dedicated video card to your system. Even if it's something like an RX 560 or an RX 470 or an RX, an RX, an RX 460 or an R7 260 or 280X or 270X, even if it's something along the lines there, before you want to upgrade your CPU, I would definitely recommend you upgrade to a, a dedicated video card first because upgrading to say an i5 blank blank whatever okay a temp generation so you're on seven i believe that's uhd 730 graphics so it's a little better a little better and so i very much stand uh keep the reservations i was just about to make and that's i still very much would recommend you upgrade your gpu or upgrade to a dedicated video card before i recommend you upgrade to say an i5 10 600k or an i7 10 700k i mean you could very much still use the integrated graphics on those cpus but because given the cost of having to upgrade to any one of those cpus which is 10 600k is actually an affordable upgrade i have to believe that cpus are like 219 to 20 but even then it's not going to benefit you in your games that much you're looking at maybe a two to three frame a five to six frame performance uplift versus what you're getting now Versus if you add a dedicated video card to your system, even on a temp generation i3, you're going to 3x your FPS. Even if that's gaming at a 1080p, gaming at 1080p low settings. If you just look, let me jump over here really fast, Kev, because if you look at the, uh, the, the recommendations for Metro Exodus, oh, not that, Control, I'm sorry. Control recommended a GTX 780. Right. So even you couldn't play control with your i3 temp generation CPU, you likely would not be you likely wouldn't be able to run it. You It would just crash on you versus even if you added a 960 or 970 to your system, instead of taking that money to upgrade the CPU, take that money and upgrade and add a dedicated video card. This is like this is like using subtraction for addition. You're not even really swapping something out. You're adding to your system and enhancing the performance. You can always sell your i3 at a later date, but to run League of Legends and Valorant and Fortnite even, and I believe the first one was Apex, you don't need a beefy graphics card to run either one of those three games, four games. 
You don't. You can get away with it on a GTX 970. You're up in the high 90s at that point at competitive settings. We tested the 970 and the RX 570. It was about a two years ago, but the information, the content is very much still, you know, ripe. It's still very good. It gives you a good idea because I tested Apex on a, a GTX 970 and the RX 570. So, Kev, if you want to see what the performance is like for those games on those two graphics cards, head back and check out that video, the RX 570 versus the GTX 970. But you're going to want to give that one a look sees over. And this is why it's important to look at the minimum and the required specifications of your system. But take it with a grain of salt. They're a good starting point, but you're going to want to take it with a grain of salt. Trustian says Control looks so good. It does. Control has, um, in a weird way, I like the graphic aesthetics on Control. Um, it does. It, it is a, a really good looking game. And I, when I benchmarked it for the benchmarking segment of the RTX 3090, I didn't even try it to run it with ray tracing yet. I really wanted to just play it even... Uh, subjectively objectively whatever i wanted to play it for fun i have ray tracing so all good there but we I, I keep up or keep up keep a lookout because we are testing ray tracing we are testing control with rtx on of course but it does look really well and now let's jump over here to uh where is that tip number two Tip number two. Let's jump over here to tip number two. Now, fam, I, I do give me a minute. I do want to. I do have to get you guys the will return really soon. I'll be back before you count to sixty. Guarantee it. All right, and we're back. See, all right, let me switch back here. Okay, first time I ever had to do that and show you guys that room. I do apologize. We only lost a few people, but that's all good. I had to take care of that. Now, what was I saying? We were jumping in here to tip number two, and that's research and choose your platform. Now, as it stands, you you really I I don't want to say you only have two because technically you could go with the Mac, but we don't do that around here, fam. This is a PC gaming channel. I don't cover Macs. I don't even talk about Macs. So for the sakes of simplicity and the sakes of, you know, to keep it simple, do you have Intel and AMD as two platforms to choose from? Now, price to performance is the name of the game if you're interested in getting the best value for your money, okay? And that platform is going to be over on the AM4 socket, right? And that's AMD's modern um, modern chipset. AMD struggle with AM3 and AM3 Plus, sure. But here, AM4, since it, since it showed up on the scene a few years ago with um, Ryzen, the 1000 series Ryzen, right? Like the 1600, a CPU I've covered multiple times on this channel, and a CPU that still offers insane value for its six core, 12 threads. And even now, you could probably pick up a 1600X for under $100, like, I don't want to say easy because there are just genuine people out there who are making very bad mistakes with their with their prices with their pricing pricing and selling their parts. But you can pick up a first generation Ryzen CPU for under a hundred bucks and have six cores and twelve threads, right? But now historically that was Intel that was the reigning champs. That has changed so much here, like and really fast within the last couple of years. AMD games right now, especially when they came on the scene with Ryzen, was price and performance, best bang for your buck, get the most out of your money 
right? Get the most, most value out of your money that you possibly can. For example, when the Ryzen 5 1600X released, it was a $169 CPU. That was insane, given that the 7700K, a four-core 8-thread CPU, was selling for over $400 at the time. Now, was the 1600X faster than the 7700K? Not necessarily, but it was very close and within margin. The IPC wasn't quite there, but you could tell AMD was getting there. Right, so the value was the extra two cores and four threads. If you wanted to say, you know, edit video or stream, right, and having those two extra cores and four threads would help you a great deal. So that was AMD's uh, logic when they first had Ryzen come up on the scene. Now, with Ryzen, you figure, what can I get with a Ryzen-based CPU or a Ryzen-based system, right? Let me get caught up in the chat. Oh, I had some. Okay. I didn't know I had a few a few comments come in. In my short absence. Man, I'm so I so apologize. I said we lost people, but it is what it is. I, I had to dip out. I uh meant to add music to our real returns um scene, but oh well. Cliff says research required for gaming laptop. It's threefold, man. Do do you need to do your research? I think gaming laptops are a valid platform for gaming. So do I. I think there are some solid benefits to gaming on a laptop, especially here in the advent of modern laptops and laptops coming with, um, you know, 10 base series GPUs or second generation Ryzen CPUs and third generation Ryzen CPUs. There is a valid argument now more than ever for, um, you know, lap for gaming on a laptop. A few things I like about gaming on a laptop. Number one is portability. Number one, portability. Now, the only biggest downside I see with gaming on a laptop is it's how power, how computers use power, how components use electricity. And in laptops, the components are essentially cut down versions of their desktop counterparts because they have to factor in the limitations of a laptop battery and a power brick. As to where with the power, with your system, your desktop, your power brick and your battery is essentially one component and that's your power supply unit. That's the one downside I see in that, you know, you want to have long gaming sessions or you don't want your performance to be impacted. You're going to want to plug your laptop and you're going to want to play with it plugged in. That's the one downside I see because doing anything else is really going to ca cause your battery to drain faster. And really, do you got to understand how power delivery works to your components. If you're there's not a lot of battery available, there's not a lot of power available to compensate for your CPU or your GPU, then your system is going to slowly start to slow itself down. It's going to throttle itself down. But that's just really one. There, the pros far our way to cons with uh, with laptop gaming. But that's just one. But you should, you should. I mean, there's probably even more research. I say probably there is more research involved with gaming on a laptop because you can't upgrade your laptop outside of a performance booth like a performance uh, I'm sorry storage um, increasing your storage capacity maybe your RAM but because all the other components are specifically made for laptops like like everything's on an integrated PCB with a laptop the motherboard the CPU and the GPU um, you can't swap those parts out so this is why it's very important to do your research to do your due diligence if you're interested in getting a gaming laptop because do know what you're going to, what you're going to end up with you're going to have for quite a while unless you want to sell it and upgrade that's certainly an option and at that point you're kind of on an upgrade path of like a console right when you outgrow your hardware or you want more you can't necessarily swap the core components out like to a faster cpu or a faster gpu um, you're just going to want to upgrade to a faster laptop. So it's just something to, con something to consider, but absolutely. Cliff makes a very valid point. And Kev says, forgot to mention the i3 has, yeah, four cores and eight threads. So that's one thing Intel did get right when they launched 10th generation is that they reintroduced hyper threading with the stack. That wasn't always the case, right? Like say with ninth generation and on below, um, we have we clearly have AMD to thank for that because Intel saw what AMD was doing by offering um, by offering you know hyper threading with 
their Ryzen 3 and, and having different, you know, even their integrated GPUs like the 3400 and the 2400G uh, having hyper-threading. So Intel said, hey, we better add hyper-threading to our product stack too. So yeah, the i3 um, has four cores and eight threads. But see, hyper-threading doesn't necessarily help gaming in a certain way it does, in a certain way it doesn't. It really boils down to how the game is utilized for hyper-threading. See, hyper-threading was originally... And this is something we're going to jump into, too. We're like jumping a gun. Let me not. Let me just stop there because we are going to talk about why that is. But essentially, you very much want fast cores because the way hyperthreading technology works, um, you very much want the game to rely on a fast core with strong IPC. And we're going to talk about that. Cliff says, yeah, not at all. So you got a research. Yeah, if it's outside of, say, maybe you got a 240-gigabyte SSD and you want to say, ah, oh, that's no bueno, which a 240-gigabyte SSD is no bueno. And you want to upgrade it to, say, like a 1-terabyte SSD. Sure, you can upgrade the storage, right? Let's say your, your laptop has 16 gigabytes of RAM and you say, oh, well, I want 32. You can certainly upgrade your RAM, but that's where it essentially stops at. You can't really make any wholesome, whole, wholesome changes to your system at least to the core components now because amd offers that price to performance and value for your money let's say you say you know what well i want to consider i'm all about that i'm all about price to performance i'm all about i don't have a lot of money but i want to get the most out of the money that i have you know what can you go with right like what configuration could you go with as cliff says i think amd is moving away from its value identity yeah, I was going to get to that right here as it got an upcoming video that kind of could be considered a little old, but at one point it made sense to go with Intel versus AMD's latest and greatest because their the value wasn't there. There was more value in going with, you know, ninth generation even to with the 10th generation, um, like a 10900K versus a 3800X. Because their the platform cost was a little bit more, but essentially between our two examples here, which a 10700K and a 5600X, because they're so similarly priced, although the 5600X in most cases will cost you more than a 10700K, and depending on the season, you may even can snag a 10700K on sale, right? As I can maybe see it selling for like how the 9900K was available at one point for $300. I could very much see that being with the 10700K here pretty soon, okay? Especially once 12th generation Outer Lake rolls around. But with the 5600X, which is a $350 six core, 12 thread CPU, and a B550 motherboard at $169, fam, a total platform cost of about $519. Now, it's not that much more than what you would get over on Intel side, and we're gonna even talk about why it could very much still benefit you with going over AMD if you can see your needs changing drastically or rather quickly. Sorry, I'm so I'm normally I have the comments up here and I can look up, it's a little easier, but YouTube on the back end they uh it kind of locked up so and the comments aren't coming through. But Cliff says Intel Intel is investing in its foundries, in its, uh, its semiconductor foundries is what Cliff's referring to. So it could position itself as a, as that value option. If they can lower their, uh, they can lower their, their prices, yeah, absolutely. If that's going to help them absorb some of the overhead cost, then absolutely. Cliff says, do you have, or I'm sorry, Kev says, do you have a Discord? I can't see it in the description. So, Kev, what you're going to have to do is you're going to want to sign up for our email list. Sign up for our email list. So you want to sign up for the email list over the MailChimp list. And then I am going to, because the last invite link expired and we had a few people who still didn't open the email and click on the link and sign up for our Discord. I am going to resend the Discord invitation back out Sunday morning, ironically, as I told myself I want to do it after the live stream to give people a chance to sign up. So Kev, you really want to sign up, join our Discord, sign up for our email list. Um, it's designed that way because essentially after this month, like starting in maybe June, midway of June, it's going to be behind, it's going to be, the invite is going to be behind a paywall, behind our channel memberships paywall. So I'm trying to give our dedicated core community an opportunity first to join the Discord, but 
to keep it exclusive, to keep it private, I'm only sending the invites out through our email list. And the next wave, so even if you're here watching now or you're here on the replay, which I keep forgetting to shout out our replay viewers. But even if you're here watching now or you're here watching in the replay and you know that you're signed up for the email list and you missed it or you didn't get it, for one, check your spam inbox because when I did the test email, uh, MailChimp sent the, em sent the email to my own Google spam filter uh, or, or, or inbox. So you're going to want to check it there if you didn't see it and you know you're signed up. But sign up for the email list, Kev, with the link down in the description box below on MailChimp and those the Discord invites will be going right back out again Sunday morning, you'll be able to join. That's anybody else that's here now too. And um, you know, you want to sign up and you're like, how do I do it? But uh, yeah, and that's because I really would like to keep our Discord community real exclusive, real private. We got awesome folks like Tricion, who I saw he had to bounce, dip out. Cool, so it wasn't because I had to, I had to temporarily step away for 40 seconds. <laughs> we lost viewers. But um, like Cliff, like Tricion, and uh, Bad Habit. I'm sorry if I'm not sure if you're in there. I don't, I don't know you by your Discord name if you are, which if you are, do let me know. I apologize. Um, and just to name a few, a few other people. But yeah, join on over to our Discord by signing up that way, Kev. And Cliff says 10900K was a little over 300. Yeah, um, when I saw it, it was about like 329. It was on sale shortly, and then when I missed it, it got back up to like 369. Which, if you're a creator, I don't want to jump too much into that because, again, we're going to talk about that in tip number three. But if you're, if you're a creator, it could benefit you. It could make sense for you to go with a 10900K to, to get those extra cores and threads to help you with your creative workflow. At that price point, it's a super, super better buy. Man, who would have thought we would be saying this as much as I gassed up Ryzen over the last couple of years of creating content on this channel? But you could, it could benefit your workload by going with a $300 10900K versus the $350 5600X. Okay, you still have a faster upgrade path, right? Because the 400 series chipset very much compatible with 11th generation. Should you want to get that three to five percent IPC boost to sacrifice those two extra cores and four threads? We're going to talk about why, because yes, very interesting how it's the kind of the momentum shifted now from AMD being that value centric and value. And I would love to find matter of fact, fam, let me switch back here. We lost a few peeps, but that's all right, man. Cause we vibing here. Listen that a few, a while back, I had made this prediction to where I said that we could, it could possibly happen to where we could see AMD. And I did it in a vlog. I said, AMD is positioning themselves away from the value centric mindset. They don't necessarily want to be known as value. They, they don't like value for money CPUs. They they're, they have a consumer desktop based CPU, the 5950X, the 16 core 32 thread CPU. That's $1,100 CPU. How much value are you really getting out of an $1,100 CPU that may have all those extra cores and threads, but still not faster in terms of gaming? Versus a CPU that costs a third of that, right? For example, a 10900K, right? It's not like AMD introduced the 5950X at $400, right? $400, $500. No, they sure didn't. The 5900X costs more than that. <laughs> Cliff says it's up, up against a 90% up against 90% of the Ryzen stack. It's a killer value option. The 10900K Cliff is referring to. Um, I do not disagree with that. I do not disagree with that, and that's simply because even the the better op, the 5800X will likely cost you more, probably $149 more, and at that point, there's not much value there, fam. There's not a $149 difference of FPS or performance between the 10900K and the 5800X. Is the 5800X faster? It costs more. It should be faster. How much more faster? And this is what we're talking about with value. How much are you willing to put a value on how much faster that 5800X is compared to the 10900K? No, the 10900K has incredible value, incredible price to performance, getting the most out of your money versus spending an extra $149 more for a 5800X. Bad Habit says, I don't even remember my Discord name. Oh, okay, well, Bad Habit, I mean, let, I don't know. Let, are you in the Discord? Are you in Converse? And Cliff says, start a new one, Bad Habit. Get over there. Right? All right, Cliff. Oh, man, where's the air horn? Cliff, that's so true. Get over, Bad Habit. We are missing you over there, fam. And everybody else, if you're watching, if you just join us, you're like, what the heck are they talking about? We're talking about our Discord. Get over there, man. I, 
so looking forward to the conversations over there. We've just been just checking in on each other, making sure everybody's good, checking in on each other's weeks, sharing our victories, our losses, our interests, our likes, recommending games, and all of that good jazz. And there's going to be more channels added on as the, as the Discord grows. So voice channels, we'll be able to go on there and talk to one another. Um, so all of those things are coming up on the Discord. Fam, listen, I have, I'm a very milestone oriented person and once we get to a certain per a certain amount of discord members then we'll unlock this new channel right like a voice channel once we get to 25 we'll unlock you know voice channel video channel or you know a exclusive channel hangout right that's going to come in the form of uh either a patreon or a youtube channel membership tier but let me stop talking about that as we have more people people are joining in they're joining in for five best tips about building or buying building or buying a game of PC in 2021 and we were just in the middle of tip number two which was choosing your right platform between AMD and Intel based on your budget we had a few community members bring up some interesting points about how value is so important and how the mind shift has shifted between especially with Ryzen and all of the generation of Ryzen's at one point Ryzen I want to say up to at, I mean things kind of went got crazy between third generation and, and and uh, the fifth generation here with Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen 5000. That's where the value started to get a little bit of muddy or slightly muddy at that point. But at that point, 2700X and 2600X and 2600 even still to this day still offers incredible value, price to performance for their money. Because essentially you should be able to pick up a Ryzen 5 2600 or 2600X. A 2700 and 2700X might be a little trickier to find because they don't fabricate those CPUs anymore. They are discontinued, so you're likely going to find them from private sellers. But I've been seeing 2600 for $150. That's an incredible value for money for a Zen Plus, Zen Plus, Zen Plus CPU. And Bad, and Bad Habit says... We'll be we'll be there now. Remember the only reason Intel and Bad Habit says remember the only reason Intel has a lower price now is because of AMD. Yes, absolutely. This is what we were sharing with Kev and we told Kev Kev's i3 has four cores and eight threads. I'm like, yeah, if it wasn't for AMD offering hyper threading or SMT, it's Intel hyper threading is Intel's way of calling it and SMT is AMD's version of I could have that backwards. Who knows? I didn't have enough coffee this morning. It's Sunday and we don't go live normally on a Sunday. But essentially, they're both the same thing. Hyper-threading or simultaneously multi-threading. They're both the same thing. But bad habit is right. We got AMD to thank for that. But here we go now because AMD is like, you know, you either live long enough to become a hero or you or you live, live long enough to become a villain or you die a hero. Let me make sure I said that right. Y'all will correct me if in, the, in the chat or down in the comments if I didn't. But I'm pretty sure, man, we nailed that, fam. And Cliff says, if I'll be, I'll be honest. Which honesty is the best policy? Policy. Cliff says, I'll be honest. I find Intel extremely reliable platform and my preferred overclocking option. Of course, I've owned both, but I will say AMD won the hearts and minds with their value identity. They can lose that if not careful. Throw some dual rank RAM on a 10900K, hit at 5.4 gigahertz, all, and it can't be beat. Um, it, I, it, let me say this, because that is exactly my stance with Ryzen. I couldn't agree more, Cliff. And I know I don't think I've shared this on camera. Or maybe I have. But as an overclocker, as an amateur noob overclocker, I've done a lot of overclocking, but I'm like, every time I go to overclock something, especially on the GPU side, there's always something more I need to learn about it to achieve a sustainable or a stable overclock. Which I do want to deviate really fast here and say I I revisit overclocking my RTX 3090 and I I overclocked it specifically in uh, Watch Dogs Legion and I was actually able to get like a plus 40 50 megahertz overclocked versus what I was overclocking in uh, Unigen Heaven so interesting either way but I totally agree as a over as a fan of overclocking and as a stable platform. Because Ryzen is also very much a new platform. I guess that's where the instability kind of hails from. Ryzen being, what now, a couple years old. And Intel made a lot of leaps pretty much going from Zen 2 to Zen 3, in my honest opinion. It was like after Zen 1 and Zen Plus, and then, you know, we got, we had Zen 2. And then after that, we had got Zen 3. AMD had made a significant leap in terms of stability. But Intel, historically, because they've been able to refine their fabrication process 
has always felt like the more stable platform. And nothing wrong with Ryzen if you want a system that you can just, if you don't want to tinker. tinker. Um, I mean, you can tinker with an AMD-based system, but you're limited by your overclocking headroom, especially on Ryzen. It was one of the things that frustrated me the most on Ryzen and why when I had started content creation, that started on Intel. Like I, I just knew I needed something a little bit more from my uh, six, the 1600X at the time or the um, 1800X I was using at the time very shortly. Because even then, I could the highest overclock I got on, I mean, all first-gen Ryzen from what I've saw, was unable to exceed 4, 4 gigahertz, 4,000 megahertz. Unless you introduce exotic cooling and at extreme voltages or what have you, most of the time to get a stable, consumer-friendly overclock, that was at 4 gigahertz. It topped out at that. And you figure PBO, one at that time, was going to boost the cores, the highest core, you know, the a single core, the highest possible frequency, and then let all the other cores boost with with whatever's headroom is available in terms of temperature and power delivery so there wasn't much it was like maybe a 200 megahertz addition versus what pbo was doing and it just wasn't a significant uh it wasn't a significant difference in performance with doing that and i do like overclocking i really do and you can overclock intel cpus way further but again it boils down to how mature that 14 nanometer plus a few pluses is we're not even going to say how many it is but it's a few <laughs> but i totally um excuse me i totally resonate with that cliff absolutely but amd what what they got me how they won my heart and mine is the very fact that they were able to offer the market a value centric or a value oriented platform that allowed more gamers to get into pc gaming this is what inspired me to create content just off that alone because at the time you had a 7700Ks. I mean, that was a $449 CPU. So your motherboard, a four core, eight thread CPU and a Z270 motherboard, which could run on a Z170, but on a Z270 motherboard was going to run you about like five, six hundred dollars. That's more than even what the 5600X with two cores and four more threads and significantly faster and a newer chipset would do with PCIe 4.0. So, you know, that's that's where when AMD came, AMD came into the market with a fresh and reinvented architecture, i.e. the Zen architecture at a perfect time, in my opinion. When a and Intel was just getting way too beside themselves. And this is why competition is very much good and the... Uh, in a consumer marketplace, right, in a consumer space, because we want the manufacturers to put their best foot forward when they're coming for our money, fam. Like, that's just very true. Cliff says, to, to bad habit. I'm sorry. I'm not used to reading the comments down here. This sucks. It's so much smaller versus when it's up there, it's like, bam, in my face. But now, because the YouTube chat's a little wonky, on the back end, I gotta resort to slab Slav's chat, and it, the text is really small, so that's why I apologize if it takes me a minute to read. Bear with me here for a second, though, because Bad Habit says yes. So Bad Habit is offering a, a counter to Cliff's statement. Yes, but I can praise Intel because all of a sudden they are affordable. Oh, he said I can't praise Intel because all of a sudden they are affordable. They've been robbing us for years, and as soon as AMT gives us the competitions, they lower their price. I would rather buy the most expensive AMD than the cheapest Intel. It's the reason why I switched to AMD. Totally, I mean, totally understandable. Um, as Cliff also may mention that he says, I use I use both, right? And that's kind of like where I am as a multi-system user. But if you're not a multi-system user, then basing your decisions solely on what Intel has done in the past may not be may not be within your best interest right look at it as a future roadmap because what intel is doing right now is giving us a strong indication of what they have in mind for the future for example intel introducing hyper threading on their 10th generation cpus their entire stack of cpus they didn't do that with ninth, gener ninth generation cpus rising without was out um they didn't do it with eighth generation cpus 
Ryzen was out. <laughs> they waited to they waited they did a wait and see approach with AMD. They waited to see would this work in AMD's favor by offering hyper threading. Although I really do think Intel just knew deep down inside that most applications and Intel always said we have the fastest gaming CPU and AMD couldn't take that reign really until um until Ryzen 5000 came. Until Ryzen 5000 came, AMD was now saying we have the fastest gaming CPU. But no, Intel always said we always had the fastest gaming CPU. That was true until Ryzen 5000 came around. But now that's not necessarily true anymore. Now AMD can say, yeah, we have the fastest right now, which may or may not be true with 11th generation. But 5800X and the 5950X in a very real, weird way is still very much a fast CPU. But, you know, Intel's uh, Intel's ways, I would say, while I wasn't a fan of it, I still very much understood that I don't want to say it's the superior platform. It's just a well-matured platform. And it's very much taken AMD's, AMD to catch up, at least in that term. This is why they haven't completely, like, shook the market share from, you know, took, like, yeeted the market share from uh Intel, but it's getting very close. But um, I just would like to I like to point out and say that regardless of Intel being right or wrong, and Intel being right or AMD being right and wrong, because we can't forget the bulldozer and pile driver fiasco that AM that nearly bankrupted AMD. So was AMD always an honest and upfront company? No, absolutely, positively not. So just like AMD redeemed themselves with Ryzen, I think we just got to give Intel time. And by time, I do mean a few generations in between. <laughs> but uh, because from between Paul Driver and Bulldozer, we didn't, it was, we just had got right to Ryzen. And AMD didn't release a new generation in between there. And this is what allowed Intel to just say, Hup, here we go, boom, prices out the gazoo. One to 2% IPC performance upgrades in between generations, but that's going to negate to force you to have to upgrade your motherboard and CPU. This is why Intel ran rampant like that, like they did. So AMD had very much redeemed themselves with the pile driver and bulldozer fiasco, right? Lying about the core threads. Rather, again, I'm not going to, I did it on that video. Rather you want to say it's four cores, eight threads. Rather you want to say it's eight cores, eight threads. Cinebench reads it as four cores, eight threads. AMD listed CPU as an eight core CPU without hyper threading. So I don't, it's really, it, what's clear here is that there's no transparency. Is it a quad core CPU with hyper threading or is it an eight core, eight thread CPU without hyper threading? And this is one of the things where really almost kind of broke AMD's trust. They lost a lot of trust with the gaming community. Almost very similar. It's not talked about as much, thank goodness. But the same thing with the GTX 970 having not the correct amount of advertised VRAM. Nvidia still very much had to get back on good graces with uh, with PC gamers. Intel might have to do the same thing. They played the wait and see card, see, saw what AMD would do. Now they're they want to replicate. I don't think we will see lower prices though until 12th generation. 12th generation Alder Lake though, fam. Bad habit and cliff. I think that's when we will see the price reduction and intel starts start wanting to compete with amd in terms of value because they're not going to get the yields that they got by switching i believe it's down to 10 nanometers so it's not even seven so we're dropping down to 10 nanometer um on the outer lake or the which is another form of sunny cove architecture they get intel gets so it can get really confusing with intel's architecture and naming scheme but 12th generation outer lake we will see um, a lower price. I'm making the prediction now. We will see lower prices in the product stack because that's when Intel is going to have to realize they have to compete with value. Okay, because the cl high clock speeds and IPC won't necessarily be there off the bat, but they will be able to uh, compete in terms of value. We may see that in 12th generation. But, um, you know, in terms of, well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's switch back here because this actually. At, it goes in tandem with uh, with what we're saying here in terms of researching your platform, right? Knowing which one is going to fit your needs, right? Because you can also switch over. You can get a 10700K, and this is where, like, now this wasn't the case, a, you know, a couple years ago, but 
now a 10700K and say a Z490 chipset has a lower platform cost cost than going up to with the uh, say a Ryzen any insert any modern Ryzen CPU so a 5600X, 3800X, and a B450 motherboard or an X570 motherboard. You're going to have a higher platform course cost versus going with say a 10th generation 700K, 10700K, which is an eight core 16 thread CPU. Fast has a high boost clock frequency. 10th generation i7 should be able to do 4.9 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz on all cores. If a 9900K can do 5 gigahertz on all cores on the majority of them, 10th generation i7 can definitely do 5 gigahertz on all cores with a manual overclock. All right, very important. But uh, you get strong IPC here, strong platform stability, uh, higher memory and, and DDR4 support. Better things that come along with that. But you have to ask yourself, are those things that you're going to need, right? Versus the 5600X over on AMD side, with those two or with these two extra cores and four threads, is this going to help you if you want to get into streaming, gaming, or editing video? See, this is why it very much still boils down to you as an individual and less in determining what your individual needs are. Let's say you have no interest in creating content, fam. You're like, that is not for me. I don't want to stream. I'm not going to edit any videos because editing is a it's a part that no creator like. And it, but ironically, it's the one thing that I do enjoy. Like, I generally enjoy editing videos. That if I wasn't creating my own content, I would probably be just doing it for other people. But let's say you, you have no interest in getting into either of those two, uh, you know, career paths. Then... A base system like a 5600X could provide you with a better gaming experience because it's the reverse effect. The value isn't, well, I can get two extra cores and four threads that's going to help improve my workflow while also still maintaining a you know, maintaining my FPS output in my games. This cost makes sense to me going with this cost versus a 5600X. There is no right or wrong answer here, fam. There really isn't. It really boils down to what is important to you. I like PC gaming. I have the means, so I like to have more than one system. But I do want to say what bought me back into PC gaming was not Intel. It was not the allure of, say, Skylake 6th generation or X not the advent of X99 or 7th generation KB Lake with the everybody saying 5 gigahertz CPUs was like, oh, like, wow, like 5 gigahertz on a single core. That's insane at the time. It wasn't those things. It was the value of the 16, 1600X as a 6 core 12 thread CPU. That is what got me back into modern PC gaming at that time and i was just like ah, yeah. i'm i was developing games so it's not like i didn't i had a pc but it just wasn't you know it was a it was a older amd laptop and like a compact or something like that just for managing the studio but for the most part no that it wasn't intel that got me back into pc gaming it wasn't the allure of sixth seventh generation eighth generation no <laughs> I will add this eighth generation is what made me switch over to uh back to intel um, and that was with the 8700K, which was at, what, 349 or 419 when it launched. And uh, it was significantly faster than 1600X with the same amount of cores. But we have AMD again to thank for Intel, for Intel wanting to introduce a 6-core, 12-thread CPU on the desktop level. Because they had that in X99 and X299. But what they did with 8th generation, they gave us a 6-core, 12-thread CPU for the first time, right? So that's what made me want to switch back over to Intel for a dedicated system, not more than one. And then here came the content, and then I started just working with more than one system. But totally, totally, totally understand uh, both both mindsets when determining your platform, okay? But Intel, at the moment, for now, or has in the past relied on cores with strong IPC performance, we're going to talk about what IPC is because you might have heard me say it a couple of times now. We're going to talk about what IPC is here coming up in a second. But Intel has always relied on strong IPC and not necessarily more cores for value we're in. But if you simply want the fastest platform for gaming and money's no object, then really in 8th generation, ninth generation, Core i5, i7 or i9, if you have the budget, excuse me, will serve your needs. 
very important so an uh, eighth generation i5 8600 k 8400 a 9600k especially a super hot cpu right now and i had it on my watch like i said you know what i should get this cpu to do some content on because this cpu is picking up steam that's only a six core six thread cpu but a 9600k at 219 dollars fam that's a lot of value for money there especially if you want a gaming cpu not a cpu that you that you that you run applications that take advantage of hyper threading or multi-core performance if it's just for gaming, then a 9600K is going to serve, you know, could really help you put the rest of your money money into either a really good gaming monitor, like an uh, an IP, a low response time, high refresh rate IPS monitor, or into a beefier graphics card, okay? But, yeah, Intel has Intel has those range now. Intel has those keys, fam. Sorry, that little mini rant over. I'm getting a little better at my rants, right, fam? But let me get let me get caught up right here really fast. I just wanted to get that out the way. But it was very much relevant to the conversation, at least in this segment, before we jump into um, tip number three. But uh, Cliff says, yes. Or Cliff says, true. It's a give, it's a give and take, and in, in the consumer wins. So I know I'm behind and there's a delay, but bear with me really fast while we get caught up because that's true. I mean, it, it is a give and take. It really boils down to what do you want, what do you value more? The heck with your dollars, the heck with cores. You know what I really want to say, but this is a family friendly environment. But the heck with that. It's about what you value. What do you value as a PC enthusiast? Because I'm here to tell you, fam, you know me. Let me look you in the eye and tell you. Doesn't matter what platform you go with, there is no wrong choice here. Whether that's the 5600 AMD or Intel, and right now modern PC gaming, there is necessarily no wrong choice. What's going to make the choice the bad or the wrong choice? If that's if you don't base the decision off of your personal needs and what you want to get out of your system and what you want to achieve in your system, that is where the decision becomes a bad one. Not Oh, I went with AMD. Man, Intel. I should have went with Intel. Oh, I got an Intel CPU. Man, I could have saved money by going with AMD. No. What was tip number one? Tip number one, yeah. What was tip number one? Do your research. The games you play, the resolution, and the refresh rate. That is should, That is what's going to base your decision off of what platform is going to benefit you. They both have their strengths. They both have their weaknesses. Even now. Bad Habit says, yes, but I can't praise Intel. Oh, I'm sorry, I already called it that. Yeah, I mean, come on, Bad Habit. We're going to get, Intel's going to redeem themselves. We gave AMD a chance, and AMD did not disappoint when they reintroduced Ryzen. Like, they even had me like, hey, because my laptop had a, pull, a bulldozer CPU with the, with the onboard graphics. And I could run games like Star Wars Galaxies or World of Warcraft, but I had to replace the motherboard twice over because it just was not a very good uh, CPU. It kept burning the socket out. That's real talk. Um, so even I was very skeptical with AMD cause I, I, I valued reliability and I say it's okay if you're a, a content creator or you have content creator aspirations or streaming aspirations or some type of, you want to make money off your system. It's okay. Cause reliability then is important to your business. It's important to your brand. It's important to everything you do. And so at that point you value reliability. So your decisions should be based off of that. You need a more reliable, robust platform because you your system is part of your moneymaker. That doesn't mean Ryzen is unstable, but starting out, they, especially the 300 series chipset B350 and X470 and B4, I said B, B350 and X470 and the B360 motherboards, they struggle with memory compatibility. A great deal. Wow. Um, the platform really struggled with that coming out as to where you normally don't see that with Intel. So I can totally understand and respect that bad habit. But bad habit says bad habit really is saying we're going to give AMD a chance like we gave Intel. We're going to give Intel a chance like we gave AMD a chance with Ryzen. Because if, if everybody wrote Ryzen off when AMD released it, if everybody wrote Ryzen off, then we'd be in a really bad place right now with the market because Intel would have saw that as a dub. Intel would have took that as a victory and Intel would have said, you know what? Look at that. See, this way didn't work. And AMD thought by adding value and cores was going to help them turn the tides of this war. No, we don't think so. Psych. And not only did AMD do it right there, what AMD really got right was their APU. Was their Vega 8 and Vega 11 integrated graphic based CPUs. 
is what I was going to recommend to Kev. I'm not sure if Kev is still watching, but hopefully Kev did sign up for our, um, hopefully Kev did sign up, sign up for our Discord because that's one um, area I was going to point Kev into as we jump into our um, discussion about integrated graphics. But that's where AMD really got it right, in my honest opinion, that Intel is struggling to catch up and still can't really touch the performance of Vega 11, even on a 2400G. But yeah. Um, and Bad Habit says, I would rather buy the most expensive AMD than cheapest Intel. I totally understand. And XLA Gaming says, I'm on the same hand. I wanted to throw Intel under the bus, but without them, without them, PC gaming would have been far worse. I sure as heck wouldn't have one to run a bulldozer from AMD. Yeah, and it wasn't bad. You know, at the time, it was bad because of what it cost. I, I got It's important I say that. And I only say that because we revisited the 9590 uh, last year in year one. And it was okay, but at the time, it would have been a horrible choice. It would have been a horrible choice. As Cliff says, Intel's very much carried the PC gaming with AMD until they got their stuff together. I, again, AMD went very silent after a, after their um, after their Bulldover and pile driver CPUs. Their next biggest launch was Ryzen, and so that didn't come to like almost two. I think they released some mobile CPUs. If I stand corrected, uh, if I'm wrong, I do apologize. But they, there was, I'm not wrong on this. There was a significant gap in product releases other than APUs they released at the time. And I only think that was that was for like the PS3, right, and the Xbox 360. But, uh, I mean, Intel did carry the gaming PC, but they made us pay a cost for that, which in American, uh, American economy, it's, that's called capitalism. Sorry, this is normal. normally I don't take this pause. You guys do bear with me. Don't 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 bail don't bail out on lab. But the text is really small on stream labs, and I'm trying to get caught up in the chat. But it's like re like really tiny text. Because Cliff says that was also their downfall. It almost was. I, again, as a business, not even reputation. As a business, that literally yeah, it cost AMD shareholders. It cost them. So much more than just their reputation. It almost cost them their doors from being closed. That they really, really was banking on. This is why AMD got real aggressive, right? By hiring Roger Godori, who was Intel's head of design. They hired Roger Godori. They hired a few other key people to help with their Ryzen launch. Like, they were not playing around. Dr. Lisa Sue, oh, this is also when Dr. Lisa Sue came in and took over. She understood what was at stake here, fam, and that. The, the, she had to turn the ship around or it was going to go conk. So it's a good thing we gave AMD a chance when they were ready to redeem themselves. But I agree. It almost was their downfall. This clip says they got the big head. They got they got the big head. And oh, how easy it is to get the big head. We're going to be seeing it here already with AMD. Yeah, that's interesting because AMD got very bold, giving us a thousand dollar desktop CPU. That's very uncharacteristic. If if Intel did that, man, they would get flamed so hard. Intel was smart. They knew what they were doing when they left that on the X299 platform. They're saying, if you want a thousand dollar CPU, you're going to do it on a high end desktop enthusiast platform, like what the X299 platform is. That's an enthusiast level desktop platform. That's not for your average gaming. You can game on the X299 platform, but you can also do so much more on X299. Intel said, we're going to leave that for X299 if you want a $1,000 CPU. Main desktop, they topped out the 10th generation with 10 cores, 20 threads. I think that's a pretty decent place to be in for this modern era of digital, of media creation and what have you. I think that's a, a pretty decent point. But here, and, that, and the 10900K at launch, I believe, was a little over 500 or half of what the, six, the 5950X cost for with its extra 6 cores and 12 threads. But still, nonetheless, it's over $1,000 for a desktop-level consumer. There's not much value there if you only want to game. And you don't need 16 cores, even if you're streaming at 4K, maybe. Maybe you're at 4K. But at 1080p, you don't need 16 cores to do that, especially you don't need a $1,000 CPU. You just don't. When we were when I stream, when I stream Alien Isolation, that's at 1080p max settings, although my resolution is 3440 by 1440p. But when I stream Alien Isolation... That's at that's only 8700K, a six-core, 
12 thread CPU that's overclocked to 5 gigahertz. So it's on top of that, it already has that extra load put on, on the CPU because it's overclocked. And I'm streaming on top of that at a resolution that's dependent on both components, the GPU and the CPU. And it runs just fine. I'm over the 200 FPS mark um, in the game. So you don't need a $1,000 CPU to do that. You could very much jump right on board. The 10700K at that point has more value than a 16-core 32, 16 32-thread CPU. I said what I said, and it does. It does. It's hard to argue at an Intel CPU that costs under $300 or at $300 or 10 core, 10 cores of 20 threads. Even the 9900K I bought was shipping. I mean, it cost me $300. Taxes and shipping is what made it come to 320 But the cost was $300. So I'm looking at a 9900K, right, or a 3600, which was about, you know, give or take a little bit more at the time. I said the 9900K has slightly better value. Going to get, you know, more uh, more computation with those two extra cores of four threads and or computational power with those two extra cores of four threads in applications that benefit from hyperthreading. Not all of them do. Games are application, but not all games really benefit from hyperthreading. Some, like Cyberpunk, Hitman, for example, very much relies on strong IPC performance, strong single core performance. Sorry, here is uh, tiny te tiny Texas taking over again. <laughs> I'm trying to get up, but I can't. We're so buying on the chat, fam. Let me get caught up really fast. We got to jump back into the bones, man. We're gonna lose more people. People say we here for five things that you know, five tips before building or buying a game PC. I swear these may seem like many rants, but that that might even been a highlight because these there's still very much helpful information in between these segments. For those of you who are watching now, and for those of you who are watching the replay, I know it's unpopular to engage with the chat during a live show, but in this community or in this niche, there's, there could be questions. You could have, you know, you could be missing answers to questions that you don't even know how to ask yet. Or there could be issues that you haven't even taken into consideration yet until you maybe heard somebody else ask them or you heard me mention them as I reciprocate and follow up uh, follow up here on the chat. But I swear, I promise you, I'm almost caught up here. It's just these tiny texts. It's hard to... See, it's hard to read the uh, the text. I gotta squint a little bit. I'm not used to reading it down here like this. But um, totally totally agree with Cliff and, and Bad Habit is saying here on this on this mini take. Um, but Cliff says Nvidia is very much Intel of 10 years ago on the GPU side. And I mean, yeah. And AMD, I don't know if AMD is ever going to be able to achieve what Nvidia has done. I here, me personally, and this doesn't mean that you can't. Everybody has, you know, brands and companies you may favor. For example, if you grocery shop, or maybe your significant other parents grocery shop, but just look at their grocery shopping habits. They will be in a shelf with maybe 10 or 20 different vendors, but they will only go for that one. Is that brand loyalty at that point, or is that sticking to what you're familiar with? It very much could be sticking with what you're familiar with, although you know there is something better. You have options. I don't think AMD is going to be able to keep catch up with NVIDIA simply because NVIDIA has maintained the status quo for so long. And it seems like every effort, and I root for the underdog. I'm sorry, where I was getting at before is I have no brand loyalty. It's okay if you have brand loyalty. Even when I'm grocery shopping, I look at what's for sale versus the quality of the product, which is going to make me determine. I'm not going to buy Nestle because it's Nestle. I'll look at the off-brand and see what value or what benefits does it have for there. Man, listen, I'm, I like expensive stuff, but I'm cheap nonetheless. Very much cheap. I know. No, I'm very frugal. But uh, N NVIDIA is very much Intel of 10 years ago. Um, now, NVIDIA... I will say I kind of was a little upset with their RTX 3000 series pricing because they gave the illusion that you were getting more performance with this generation uplift from 2000 to 3000, RTX 2000 to 3000. They put us under this illusion that we were getting this performance boost for less money when the problem was RTX 2000 was incredibly price high. So when they came with the next generation, it's like they were able to improve on the process. So that meant they can lower the pricing. And then they said, hey, look, this graphics card costs, you know, half the price of RTX 2080 Ti, and it's about 20% faster. Is that manufactured? 
I believe so. If Intel did that, we would not be okay with it. We would not. If AMD did it, we wouldn't be okay with it. But I don't think AMD, even with the 6700 and 6800 XT and the 6900 XT, those are all very much fast graphics cards. It's good they're introducing some of these same features that NVIDIA has been offering, I don't know, since the RTX 2000 series, though. But it is good that they are coming into the game with adding new features that will enhance their hardware and enhance their Radeon line. We have to see what RDNA 2 does, but let's keep it 100. We need more RDNA 2 GPUs on the market to even see what they're fully capable of. Um, I am indifferent because when I take this approach, when when I'm gaming, uh, it's my decision. It's one of my buying factors when buying a graphics card for me personally. Although everything I've been buying here personally has always like 90% of the time been for a video, um, unless I don't show it on camera. But most of the time it's been things for a video. But this is why I I understand the you know there's graphics cards like. The R9 390 and the 500 series and the 400 series Polaris graphics cards. But where I appreciate the value in AMD graphics cards is on the used market because I really feel like you can pick up some pretty decent used AMD graphics cards compared to the NVIDIA alternatives on a used market. And so that's where the value is. But brand new, brand new, you get the the quality and that premium, uh, that premium level of just manufacturing over on nvidia's side amd is catching up starting with the, how they've changed the shroud on the rx 6000 series graphics cards right they finally went to a two fan shroud what took them long enough right it's one reason why first of all i'm gonna keep it a stack i deviated away from amd's graphics cards remember how cliff talked about being able to overclock intel cpus a little bit further and intel cpus having can go further in terms of overclocking rather you think it's worth it rather you think it's stupid it's not worth the extra heat and power delivery it's there for an option amd graphics cards don't have much overclock in headroom sans 6000 series which that can boost up to insane frequencies but it just goes to show that doesn't always necessarily mean higher frames because at 2300 gigahertz 2.3 gigahertz 2300 2.3 gigahertz holy smokes that's like 2.3 data bytes or something crazy like that metabytes something crazy but what i meant to say was 2300 megahertz is 2.3 gigahertz the graphics card isn't significantly faster than say a nvidia graphics card that's running under 2000 gigahertz or 2000 megahertz it's just not right and then even then it's really difficult to overclock an nvidia graphics card that high on air Right, you're going to run into thermal throttle, and the graphics card is going to indefinitely slow it slow, slow slow itself down. So unless you have like exotic cooling, you introduce exotic cooling, or like some type of direct way to keep the graphics card hot and to pull that hot air off. So you might have a few fans in the gazoo, which is fun, which is something I want to do. I'm just planning for the right time to do a fan, but that is something we're going to do here. I'm not talking about it because it's going to it is going to be a just subscribe if you haven't yet with the notification bell to catch it when it drops. But, man, we're going to do live overclocking stuff. We really are. But NVIDIA graphics cards tend to overclock a little bit further. This is why I prefer them. Um, even aftermarket graphics cards. If you say, well, Lab, you can get a RX 580, an Asus Rock Strix RX 580. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the uh, stock shroud. That's true, but even then, still not a lot of overclocking headroom. We saw this in the RDNA 1-2 lineup of graphics cards, the 5700 XT, most importantly. Couldn't overclock, maybe 20, 30 megahertz at most. At most. It was already overclocked as far as it can go and as high as it can go. At most, you can get another 20, 30 megahertz on top of that core. And even then, that wasn't going to yield any significant FPS and, and performance, so it just didn't make sense to do it at all. But uh, on my RTX 3090, for example, I'm getting plus 200 megahertz on the core. And in Watch Dogs Legion, this is resulting in like a 7 to 10% FPS um, boost. So depending on the game, depending on your FPS boost, it could maybe help if that's something you're interested in doing. Which uh, another commenter had gave me an idea of doing an overclocking masterclass. Just because some of your other favorite tech tubers, I don't know, I haven't seen them do it. So if they're watching and you, and you see them coming out with a... A YouTube overclocking masterclass, you know, it's because they sat in on Inside the Labs weekly live experience episode number 32, and they heard me say that I'm a I'm a develop a, a overclocking masterclass. But yeah, let me get caught up a little bit more here before that's a whole nother rant. I'm not going to get into that.
But uh, Sparta rules, and Anthony says preach. I know I'm a little late on that, Ant. I apologize, but it, Ant, Ant says A and D all the way. Um, and Cliff says, let's see, let's see, sounds good for the future of PC gaming. Considering higher resolution gaming is more and more popular, the GPU is really becoming that much more important. Like you mentioned, an i5 or 2600 will keep you rocking in gaming at 1440p and etc. Yeah, true. And, uh, Sparta rules, there's nothing wrong. You know, yeah, you can, you can value, as I see, you say AMD all the way. I, I say AMD all the way too, strictly in terms of rooting for the, rooting for the little guy, like rooting for the underdog, because, when you're rooting for the underdog, you know they are they are operating 100% um almost off of like pure will and determination. They are the underdog for a reason, so they can't necessarily say AMD couldn't compete with the vibrancy and the maturity of Intel's 14 nanometer process. So AMD didn't say, "Ah, oh, you know what? Here in 2000 and 16 we need our we need Ryzen cpus they better have boost clock frequencies of at least 4.7 or higher because at the time intel between the 6700k and the 7700k had insane boost clock frequencies on one of their four and it was only a four core eight thread cpu so you were able to get that 4.7 or 4.8 boost clock frequency if you were on an aio or say like a hyper 212 evo air cooler you were able to get that you know, boost clock frequency without having to even touch anything in the BIOS, right? But, like, with AMD, they didn't say, well, we have to match that. AMD said, we're the underdogs. We can't compete with Intel and their, well, their, their 14 nanometer process fabrication. It's so mature. They've been able to mature, you know, to really refine that process. Here, we are starting on a whole new architecture. This is something Intel hasn't yet hasn't done in a while. That's why I'm saying we can't give Intel too much credit here with their value because they're they're pretty much driving an old car here and just keeping it maintaining it really well as to where AMD is trying to, to introduce a new way to drive and work out the kinks while they're doing it, right? If that analogy even makes sense. But yeah, I mean I'm I'm all I'm AMD all the way because they they were underdogs at one point. They kind of they're like equal and getting equal footing here, but um they didn't AMD wasn't trying to compete with Intel in terms of clock speed. They wanted to compete with value. They wanted to offer more value for money at the time. And I really hope that that's something AMD gets back to with uh, Ryzen 7000, which I'm, I really hope they don't skip over to 6, but they likely will as upcoming Zen 3 APUs will likely be like the 6400G and the 6200G and things like that. Or maybe the mobile will be five maybe the mobile will be five like the 5000u and then the the upcoming vega 8 and vega 11 refreshes will be 6400 and 6200 g's but yeah and cliff you're right i mean if you want to game at 1440p uh and i especially a 9600k wow could you imagine a 219 9600k z490 motherboard for about 150 169 dollars you could save even more if you want to go get that z390 motherboard or z370 motherboard on the used market and then put that money towards getting a graphics card that's going to be able to run at that resolution are you going to pay a little bit more i'm not even going to talk about that because that's going to come up in a future video but absolutely, I mean, and the and something we we're all big fans here. Maybe not all of us, because maybe you haven't yet adopted the resolution yet. But we're all big fans here at 1440p, and I've been a big advocate of 1440p. If you game at 1080p, absolutely positively, nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking to get just a little bit more detail out of your game, I'm not even gonna say a little bit because we're talking about an extra. Maybe an extra 800 pixels, I believe, 9, 10, 11, yeah, it's like an extra six, 700 pixels. I'm horrible with math, as you can see. But you're talking about an extra six, 700 pixels bumping up to that resolution. So even if you're, say, running your games at 1080p max settings, bumping your games to 1440p mid medium settings will very much provide a much more sharper picture, a much more sharper image, right? So, yeah, definitely. Uh, the CPU... Really, your CPU is a buying factor when it comes when it boils down to what it is you're doing, and that's funny because as I get caught up in the chat here, that makes perfect perfect segue into our third tip, which ironically, what happened to it? Okay, well, it was there. 
What happened to our third tip? Holy smokes. It's not there, fam. We're live we're live shooting trouble. So, see the internet guys didn't want me to go live today, but that's not gonna hold me back. That's not gonna stop the hustle. They tried to steal my third help my third visual card. Somebody robbed me for it. It's not there. But it don't matter because your boy lab is well organized at times. And that's not gonna stop me from bringing up our third card here. Okay? And that is Face your CPU on your needs, because like Cliff mentioned, with the uh, the popularity of higher resolutions and even Intel and NVIDIA yelling, throwing 4K graphics card, 4K gaming, 4K rated graphics card, fastest 4K. I mean, they're throwing 4K. We just jumped over 1440p, and that's I don't necessarily recommend that from a consumer. I'm not a manufacturer like AMD and or NVIDIA and AMD's Radeon departments are, but just going directly from 1080p to 4K, I, you're missing you're missing a lot of context and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, you're just missing a lot by jumping over that resolution. You really are. B but base your CPU off of your needs. Do you need an eight core, six or four core CPU? Do you need the benefits of simultaneously multi-threading or hyper-threading? Where the core split into vir two, two per core splits into two virtual cores. That happens says, bruh, I wanted in all caps a 9600K, but it was too expensive. So I went with AMD. Then, then I'm sorry, I went with AMD. Then the 9600K got lowered in price because AMD was giving Intel a hard time. Yeah, you know, price fluctuation, that's why the running gag is when's the best time to build a gaming PC? Yesterday, right? Because price drops are going to make, like, determining your value a little tricky in that regard. But I only want to point out that, or I kind of want to point out that price drops normally, I mean, between AMD and Intel, these two, because they're the only two we have to go in terms of PC gaming, yes, you can go get a Mac. But... You can almost always expect one or the other to lower their skew based off what the other one is doing. And then also keep in mind, bad habit, this isn't Intel and AMD that's lowering their prices. It's their partners that's going to lower their prices, right? Because it's a, after all, it's a suggested manufacturer selling retail point, you know, price. It's a, it's suggested. It's what they recommend you sell it. So Intel recommends microsetter to sell the 9900k at 449 dollars but then it dropped down to 299 dollars somebody's missing out on a lot of the profit margin but they won't make any money with cpu sitting somewhere collecting dust but when the 8700k came out it was not a better buy than the 1600x the 1600X and then eventual, the eventual 2600 and 2600X still had better value for money. Although the 8700K was the more expensive CPU. A good rule of thumb that I like to operate on though, bad habit, that is if it costs more, it should perform better. It costs more, right? Never feel like you're missing out on something because you are unable to afford the fastest of a class or the fastest generation. I'm here to tell you that don't feel bad about that because if if it costs more, it, it should be better. That doesn't necessarily mean that what you decided to buy was not, you know, was was the wrong way to go. For example, like you say, you wanted a 9600K, but you went with AMD because the 9600K was too expensive at the time. Then it lowered in price. It's only affordable now because you had to wait damn near three generations for it to be or two generations for it to be the better buy, you know. If we go back over on the AMD side and say, well, let's wait two generations, that's still very much jumping back down to like a 2600. 5800X or 5600X is out right now, very fast, 6 core, 12 thread CPU. But it's like, no, I'd rather go with the 2600 because right now, a 10, although a 10600K is has incredible value which is believe is like 269 dollars or 11 600k it's insane right now and that just we think i do think that's because the gpus are what's the hot ticket in a nutshell to uh to kind of end that mini rant but bad habit says i'm still using my 2500k it's still kicking butt in roblox 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there is your twenty is your second is your uh is that your main system or do you have like a dual system? Do you use another system with your twenty five hundred K, your Ryzen based system? And Cliff says I love my set fifty seven hundred XT with its factory whiskey, factory whiskey depth. <laughs> I saw, I say I ran it right next to my twenty eighty rig back when I had zero driver issues. That everyone that's everyone's mama said was widespread. I did like that blower. I'm not a fan of single blower graphics cards in general. That's me personally. Again, I like to overclock and given that maybe on an open test bed the blower may work out but in the case it's just very impractical because it's relying on the air in the case to cool the gpu up you know it's going to pull the air up through out back and out of the gpu i've never been a fan of single file i've never i mean uh the gtx 1070 that we did a couple videos on which overclocked you know fairly well but i like to push my overclocks uh rather aggressively so um it's good that i have a, as a well-rounded cooler as possible when overclocking a graphics card but to my understanding the 5700 xt was such a uh, smart launch for amd that it really didn't even need to rely on overclocking it could handle 1440p and 1080p high refresh rate gaming uh with the best of it for the money when at the time what the 5700 xt cliff would you pay for yours 400 i don't even want to say you paid over 449 dollars for it unless it was an add-in board partner uh 5700 xt but at one point, I believe the 5700 XT was a $400 graphics card. If we weren't going through the 2021 tech demic right now and you could pick up a 5700 XT for $400, you know how fast they'd be buying? People would be snatching that up for, which even then it'd be like $300 graphics card. At that, at the time is what that graphics card value should really be at right now. If we weren't screwed over by the tech demic, I wouldn't pay no more than 350 for a 5700 XT. Maybe even like 300, like between 300 to 350. I wouldn't pay no more than that for a 5700 XT. No way you're gonna find that now though. <laughs> Cliff said I thought that car was sexy. It was, it was a bold design. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a, it just wasn't for me personally. It, I liked, I do like the 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 uh, the kind of color in it. It had. Like with the lines going down, I wasn't a fan of the little mini groove, but it is what it is. It just wasn't for me. I did I did try to pursue and get one, but uh, they were selling like fast even then, so I just just bailed out. But um, now I'm still, and I'll probably still will revisit the 5700 XT. That 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 GPU still has a lot of, in my honest opinion, that GPU still has a lot of 1440p life left in it. It really does. So we had a question: the Champion Zone. Champion zone, zone. I thought that was mode. See, so change the name. What's happening, John? John says peace, lab fam. What's happening, John? John says I have a question. Lab fam, who has purchased graphics cards off of Offer Up? I'm thinking of purchasing a 2080 Ti off of there. Um, I, you know, I'm chucking out on graphics cards on Offer Up. I have, I had a video plan on buying used parts off on offer up but offer up kept i want to say the po word but offer up kept frustrating me man because i haven't bought a gpu off offer up but i have bought other used parts but what's caused me to be a little skeptic of offer up is that i see graphics cards that are almost too good to be true and it's not because they're they're let me switch back here this is super important to answer champion mode zones question i see graphics cards that are priced too good to be true and that's only because they're priced too low given the current climate and situation right now so even to myself i'm like 2080 ti for 450 bucks what is the problem here or 2080 ti for under 600 bucks something's something's not right there because if you switch over to everybody's favorite scalped environment or arena ebay that's just not the case and there will be people like myself although not as honest and good looking as myself okay maybe not as good looking but there's people out there not as honest that would want to buy those buy those graphics cards for themselves. They very much would buy it to just turn around and put back on eBay. eBay, I'm sorry, and sell. Um, perceive of caution, John, buying a graphics card off off of offer up. It's one reason why when I recommend, I don't necessarily recommend offer up. I recommend eBay. Buyers have more to lose with eBay, and eBay definitely has better buyer protection enabled. Like, even if the item isn't offered a refund, 
if you get it and something's wrong with it, they have to honor the return policy unless it's made is explicitly clear that there's no returns. And then even then on a used graphics card, I'd be a little concerned about that. All the used parts I sell, I definitely sell with a 30 day return in case something happens to it. Um, buying something online without the ability to return it, I'd be skeptical of that. But when I'm putting in offers over on eBay, almost or, or offer up, normally what happens is I don't get a response back. And then I look back and see how long the item has been listed. And it's like a month, two months. Fam, we've been in the tech, dem we've been in the tech demic, the GPU shortage supreme for the last six months almost now, since September. So it, more, right? No, October, November, since then. So give or take a little more. I told you I'm not good with math. So it's been like almost seven months. And uh, if there's a graphics card that's on there and a 2080 Ti, if the 2080 Ti isn't selling for anything over $800, something's wrong with it. And chances are it's either A, already sold, or B, something's wrong with it. And I almost did a, a, a frustration rant tweet about this on OfferUp because I, I show you my OfferUp now. And I have about three offers or four offers I'd put in. And I haven't got no response back. One, I had to cancel it. I I jumped on it because the offer up. For those of you who don't know, if you just hasn't, you know, you haven't bought anything on the platform, offer up. You don't have to necessarily wait until the seller to verify the item. You could just put the offer in right there, and they'll come in, they'll accept it, and get the ball rolling, based off of whatever offer that they choose to seem fit. But the problem with that is if they don't take the item down which is what I was going to rage tweet about is that a lot of these offer up sellers, they're just not unlisting their items or marking them as sold. You almost would always see this on Facebook because nobody wants to be bombarded with Facebook messages because most of you are on Facebook more than you are on offer up. Offer up is not a social media platform, but Facebook is. So you don't want the ding, ding, ding. Hey, is this still available? Hey, I would like to buy this. Hey, is this still... So if you sell on Facebook, like Cliff, I know you sell on Facebook. Anybody else who sell on Facebook, you may get those annoying dings. So you're going to take the listing down. But on OfferUp, what I've seen, they have not – sellers are less reluctant to take their listings down. So I'll see graphics cards on there that have been on there for a month or two months, and I just know good and well that the demand is way too high for any of these graphics cards to be available at these price points. And so something in the milk ain't clean, fam. So I would just – one, no, I had to cancel – I canceled. It was for a 1660 Ti. The person was selling it for $350. I said, what? A 1660 Ti for $350 offer? I put the, hey, uh, 350 out to get a problem with shipping. The person never got, the person never responded back. So I ended up just canceling the, uh, canceling the offer because I'm not just going to have it hanging there. And it's just, and I'm like, who, if you're selling something, anytime you list something, if you're selling it on offer up and you're willing to ship, Getting your money is already going to be a slow wait. It's a slow burn selling online. So you want to kind of push that sell as quickly as possible. Don't make no sense sitting on it. So that's one thing that's made me apprehensive with buying graphics cards on OfferUp, at least right now, because, you know, the sellers just they're just a little they're, they're annoying me right now. They're not taking their, their listings down. And um, really, you can tell that, I, unfortunately, as much as I loathe making this statement but you can tell the quote-unquote honest sellers because their graphic card prices are right along a lot of right along the lines of what everybody else is selling them this is this is evident even on the facebook marketplace i'm not personally on facebook i do have to come back to launch our facebook group <laughs> for those of you who like cliff knows i was on facebook but for those of you who don't know and john i mean I, i'm not on facebook right now but I uh, I still can browse the the market, and when I do see something, I just jump on my wife's, um, you know, Facebook Marketplace to kind of put a uh, to put a offer in. And but yeah, even on over there, if I don't see the graph, if I see a RTX 3070 and it and it's selling for the price that it's supposed to be selling for, I'm a little concerned. And you unfortunately should be too. This is just unfortunately the reality, perception versus reality. This is unfortunately the reality of PC gaming. It shouldn't be this way too long, and hopefully this isn't something we'd have to worry about too long. But we just have to get through the 2021 tech demic. But sorry in a long rant way as we have people come in and leave. But, John, great question, though. Great question. I hope that answered your question. Um, Cliff said, I commented that lab I commented that lab since you said you didn't like the Radeon design. Oh, okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily that I didn't like it. I mean, it was definitely functional, right? It had functionality behind it. I just... 
I just like adding board parts. Let me just be, let me be clear. It's not that like I didn't like the Radeon design. I like the aesthetics behind adding board part. I just prefer an adding board uh, partner card. I've never personally owned a reference cooler based graphics card uh, here in minor in terms of PC game in any way. I just haven't. Um, they've all been adding board because I like the uh, I just like the non reference design and um the fact that you're getting something slightly different than the next person so i have a rtx 3090 asus rock strix rtx 3090 and it's different than say you know somebody with the msi R asus rock strix rtx 3090 or the asus tough or the, anyone the pny speaking of with xlr gaming but yeah it's all good though no i mean i like the sleekness of it I will say that I did like the sleekness of the Radeon reference design cooler and I like the ruggedness of Nvidia's. but once you factor in that it's not about how much do I like it how much fun how good is it going to dissipate dissipate heat how is it going to help me with my overclock now Adam board cars don't have their downsides too based off how they shoot the heat back into the case and reference blowers shoot it out through the rear so it, I mean like you said earlier it's a you know it's a give and take and you really got to Weigh in your personal needs and what you want to get out of your graphics card, especially on an aesthetic level, because the I love RGB on my graphics cards, for example. I know that's an unpopular uh, opinion, but I, I like RGB on my graphics cards. And so you weren't going to get much of that on a reference cooler, say that if I had moved the camera over, which I don't want to because it's going to mess up too much. But I love the reference design on uh, the RGB on my MSI RTX 2080. That's why I've been yet to want to replace switch back and use the 2080 Ti. And the RTX 3090 is downstairs on the core shredder rig. Excuse me. I really like the aesthetic of the RTX 2080. It's why I, I, I don't want to swap it out even for a graphics card with three more gigabytes of VRAM. And it'd be slightly faster. No, I really like the, and I like the aesthetic on this MSI G2, GeForce RTX more than the EVGA, which has three fans. And didn't even overclock is good. Um, I like, I very much still like the RGB on this MSI RTX 2080. In fact, I waited for this graphics card because the moment I saw the RGB, I fell in love with it. Uh, <laughs> Cliff said, I thought you said Wish. Nah, I would say, man, stay away from anything PC gaming on Wish. Nah, that's a whole, that's a video too that's coming up in the summer, but, um, it's more so with like big buys. And Cliff says, I thought you, I thought you said Wish. Offer up is okay for local sales. Yeah, I mean, and to some, if you wanna, don't wanna meet in person, or if you can set up so it's safe for both parties, offer up is more of a of a local meetup type of place. But I would more so say it that it's better buying, getting stuff shipped to you. I have, I have, I have had components shipped to me like SSDs and even the Ryzen 1600X CPU I built for my kid's computer. I did have those sent to me, and even if I'm skeptical, I ask questions. I'm like, if you have something to hide, you're not going to answer my questions. If I'm asking you, are there, are there any bent pins? You know, when was the last time it was installed? Did, were there any issues? Can I see pictures? Can I get at least four pictures of the back of the CPU in all different angles? If any time somebody doesn't want to do that, I'll just walk away. There's thousands of other CPUs I could buy. If you don't want to take the time to help give me peace of mind with this cell, because even meeting in person, I don't want to waste my time meeting in person. I don't want to drive 30, 40 minutes away to get to you and like look at this, inspect the item and be like, oh, dude, I didn't, I didn't know there were bent pins on here. And oh, well, you know, it's as, oh, well, that's okay. I'm not interested. Thank you. It, you can still benefit. Either you're meeting in person or buying online, you can still benefit from asking questions. And if the seller is hesitant in those questions, then those are red flags and just immediately bail out. There's, if the deal is too good to be true, then it probably is. And I've seen a lot of that, man. I've seen I've seen a lot of that. Um, but yeah, what frustrates me more is people don't want to, the, the deals are on the Facebook marketplace. I will say that the deals are on the Facebook marketplace, but almost nobody wants to ship on the Facebook marketplace. So I will, when I'm looking for a local, when Craigslist ain't got nothing, I love Craigslist. First of all, if we got to get back on topic, but first of all, I love when my grandmother, rest her soul here. Let me get a little personal really fast before I jump into the chat. My grandmother, God rest her soul. Some of my favorite pastimes with her was we would go to flea markets or she would see 
trash outside of other people's home. And before you go try to judge my grandmother and I have to look up where you are, so I would advise you not to do that. Before you go judge my grandmother, I tell you, I learned something. I learned humil hum humil humility, right, in doing that. And literally trying to find, you know, value, if you will. The old adage is trash is, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure or woman or what have you. But I really enjoyed doing that. And we would come across so many different cool things that even I would find really cool. It's like if it was like a toy that was in the trash, we would call it dumpster diving, right? Somebody move out in an apartment complex and they got like a whole bunch of bright and colorful objects and lamps. She would find lampshades and all sorts of different just picture frames and pictures and vases and candle holders. And I reciprocate that to this day. I love the new flashy fancy stuff, fam. I really do, right? But I can jump on Craigslist and I just enjoy looking for the used stuff in a very flea market heavy way but craigslist and facebook those are my two mains if i go to to meet somebody locally because craigslist sellers very hesitant to ship i've been turned down numerous times man somebody was selling a 5600 xt for 249 dollars this was two two months ago fam i offered them 300 to ship it they lied to me they said if the person they said oh we got somebody coming if they don't get it then maybe we'll consider it. they lied they didn't want to do it i ain't stupid play the lotto don't play me but I offered him even more money and to pay shipping just because I understood how much value the 5600 XT had. And they did not want to ship. They wanted me. To, it would have been an hour drive for me. And I just at that point, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. But Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, definitely those are where the deals are. But you are going to have to go meet, fam. Facebook sellers are very hesitant. I don't think I bought anything off Facebook that was shipped to me. Real talk. Craigslist, yeah, I, I was able to, you know, to persuade sellers over there by telling them I have a verified uh, verified PayPal account. I even dropped the link to my channel for a little bit of uh, credibility to show them that I'm not some two-time scammer, so that was interested. Um, and, if you're, and, and if you're here and I did that to you, let me know, by the way. Help jog my memory. Um, but I, I seriously doubt it. <laughs> but yeah. Alright. But that's that's my that's my hot take on Craigslist and Facebook. You can get some pretty good deals there across the board. Uh, people want to make people want to meet in person because they want to flip the product faster. They want to make their money quicker. This is why they don't want to ship. If you haven't sold anything and shipped it online, you don't get the money instantly. It takes like a two week burn, you know, and if you're selling something for the first time on eBay, eBay even makes you wait like 30 days before you have the money because you're not a uh you know, you don't have as much clout as a seller and they don't trust you as much yet. They hold on to the money. So this is why people don't want to ship on Craigslist and Facebook. They're like, nope, I've been turned down plenty of times. But I am a firm believer of you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And at worst, the most a person could say is no. You ain't going to hurt. I ain't going to lose no sleep over you telling me no. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the next seller at that point. You, I, Hey, uh, I'm willing to I'm willing to ship or I'm willing to I'm willing to pay for shipping. I have a verified PayPal account. I will pay for shipping. I will pay using products and services. Are you willing to ship? And I will use the fastest possible shipping method so you will get your money faster. And this no, I don't want to ship. Sorry. Okay. Next. <laughs> But uh, offer up because you can filter you can filter between you know local pickup and delivery or shipping is why I say offer up depending on what it is right you know depending on what it is could be viable especially if you're looking for older hardware right like if you're looking for an older base generation an older like an i5 the 34 3400 or 3400 i5 3470 fourth generation Intel CPU let me get caught up really here because we were in tip number three and this is all very much in tandem with are five tips which was the number three which what we'll, we're going to jump back here in a second champion mode says so what if what if i'm going for about 800 800 i've seen a few for that price i mean if you're willing to pay that that much for a for an rcx 28 ti um that's probably a little bit more accurate that's about along the lines more of what i would expect a rcx an, an available rtx 28 ti to be selling for right now, $800. That makes way more sense. Is it worth that? That is up to you. 
And when I say that, I'm talking to John Champion Zone, but also anybody else that's here listening and watching right now or on the replay. If you want to get a graphics card and you ask yourself, hey, is $800 too much for RTX 2080 Ti? I'm going to tell you, well, when it first came out, it was, you know, damn near $1,100, you know, a stack, $1,100. And then even the add in board ones were like 12 and 13 so is $800 a lot for RTX 2080 Ti? Still very much a fast graphics card with 11 gigabytes of VRAM and still the fastest possible Tensor Core based RT Core based 2000 series graphics cards you can get? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, I will say 800 is probably pushing it for me personally though. I would maybe keep looking, but I'm a I'm a tight I'm a tight frugal person. <laughs> so I'll be like, "Uh, can I maybe get one for 600?" Can I maybe get one for 600? Because even then, I'm paying a premium for this graphics card. And just think about it like this, fam. We are paying new graphics card prices for old graphics cards. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're not worth it. That just means we're paying just for that. Old graphics cards, we're paying new prices for. Which $800 is not what the RTX 2080 Ti was going for. But it's still less than five years old. So I don't think that's that bad to pay for in that price point. Keisha, Keisha, I hope you're still here with us, Keisha. I don't think we've had the opportunity to uh, to meet. Welcome to the live show. Champion mode, I'm sorry, Cliff says, I've sold and traded on offer up local. Yeah, I've only, I've only bought low. I mean, I've met up locally on offer up as well. But shipping, I have... Uh, to clarify, I've never had a graphic. I've never paid for a graphics card on OfferUp. Had it shipped to me. CPU, storage drives, yes, but a graphics card, no. Um, and I've met, I've met in person for. Uh, matter of fact, to do a little bit of lab history, that the the video I did where I'm like, you know, twenty five dollar gaming PC or what have you. I paid forty dollars for a gaming PC, but I had to clean it. It was utter. It was filthy. It was dirty. I had to take a shower after cleaning that. If you think I'm BSing you after this live stream and you've done everything else and you got a good couple minutes and you want to watch that video, I swear on everything I love. I took a shower after cleaning that computer. It was bad. But I bought that off offer up. <laughs> I met met the if it didn't wasn't shipped to me. I met the person in Wilmington, um a city in in Delaware. I met him in Wilmington by the police station and it was a $40 PC. I bought that off offer up. It's one of the first items I bought on offer up. Keisha, I see you had a, a question. I'm going to get to it here in a second. It's bad habit says, John says, um, thanks. I knew I'd get some insight. Thanks. Yeah, no problem, John. I mean, if you need more contextual information, too, you can always reach out to me as you're seeing them. Bad habit says, my offer up was hacked, so I stopped using the app. That that sucks, fam. Sorry to hear that. I hope your information, because, you know, you have things like your address, possibly, and maybe even um, credit card information stored on there. That truly does uh, suck in the worst way. So I hope you were able to, you know, delete any sensitive information and get that squared away. Bad habit. Keishaw, I hope again, I hope you're still here. I see I apologize. I'm getting to your question late here, but I have a little catching up to do. And for those of you who don't know, normally I don't read from the chat down here. I normally read up there because it's easier to read and see. But I'm, YouTube's chat went down before the live went up, ironically. So um, I had to resort to Streamlabs. So I see my guy, your highness is here. Your highness was happening. Your Highness for the win. Keshaw says, do you think buying a pre-build is even worth it in any situation? Great stream, brother. Keshaw, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you being here, first and foremost. Every single one of you. You know, I tell all of y'all that. You hear me say, when you hear me say, I appreciate you being, when I say, I appreciate you being here, it seems odd because I'm telling you that on a video. But when I mean, when I say I appreciate you being here, my video is on YouTube as a platform. My channel as a channel is on YouTube as a channel. And so when I say I appreciate you being here, I mean, I appreciate you being here on the channel here on this video. But most importantly, just being here in the community when I say that. But I appreciate you. Being, I appreciate every single one of you being here. So when I tell you that, I mean it, fam. So K. Shaw, to answer your question, yes, I do think it's worth it in a given situation. Um, we're going to jump the gun because that's actually the fourth tip after we jump into tip number three here in a second, which we're going to segue into. But that's actually our fourth tip I'm going to have. But. Okay, Shaw, we actually did a live stream kind of dedicated to that where we broke down a $1,400 gaming setup. $1,400 gaming setup, fam. Not just, say, the PC, 
That was for the whole entire configuration, $1,400. That was your keyboard, your mouse, your audio solution, your monitor, network solution, and the system. And what we did was we took $1,000 from that $1,400 budget and we configured a pre-built. Now, a perfect part to answer the second part of your question where you said, is it worth it in any situation? I'm giddy because the 2021 tech demic is that situation. The GPU shortage supreme is that situation. This is the situation where, yes, getting a, a pre-build could potentially save you money if you know what to look out for and what to look for. And now, Keisha, I'm going to let me say possibly that's something you're interested in and an avenue you want to take and i tell you you're in the perfect community so if this is your first time first of all let me welcome you all to definitely give the stream a like if you haven't yet on your way in or out and subscribe to the channel because we're going to come up with all we have all sorts of helpful content coming up here in the future k shaw and anybody else who have yet to subscribe but you know we covered that that topic extensively and it's this situation where it's hard to get a dedicated graphics card to maybe say complete your rig because what you might you might have set aside a thousand dollar budget four or five months ago and so the graphics card you planned on getting say you plan on getting an rtx 2060 four or five months ago to finish your build but then the tech demic happened and then now that you know 329 dollar should be a 329 dollar rtx 2060 now it's selling for about five six hundred dollars if i jumped over and checked so in that case, a pre-built, which would, you should be getting one that comes with a dedicated video card, could save you money as the $1,000 examples we use did have dedicated video cards. After we power through tip number three, I'm going to share some of those tips with the community, k -Shaw. So if you're still here watching this, do be sure to stick around for that. Tim is it? Yeah, all good, bro. They say no charge until 20 2022 yeah so if you're referring to offer up where i said about um you can put the offer in and although the seller's not getting back to you it, it it's good to know so within context yeah that you won't get charged until 2022 but um if the item's available i don't want to wait until 2022 like it's, it's just take it down if it's not available i had my offer sitting there for like two weeks what am I waiting for at that point? It's not there. Just give me a hit cancel. I don't want to go through the the refund rhetoric and I gotta, I gotta wait. Lo I gotta wait longer for my money to get refunded back to me than it sat there waiting for the seller to approve the offer. So, I mean, that's just something to take into consideration. But it's good that they do. There is a window. But me personally, I'm like as a seller, as a seller myself, if the item's not available, I'm going to take it down. If you ran, if you sold, if you ran a used car lot and you had cars. You know what I mean? And uh, you have a website. Maybe as the car gets sold, you're going to take it down. Why? Because you don't want your, your sales floor to get flooded with calls about a car that's just not for sale or people coming in looking for wanting to buy a car that's just no longer there anymore. Right? So that's why I say sellers, sellers take it down. Sellers just take your listings down once it's sold. Stop just getting the bag and running off. I know it can be forgetful at times. And eBay, it's a little bit more easier. But uh, things like OfferUp and, and Craigslist, it's just like if they don't – if in Facebook even at times, if they don't market as sold, it's just like you're just uh, – it can be frustrating. Cliff says the most the most be sort of in-house financing option, Champion Zone, but be careful with the interest rates. It looks at Amazon or PayPal credit, even MicroCenter credit first. Yeah, I mean if you – hey, look. With financing, always a always a delicate tightrope, and so many different factors to take into consideration. Is the they will, the biggest factor will be your credit work, credit worthiness. Fat Habit says my favorite thing to do is dumpster dive, but the Rona has put a stop to that. Dang you, Rona! I may have missed so many treasures. Yeah, I mean dumpster diving. Yeah, I might admit that in a in a slightly figuratively sense because we necessarily didn't go into dumpsters but if it was outside of dumpsters we were right there fam and even then me if i pull up to a house and i see some stuff i'm like what they got out there ask mrs mod all the time we rolling through our subdivision i'm like yo so i just was moving out what they got out there they ain't got, they ain't got nothing good all right let's keep going <laughs> but if there's something there i'm like i might jump into that your highness says craigslist no yeah, Craigslist is a little old school, but I, we know before your offer up, before your Facebook marketplace, you know, before eBay kind of took off, it really was eBay and um, Craigslist, you know, where you had to barter and sell online. 
Cliff says, yeah, I love digging through the, the flea markets. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's you could find some incredible value. But like, let's tell you what, let's jump back on the com- on the conversation because we we are uh, we're dropping like flies. But again, so I, I dropped in our, 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 this visual aid because yeah, you want to base your base your uh, buying decision off of your needs. The kind of CPU you're gonna you're gonna want to budget for is going to be based off of your needs. Do you need eight cores? Do you need six? Do you need four? Do you even need hyper threading? If you don't need hyper threading and you don't, you're not, your in temp generation is your target, then a CPU like the 9600K that we had talked about, right? Six core, six threads is going to be a phenomenal single core, fast single core, strong IPC gaming CPU. But if you're going to want to say, well, no, lab, I, I want to dive. You've inspired me, which if I've inspired you, man, that's very, that's awesome. But you may say, hey, you inspire me to want to stream some games or I'm pretty good competitively. So I want to share my skills with the world. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> Go for it. So maybe you might want to need, you might want to benefit, you may want to uh, get a CPU that has hyper threading or SMT to benefit from the splitting up that workload or splitting up the uh, the tasks that your CPU is going to have to perform. Hyperthreading and SMT is going to help with that, not so much with just gaming, but with doing multiple things at once. Um, that's You could be streaming and gaming, Discord in the background, listening to music, right? All of those things, and you would want that extra headroom, the extra compensation of computational output, because you want to maintain the FPS in your game. It's one thing to say, oh, I have a 9600K. I'm good. I have six cores, six threads. I, I'm just going to be gaming. And then to turn around and say, well, now I'll, I have Discord in the background to talk to my mates, or I'm also streaming some music. So now your game performance is going to be hindered because you're doing other things you hadn't planned on. Base it on your needs. Even if you have future aspirations, chances are you're probably thinking about it right now. <laughs> okay? Maybe if you have future aspirations, think about your needs. Okay? Your CPU should be based on your needs, how you plan on using your PC, and what you plan on using it for. If you're a student, you can get away. You don't even need a dedicated video card, for starters. I hate refre- I hate saying the word hate. I uh, do not like referring to the video because I've done it so much. But when we built the How to Build a Ryzen CP, How to Build a Ryzen PC with the 2200G, that was for a client that wasn't a gamer and really didn't have gaming-like needs. But that CPU very much can, with its Vega 8 onboard graphics, can very much run games. But it's not used to this day for gaming. So if you're a student, you're very much in that same boat. You don't need an i7 to casually browse the internet, do school work. Working in Excel is debatable. Working in, in you know in Excel is debatable. But even in uh, an i5, 8400 or 9600, will do you just fine. Will do you just fine. This is why it's important to base it off of your needs. If this is a multifunctional system. Which I do part of my ignorance. That's something I do got to remember to talk to talk to the multi-purpose system or the single base systems, single system users. I can't talk, fam. I told you. I got to talk to y'all more because not everybody has more than one system to be like, well, I got Intel to do this. And then I got my Ryzen CPU. Then I got X299 and I got an X399 build. Not everybody has the luxury of build swapping or system hopping from system to system to do different things. Most of you, I could be wrong, but I'm willing to assume here, most of you are single system users, unless you have some other intensive workflow. Most of you are looking to get the most out of a single system. Maybe reasons of space, income, what have you, time. Maybe you don't have time to even maintain. Well, let me tell you one, like each computer is like a flipping child, y'all. And they do require some level of maintenance, either do driver updates, bio updates. The more you use the system, the dustier and dirtier it gets, so you have to clean it. Um, or things go wrong, you have to service it to prevent other components from fault becoming faulty. So it very much could be a time-based issue as well. But the, decide on the kind of CPU you need based off of your needs. If you have a well-rounded needs, you game, you use your system for work, Maybe you want to get into creating music. Maybe you want to edit videos. Maybe you want to get into photo manipulation and graphic manipulation. Maybe you do want to do those things. 
your CPU is going to be your your CPU needs is going to be based off of all of those things you want to achieve. So things like hypercore hypercores. Wow, that's pretty cool. Like a hypercore. I said it first. I you heard it here first. A hypercore. Man, where's our air horn? I need the air horn. Hypercore, but no. Hyper threading will benefit you in that case, right? Because if you're gaming, eight cores seems to be here in 2021 the sexier option, if you will. Eight cores. Six, maybe two years ago, was the option. Um, 1080p, six is pretty good. 1440p on higher. You're definitely going to want to. You're definitely going to want to want eight. As even if you see here in our Metro Exodus, our Metro Exodus PC specs to jump back up to two tips ago. Recommends a 9900K at 4K. It's an 8-core 16-thread CPU. We got one right here in the box. It's an 8-core 16-thread CPU versus 1080p 60fps. They're telling you you can get away with a 4th generation 4-core 8-thread i7. Right? Significant jump by just going up two resolutions. Even for 1440p, they're calling for a 6-core 12-thread 8700K. So depending on your resolution, your games, which was tip number one, and what you want to get out of your system. This is going to depend on the type of CPU you need. As you can see here in our Metro Exodus example, if you didn't want to play Metro Exodus at 4K Extreme, which we we went on, we went in on that on that topic on why that was, but even if you didn't want to game at 4K Extreme, 4K 60 FPS at the Extreme preset, you're looking at you know being able to thumb down and get. A, a CPU within the fourth and eighth generation Intel or over on AMD side. Now that doesn't necessarily have to be an 8700K. Between a fourth generation and eighth, gener eighth generation Intel, 8700K and a 4077K, you're well within the specs of say with the 2700X or 2600 or even a 3600. Okay. It all boils down to your needs. If you don't have any intention on playing games at 4K, you don't need a multi-threaded CPU, which I have my theories as to why more cores help at uh, 4K. As Tricion popped in and said, hey, yo, I'm back. Broski's still, Broski's still live. Let's go. See you, man. Are you leaving on us again, Tricion? Are you? Okay, I think you just feeling the vibes. But Tricion, <laughs> welcome back. For y'all who don't know, Tristian, whether he's still here or not, Tristian's over in the Netherlands, and he's it's probably like 11:30 where he's at right now. But um, you know, base your base your CPU off of your needs. Do you game? Yes, I do game. What kind of games you play? Well, I like to play high resolution, high fresh rate, multi you know multi and multi purpose system. I don't just want to play video games. Yeah, I'm also a student, but. I all work and no play makes Jack a doll boy, right? So you want a multi-purpose system. It's what I actually would recommend. I don't recommend building, say, an Intel system and an AMD system. If you're an enthusiast, like all of us we here are, we there's nothing wrong with that. But for sake of simplicity, you want probably a robust system that has multi-purpose function. You know what I mean? Oh, look at that. I nailed it exactly, Ty. 1130. Wow. But, um... You know, you want a multi a system that's going to be able to serve you well for a long time and be able to do multiple things at once. In that case, it's good to kind of overpromise, under deliver. Yeah, yourself though. If you need it, if you're a gamer, then you're gaming. Get a dedicated video card. But you're also a student. Okay, that just means when you're not smashing frames, you're going to be smashing the keyboard with text, right, and getting that knowledge. And I see Cliff says, got to run, homies. Wife made an awesome smelling stew, and I'm about to tear it up. Good stuff, Cliff. It was great seeing you, Cliff. And Tristian says, exactly up at 1130. All right. But switch it back here to CPU needs after bouncing back from our Metro Exodus example. Again, base it off of your needs. Now, it's important that, yeah, cores are important. It's good to know your cores. It's good to know your clock speed. But I can't ignore how oh well you look at that okay somebody been somebody stole all of my helpful uh infographics this live stream i gotta drop i have to drop it in here live because <laughs> it's not there it's all good though again i ain't gonna stop I ain't gonna stop the hustle ipc very important you may or may not have heard about it 
But IPC, very important. Now, what is IPC? IPC stands for Instructions Per Cycle. And now, not to bust your chops or to break your brains, I, the best way to put IPC is, from my perspective, is if clock speed is the door, IPC is the king. Clock speed isn't the only factor that determines a CPU's speed, right? Like, you just can't see a high clock speed and be like, oh, that's a fast CPU, or this CPU is 4.7, this one's... 4.9, oh, that's the fastest CPU. Yes and no. IPC definitely still, very much still plays a factor. Now, say clock speed is a door and IPC is a key. That's because the clock speed is where you want to, is what you want to get to, but the, the, the key, the performance is behind the door. So to unlock that performance, this is where IPC comes into play and how it serves as the integral key here in this scenario. Now, with every tick of the clock, right, the CPU, the CPU will fetch and execute an instruction, right? So it will, you say, I want to go get this, or I want to calculate this. It will send it out and it'll wait for it to come back, right? It'll say, hey, we need to do something. It's, it said, click this. What does that instruction mean, right? Now the clock speed, your clock speed is measured in cycles. One cycle equals one Hertz, right? Or yeah, one cycle is known as one Hertz. So that means if your CPU, for the sake of simplicity, if your CPU has a clock speed of two gigahertz, that means it can carry out 2,000, we're looking at my notes here because I don't do good, I'm not good with math. <laughs> I had to write down my notes, but if your CPU has a clock speed of 2 gigahertz, they can carry out 2,000 million, 2,000 million or 2 billion cycles per second. It's an insane amount of numbers, but this is why IPC isn't as flashy or sexy as clock speed. IPC is like miles per gallon for your CPU, right? That literally determines how much bang for your buck you're honestly going to get. IPC is something we talk about loosely, and it's something we address over a few live streams, right? And, uh, and maybe once or two loosely in a couple videos. Just know here recently with Ryzen, AMD has been playing catch up. They really kept, they caught up and slightly exceeded Intel in terms of IPC with Ryzen 5000. Then Intel came with 11th generation, and now they're playing this TikTok game back and forth of who's going to win the IPC crown. When AMD toted a 90% IPC uplift versus th Ryzen 3000, even I was like, oh, AMD is doing it. And it might have even been that video where I had made the declaration that AMD no longer wants to be viewed as the value-centric budget option, budget-oriented option, no longer here in the community, right? Now... That doesn't necessarily mean that AMD is wrong in that, in, with you know with their price hike. They just tell, they're saying that premium. You're gonna pay for that IP IPC performance uplift. This is what makes Ryzen 5000 significantly faster. This is how AMD was able to jump, have such a performance jump from Ryzen 3000 to Ryzen 5000. It is like like 15 to 20 percent. They were not BSing with that number, at least from the benchmarks I've studied and researched over the since. Ryzen 5000 has launched last year. It it is about a 15 to 15 to 20 percent IPC performance uplift. Now let me give you uh, a little help to how to measure your IPC, how to measure IPC, or even determine if a CPU has strong IPC. You could take two CPUs, let's say a Ryzen 5 1600X and an 8700K. Both of them have six cores and 12 threads, right? Both of them can run at 4 gigahertz. You may have to manually input that. Both can run at 4 gigahertz. You run both of those CPUs at the same clock speed, at the same frequency. What's going to be the determining factor then of which one is faster will be IPC. Okay? That is how you can determine if a CPU... Um, what what's his IPC and how we're even... How us testers, are, when we benchmark, how we're even able to make that comparison. Again, even as you could take a 3800X and a 9900K. They both have eight cores and 16 threads. The 9900K has a turbo of up to five gigahertz on a single core or 4.9 or 4.8 gigahertz on a single core. The 3800X, I believe, has a turbo up to 4.2 or 4. Point, I believe it's 4.2 or 4.3 on a single core, but that CPU should have no issues at running like 4.2, 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz all clock frequency and the same with the 9900K. So to determine the IPC, you're going to run both of those CPUs at the same clock speed. They both have the same amount of cores, fam. 
what is the one constant that we're not changing that you don't even have any control to change that is your IPC that is why clock speed is the door and IPC or instructions per cycle is the key because the performance is behind the door the clock speed won't get you to the performance alone hell the IPC won't get you to the performance alone okay you saw this in, in the pile driver and bulldozer CPUs. Yeah, oh, AMD, oh, 5 gigahertz. They, they didn't have strong IPC. So that 5 gigahertz on that 9590, if you want to, if you want the receipts with what I'm talking about, watch that FX 9590 video we did in year one. Okay. I overclocked that CPU to 5 gigahertz. Okay. Did it meet, did it yield a significant, I mean, it, at that point, it's running faster than the 1600X I was running. Did that mean it was, or faster in terms of clock speed does that mean it was faster right in terms of performance no absolutely positively not and that's because the 1600x had a ipc uplift over pile driver i keep wanting to say pile dozer i'm just gonna say pile dozer to combine the two architectures but it had a 15 to 20 percent performance uplift versus those two architectures so this is why although pile driver and bulldozer had higher you know overclocks and higher boosts they weren't faster CPUs, okay? Ryzen 5 definitely still was like winning at that point. And again, this is why clock speed is the door and IPC is the key, okay? Now, your IPC can be measured. I know I said this before, but I want to repeat that. So we had a few more people come into this segment. And this is, I see this is off, this is, this confuses a lot of, buyers and it's something you shouldn't i don't want you to even put a whole lot of stock into when you're making your buying decision just know don't get caught up in the allure of clock speeds it's not all just about the cpu's clock speed okay ipc very much is an important role but there's so much math involved behind it again when we say a cpu that's running at two gigahertz or 2000 megahertz a cpu running at 2000 gigahertz can carry out 2000 and million six of simplicity two billion cycles per second that is ins insanely fast if you want to know why cpus generate heat that's why all that friction, all that movement, and all that, you know, uh, introduction of heat and energy needs to go somewhere. This is why CPUs generate heat. This is why your CPU gets, you know, hotter than your, than your graphics card. Your graphics card can slow itself down, run at, you know, 90 degrees C and be perfectly fine. But your CPU, that bad boy will shut down because it'll just progress. It could scale. It could just continue to get hot and hot and hot if the heat isn't properly being dispersed off of the IHS. The IHS is the integrated heat spreader. That's the top that you see here that says core on our visual aid behind the letters instructions per cycle right, right here. Which IPC originally stood for Institute for, man, something other, I forgot. But it was originally named after the institute that coined the, coin, that coined the term IPC, okay, or instructions per cycle. But this is what is commonly known now and this is why it's so important. That's because it really, boils down to how you know how how fast can your cpu fetch and execute those instructions so you this is why you want your cpu to have strong ipc not necessarily fa but just strong ipc being able to handle those executions rather quickly your clock speed is going to help that cpu run quickly though right so you can think of jogging in the marathon hey i got good ipc Right, I'm running at two gigahertz, but then I look to my right or to my left, and I see here come that you know here come the the 11700K with slightly stronger IPC there, so they're able to run slightly quicker, more efficient than I am. So since they're able to run more efficiently than me, their clock speed is going to help them move faster than I am. That is the biggest difference. To if hopefully that didn't confuse anybody, but if if I do, let me know. Let me know. But IPC, I had to include this into our five tips to know before you're buying or building a gaming pc especially if you are building a gaming pc so you know what kind of performance level or performance metric to expect right this whole segment if you will if we switch back to our title card and that's basing your cpu off of your needs knowing if you need a six core an eight core do you need a do you even need a four core or eight thread cpu we had a new member here on the chat kev um, that was using the i3-10100, right? So that's a four-core eight-thread CPU. 
Kev maybe at the time that served his needs well or their needs well, but now Kev wants a little bit more from their system. Now they're in a they're ready to upgrade. So at the time his needs or their needs were based off of I only need a four core eight thread CPU. I don't even need a dedicated video card, and I'm perfectly okay with the lower end of the uh, the family stack, and that's the i3. Although 10th generation i3 very much a strong um, CPU, a strong IPC. Hyperthreading helps if you want to do other things, right? Not so much so because it only has eight threads. So compared, I mean, in that case, more is better. Um, so maybe in Kev's case, you might want to consider up into a higher core CPU and a GPU, although I've recommended that he upgrade the GPU first. But uh, and then there's the building and then there's the buying a pre-built segment because that's perfect that we jump into that segment because uh, I believe it was Keisha who had asked a question about buying a pre-built PC. Now, and Keisha said, is buying a pre-built PC worth it here in 2021? And I'm paraphrasing, as they said, is it, is it still, you know, is there any situation or any scenario where buying a pre-built gaming PC is a smart choice? And I had mentioned, yes, it is, especially right here, right now in the 2021 although it started in 2020 the 2020 2021 tech demic right td20 <laughs> right the td20 and td20 we we had experienced these shortages now we went over extensively in our pre-built custom or weight live stream topic and before we jump into this conversation let me switch back here and first of all, welcome the new viewers who just joined in. If you're just now joining us, I want to welcome you to the Inside the Lab weekly live experience, our weekly live show. We're talking about five things you should consider or five things you should know before you buy or build a gaming PC. And we were just uh, jumping in here to tip number four. If you're staying along with us and if you can't stay, I first welcome you to give this stream a like if you haven't yet on your way in or out. And if you're not yet subscribed, hopefully I have been either educational enough or informative enough to have earned your subscription. And if you're just now joining us, don't worry because towards the end, I always kind of quickly run through each of our tips if they're in a format like this and this is very much part of our what is it 25 see the 20 or 25 part um live stream series where i wanted to give at least 25 helpful tips that could benefit you as a builder or as a buyer looking to get into pc gaming here in 2021 now with that out the way let me switch back here because if you're buying a pre-built you're going to want to know how much you're going to want to save and what to look for most importantly what to look for because while you're going to hear me say you want to buy from a reputable brand fam reputable doesn't necessarily mean honest okay very important i uh i make mention of that tricy said that was a very good comparison i'm i'm gonna use that yeah um it's funny because when i as i was developing the show i said that'll probably make for a great highlight moment so um yeah, definitely, and and you could be, keep a lookout for that highlight too, as uh, it's just something that could help maybe provide a little bit more context in a video format as to what IPC is, and how it works. I mean, I had pretty much just said that clock speed is the door and IPC is the key, and to unlock that performance, you're going to need both of those things to execute simultaneously. You don't just walk up to a door if it's locked. And there's something hitting behind it and just be able to go through you can't walk up to the door and just put the key in and the door is going to magically open unless it's some super futuristic cyberpunk door or something fancy but for the sakes of simplicity and reality to open any modern door requires you to unlock and open ipc very much works in tandem with clock speed clock speed is the door ipc is the key they both need to work in tandem to unlock the performance that is the sweet frames per second that we all love getting in our games right but what uh we're buying a gaming pc we're buying a pre-built gaming pc one thing i've always recommend and i'm going to continue to recommend i've recommended this before i even got heavy into creating content and that's always go with the fastest possible cpu for your money right now i was plugging in that previous live stream because if there's if you're here on the replay or if you're here now and you're like, man, I definitely would want a little bit more context into what all goes into buying a gaming PC. 
that live stream where we did where we broke down a fourteen hundred dollar setup could really benefit you in a great way that conversation was so value oriented and value centric it's a lengthy live stream but i would say there's probably a good couple hours of helpful content in there that i probably should be pulling some highlights from that but if you you know want more context into what all goes into buying a pre-build you're definitely going to want to check that conversation out or check that live stream out because we dot we dove so much deeper into what it all entails in going with the fastest cpu fastest cpu goes right back to what we were talking about with what ipc and clock speed so you want to make sure you're getting the fastest cpu that means the cpu with the most clock speed and the fastest possible frequency possible for your money that doesn't mean you get the fastest cpu that's out that's not what i mean by that that means you get the fastest cpu that is good for your money now I say go with a reputable brand because you want to make sure that you're getting some form of parts and labor warranty and that your heart because your hardware comes with the warranty. Right. But servicing does not, fam. That's very important. People say, oh, I'll buy a pre-build and three months late. I'm going to use my English accent because I'm feeling a little prissy about this. But like, uh, It's been a while, y'all, since I used the English accent on a live stream. But you're like, oh, I've built, I've, I bought my... I bought my pre-built gaming PC and two months later, I just stopped working. I'm not quite sure what happened to it. Well, quite naturally, yes, your parts are under some sort of some sort of warranty, right? Like you can replace the GPU. Well, who are you going to pay to replace the GPU? That is where the extra cost is going to come into play. So this is why I say I recommend that you buy from a reputable brand and one that offers not only a warranty on its parts it's quite naturally you're going to get at least up to a year a manufacturer's warranty but servicing that part or your system may cost you extra money so this is just something to take into consideration okay <laughs> english english rant over oh bad habit says i will never be a fan of buying pre-built totally understandable totally understandable i have that sentiment with consoles but i definitely don't want to alienate our console friends this is way and this is going to be on a shirt too this is why i say consoles have care consoles have a purpose but pcs have character we can even transform that over on the pre-built side and say pre-built gaming pcs have character custom you know p-bills just have something so much better going for it i don't know but you do have to keep in mind you have different types of pre-bills that it's important that i notate in this segment because in that pre-bill customer weight we talked about buying a pre-bill system that's already built together or say working with like a system integrator like uh Trision or cliff or even myself where I, I build systems locally uh business plug sorry that is my that's my business warehouse if you want to build a gaming pc if you want to work with lab hit me up i do ship um it, i just want to get, warn you that it is costly and i normally will work with the person on assurance and everything but uh depending on where you are and how far this the system has to go but i've shipped a few systems here yet and i have not yet had any issue because i take a lot of pride into making sure you're going to get the system you'll receive the same system I, the, you'll receive the system the same way I shipped it out. Boom. There you go, man. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't get it out, but, um, you know, you have your pre-built, like if I just jump on Amazon, which let's do that, but you have your pre-built, which is a system that's already done. Sure. But then you have your pre-built that you configure with a system integrator, right? So you sat down, you talk to Trision, you say, Hey, Trision, this is what I want. This is what my needs are. This is how much money I have. Can you configure me a system? I like this case. You're picking out every component. That's the beauty to getting a what we call a custom pre-built PC. Now I can understand never want to buy one already built, but never say never because there are people out there with certain limitations and certain things that prohibit them from being able to build um, a gaming PC, but you know, just, just never say never. That's all I say is never say never. Going this route, you know, could maybe save you a little bit of money. But before I get into that tangent anymore, I want to say that in that pre-built custom or weight live stream, we use $1,000 as an example. Now, $1,000 may not be enough to get you started. Although this CyberPower PC here, right, one terabyte of uh, 
storage, which I would like to imagine is probably a, a hard drive and not an SSD. Oh, I got to eat my words. It's actually a gig and a half or a terabyte and a half. So 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD and a one terabyte hard drive. So to answer Keisha's question, because if we jump to, if I had jumped to eBay, if I had jumped to eBay, let's see what a 1650 Super, which I can already tell you now, it's about four times X what they should be going for. What, this here isn't bad, but this kind of concerns me. I would look heavily into that because you drop down here, you got this one's going for almost $200 more. Then you got this one here. This is what about, this is about the norm. This is why I said this, this concerns me because this is what they're going for. This is half the cost of that pre-built gaming PC with the same graphics card. Is a game, would a pre-build be worth it in this point? That's a question you can ask yourself, fam. I'm only here to give my recommendations as honest, <laughs> as upfront as possible that I can. But in this case, this could possibly now, yes, you don't get to pick the type of 1650 Super. I game recognized game. I see that. Yeah, you don't get to, you know, pick your 1650 Super. But it is a 1650 Super. A Ryzen 5 3600 and a 1650 Super, that's not a bad combination at all. For $960. This is right along the lines of taking that $1,400 complete setup cost. Is what we talked about building a complete setup for $1,400. Monitor getting a decent either 1440p 75 Hertz or 144 Hertz monitor or a 1080p 120 or 144 Hertz monitor keyboard mouse and audio solution and a network solution and taking a smooth stack or a thousand dollars and getting a gaming PC You could do it. Why not now? The downside as much as I hate to admit it. This is where us system integrators. Here's the this is where we're running into the issue Guys like Triceon, myself, and Cliff, and anybody else, they're part of my ignorance. Anybody else here on a live show that builds systems or build PCs as a, for a business, and you know, that's your, that's your livelihood. This is the problem we're running into. I can't part this system out with this graphics card for the same price you would pay for right here. Can't do it. This is about a $229, $249 CPU. A B450 motherboard, maybe another $150. No, 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, maybe about 60, 70 bucks. One terabyte hard drive, what's that, like 50, 60 bucks? 60 bucks. Consider everything else, no. And that's simply because I wouldn't be able to get that this graphics card at a cost that, say, CyberPower was able to get it because they likely bought a whole bunch of uh, 1650 Supers as opposed to just one for one person, right? So this is when it's a little difficult for us system integrators to compete with pre-builds because we can't get those graphics cards that is already coming with the system at this lower price point. I mean, it would cost you if you wanted to say, well, no, I want to I don't like this case. I'm going to use this example because under a thousand dollars and I'm going to get to why it is that is in a second. But under a thousand dollars, you're not getting a system as robust as this one here. Right. We're going to jump to this one here in a second, but for under a thousand dollars, you're not getting anything, at least in this, as you can see, my, my search term was vanilla AF, bro. Look, a thousand dollar gaming PC, not much to that at all, right? So at that price point, you're not really getting much. This looks like this, this here doesn't even have a dedicated video card. I stand corrected. It does. A GTX 1650. Okay. So not bad. If you wanted to, if you wanted to play games like Minecraft. And like Roblox, not bad for 729. You're not even going to get a 1650 for half that price. Let me see. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just. Is it as, as expected? Yep. Not even going to put too much uh, <laughs> thought into it because first one I see now with two days left on the bid, $300. 549. That's a 1650 super. For a non super variant, it's a little looking like it's a little over $300. As you can see here, it's 1650. Um, $358. So this is why at $729, not a bad, not a bad price point. No, you don't get to pick all your other parts out. But we went into that segment and that live stream about the pros and cons to building a gaming PC or buying a pre-built PC, not one that's a custom pre-built, one that you went over the parts and you work with a system integrator to build. But if you just went on Amazon right now because you're like gung-ho 
and you want to get into PC gaming like yesterday and you like, man, I got, you know, $1,400 disposable income. I already brought my gaming monitor. I got my keyboard, my mouse. Only thing I'm missing lab is my computer. I can't get a decent graphics card I want. Should I buy a pre-built? Fam, it all depends on the type of games you want to play. Do know, though, that your pre-built, will, you will be able to enhance and improve the experience. You will be able to upgrade it in some form, shape, level, capacity from storage to maybe not graphics because that situation might not improve anytime soon but from ram let's say you brought this gaming pc for you know let's say at and this is renewed so i'm sorry for not catching that but i do want to point that out this does say it's renewed i'm not sure if this is one of them situations where they got the pc and don't think this is what you're going to get because i seriously doubt that this is what you're going to get um but not sure if this is renewed because somebody took it back or you know there's one component really don't know but and that's a horrible example so i'm not going to use that example i'm not going to use that because that has a 730 i'm going to go back up here to the 959 dollar example although this system really wouldn't be much you would even need to upgrade that would really give you a significant performance boost or boosting your performance maybe your cpu right maybe you would want to upgrade to a faster cpu so you update your bios and maybe you want to use a 5000 zen 3 cpu a ryzen maybe a 5600x you want to jump up to the next generation for that 19 percent performance uplift maybe you want to upgrade the case maybe you don't like the case maybe you don't like the power supply unit right it has 16 gigabytes of ddr4 so that's a really good starting point but maybe adding another 16 gigabytes for a 32 gigabyte S, uh, DDR4 solution. I mean, it, the choices are plenty. You could upgrade, right? Your your pre-built. You don't have to be content on the way it looks when you first get it, right? You can level it up slowly but surely. Tristian says, "LMAO, you literally sound like my friend that bought a pre-built. He has a British accent while speaking Dutch somehow." That's interesting, and I would ask you, Tricion, but I feel like uh, it would be a it, it'll be a little bit ignorant. But I'm wondering, does it sound like I have an accent? Like, does it sound like Americans have an accent, Tricion? Because the running gag with you know us stateside folks is that everybody else has the accents. So like English speaking people, people over in the UK, and you know up that way, the Netherlands and Ireland, Ireland and everything, and Scotland and all them other places. To us, you guys and gals sound different. You guys and gals have an accent that's very distinguished. It's very distinguishable. Um, but then a lot of times I talk to some of like my UK friends when I was developing games. I befriended a lot of friends over in UK. And uh, they would say, no, Terrence, you guys have an accent. You guys sound different. We sound fine. You guys sound different. But um, I just find, that, just find that interesting because you said they have a uh, British accent, but they speak Dutch, which I'm not even sure what one with a Dutch dialect would sound like, <laughs> and I wouldn't even know how to replicate it because even sometimes when I'm doing my own, when I'm doing my own English accent impersonation, I sometimes can switch it because you have different parts of London where they use different dialects. Some are a little bit slower, some are a little bit more modern. It really depends on where, but you know, it's all interesting stuff. I'm well cultured. I love speaking to people all over the globe. It's one reason why I love working on the internet. I'm not confined to my little county or state or locality of dealing with people. When you work on the internet, you know, you have a wide range of people you can engage with all over the world. The internet's one of my favorite places to work. Tristan says, why are some 1650s so comparably cheap? Well, if we're looking at it from this perspective of a pre-built, the American companies and really all of them, Sony, Microsoft, this is how they're able to sell the consoles. The PS5 and Xbox Series S and X is cheap as they were. I say cheap because I'm not even going to go there and, and search. They're, they're, they're still being scalped to some 40, 50 percent. But they're cheap because these companies, CyberPower and uh, just to name a few, CyberPower or just to name one likely bought these at a time where they bought them in stock they bought so many that nvidia gave them a discount and they just literally sat on them and only sold them as they built systems 
Um, the same re the same way Microsoft and Sony is able to sell their consoles, although they tote PC level like performance, it's at a very console s like price point, and that is why and because Sony and Microsoft got those components at a discount because they bought thousands and thousands of them at a time. So AMD gave it to them at a discount versus when they're not going to do that for Micro Center. They're not going to give Micro Center a discount for buying multiple different SKUs, say like buying multiple GeForce 1650 Supers, they're not going to do that because they know Microsoft can has everything. It's in their interest to gain money off of that sale when they're, it's in Cyber, Cyber Power's interest to sell as many possible GeForce 1650 Supers as possible <laughs> because they want to recoup their costs. And this is why, again, you know, pre built to have very tight or very slim profit margins. But that's why they're cheap. They're only cheap because they're coming in pre-builds. And even still, this is arguably not very cheap for a pre-build. It's just very respectable price for a system with a dedicated graphics card. And the super variety, as you see, I glanced over the GT730. Because at that point, I really feel like some of these systems were just built with whatever graphics card was on board and available just to get it out. So... This is why I wouldn't recommend, I mean, $754, you could very much just benefit from getting a 34, a Ryzen 3 or Ryzen 5 3400G with integrated Vega, Vega 11 graphics. Trusty says, nah, I see British people as having an accent too. But it's because I learned American English before learning British English. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, American English is a hot mess, ain't it, bro? <laughs> I'll say it for you. But and to jump back to the sort the the uh, the root of the conversation here, a thousand dollars may or may not be may may not necessarily be enough for a pre-built right now at this stage that we are in 2021. What you want to do, what you're going to want to do, is at least take about another 20 percent, okay, and prepare for a high end if you a high end pre-built gaming PC. First example right here now this concerns me because this system only has eight gigabytes of ram so you will likely you're going to want to you know upgrade add at least another eight gigabytes here to this system i mean it has a gtx 1660 super right and this is how they're able to kind of shave off some of the cost from producing this pre-built eight gigabytes of ddr4 not a lot of enthusiasts or builders would buy a 1660 Super and 8 gigabytes of DDR4. Priorities, fam. Priorities. This is going to be a bottleneck. More so, this is going to be a performance-enhancing component. Right? Not a bad choice in CPU uh, department. But again, 8 gigabytes of DDR4, that's not going to be enough for modern gaming. Tristan says Dutch is horrible for literally everyone. You say Tristan says even us Dutch don't like it. Funny stuff, man. I'll hear you. I'll hear your accent one day, Tristan, on the when we get the Discord voice channel up. <laughs> but um, and anybody else that's interested in joining our Discord, if you're not gonna stay for the house cleaning segment and you weren't here for the housekeeping segment, really fast, if you want to join our Discord, you're gonna want to sign up for our email list because invites. Re-invites are going to go back out since the last invite link has already expired. Re-invite links are going to go out again Sunday morning. Or I uh, keep forget this isn't, and I said that earlier on the live stream. My apologies. They will go out sometime tonight. I will send the email, the invitation link either tonight or Monday morning to give people, you know, time to consider signing up. Um, but yeah, voice channels are coming to the Discord too. As soon as we hit like 25, 30 members, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get that jumping, man. But yeah. So with this price point, you're going to want to take into consideration you may want to add another 8 gigabyte stick of DDR4. Uh, you this is going to this is going to affect your performance in your games, especially if you're running a 10th generation i5 and a 1660 super. This is going to be a hindrance and the perfect marriage between these two components, okay? So this is why even 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 20 percent you might want to say 20 plus percent more for a decent pre-built here in 2021 that's one with at least a fast cpu so in this case we're looking at a temp generation i5 for over a thousand dollars okay 
slightly faster than the 3600 so we're already doing good with our money but if we only had a thousand dollars to spend and you're like but i gotta get the fastest cpu lab i said i should get the fastest cpu i've done my homework i know you know the temp generation is slightly faster than the 3600 right and i was just looking because this this pre-built man i was went up a few like what 40 50 dollars more just because of that 16 gigabytes of, of ddr4 so same graphics card same cpu eight more gigabytes of ram but you again look at the fastest cpu that's what's important here not determined here's an example y'all 3.6 gigahertz 2.9 gigahertz does that mean that the 3600 is faster than the 10 400 Professor Lab is talking. No, because what's going to matter here is the IPC performance uplift Intel introduced with the temp generation um, lineup of CPUs. Not necessarily its clock speed. This is the CPU's base clock frequency anyway. This is this CPU's base clock frequency. This CPU likely will boost up to 4.1, 4.2 on its own. This may be give or take a little higher. Okay. Doesn't have integrated graphics. Okay and it's not overclockable so it's going to boost up to as high as it can possibly go doesn't necessarily mean just off clock speed alone that it's faster than the 3600 it's going to produce more frames what's still going to be important is what's underneath the hood in terms of ipc but it, again looking at even this if you get this system for the cpu and say yes i got the 1660 super c the GPU, the six gigabytes of VRAM, I already did my homework on it. I know it's going to run X game because remember, that was tip number one was do your research on your games, your resolution, and your refresh rate. So if you say, I want to play Valorant and I want to play it at 1080p, 144 FPS at like medium or low settings. I know this graphics card can do it. I've seen it. This is the graphics card I want. The CPU is fast, but I may want to upgrade to the C I want. I may want to upgrade the CPU. You have that option even on this platform, okay? If you don't get the parts or the system configuration you were searching for, don't worry, fam, okay? You can make upgrades in the future to enhance your experience or improve the aesthetic of your pre-build. It goes beyond just wanting to upgrade to the latest, fastest CPU. Maybe you like that Leon Lee, Leon. Maybe you like that Leon Lee dynamic spec 11 case. Right? Or maybe that Corsair H500M. Right? That's the only two cases that for some reason can come to mind. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but you have the option of upgrading your case. Okay? In some cases, I say, in the, this could be a slow burn. And by slow burn, I mean, you may need to upgrade. Don't think you buy your, I'm saying, lab saying, buy your pre-build and you're going to have to upgrade it. You know exactly after you get it a month later no this can very much be a slow burn perhaps starting with your ram okay if you're liking this one example where it, this one here where it only had eight gigabytes of ddr4 which isn't a lot for a system that costs almost twelve hundred dollars that's one of you know one of the downsides to a pre-build is its cost and how in this instance cyber power for example has to have a profit margin from this okay and it's probably really tight so they skimmed here just so they can have a more prettier looking profit margin but in this case upgrading your pre-build can be a slow burn okay if it's ram i'd start there what i'd recommend start with your ram in this pre-build case your ram yes upgrade your ram to another eight gigabyte thick if you can't find a similar just upgrade all together faster maybe yeah we talked about ram being a plausible upgrade either higher capacity storage or higher capacity or faster speed okay PSU, you can upgrade your PSU. Now this one comes with a dedicated graphics card, so it likely already has a power supply unit that has the necessary power connectors, which I believe should be a six pin power connector or a four pin power connector for this 1660 Super. So upgrading your power supply unit may not necessarily be a, on your, pro, uh, you know, maybe it may not be an item on the priority list of upgrades. And then there's storage, which in this case, storage was fine because it has a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Whoops, not that. And I, okay, well, so it wasn't this one that had the one terabyte storage. So with this one, with this having a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which I could have swore we were looking at one that also had a one terabyte hard drive on it. 
Let's see what happens if we switch to this one. Okay. It shot up $1,700, fam. Yikes. <laughs> and we took a step down. But anyway. This is why I said RAM PSU storage. Because in this case, it only has a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. If you're gaming right now, even if you don't have a system, if you're playing games right now, then you know that that's nowhere near enough uh, to store maybe three or four games. And then that's going to be it. So this is why you're going to want to upgrade your RAM and your storage. Okay? When you are able to. It doesn't have to be, you know, immediately when you get your system. Again, it could be a slow burn. It can really be a slow burn. And then, because this is a perfect segue. Okay. That was our segment on buying a pre built PC. Okay. Still very much want to get the fastest CPU for your money. Always go with the fastest CPU for your money. Buy from a reputable brand, one that has a warranty on both parts and labor. $1,000 may not be enough. You may find yourself having to add to the system to compensate for it. Okay. But. 20% plus more maybe but don't worry because you'll be able to make upgrades to your pre-built down the road so don't sweat it I know we have some friends that are against pre-builds and that's perfectly fine I'm not a big fan of consoles and it's one of the reasons why I really want to push the content to get as many uh, gamers over from consoles over to PCs as, as possible as much as possible but I wouldn't dare try to say oh well you're on a pre-build why don't you come build a gaming PC a desktop PC so long as you're still very much enjoying the video games on the highest possible pen the pinnacle of PC game the pinnacle of gaming that is PC gaming so long as you're still gaming on a PC that's what it's all about but that's my tips for buying a pre-build, or my sub-tips with tip number four. With That's if you're buying a pre-build gaming PC, those things to look out for. And if you're just now joining us, welcome. But if not, let's jump over to tip number five, which I didn't have to go looking for because it is there. And that's graphics card or no graphics card. This is a little bit of sarcasm, but yes, quite naturally, I save the best for last. And, you know, that's... Graphics card or no graphics card, do you even need one? Because, yes, they are expensive. I compared it to, essentially, Bruce Wayne prices early on the live show. Um, graphics cards are just, I mean, they're crazy high. I just showed you some examples. Maybe not Bruce Wayne high, but they are certainly higher than what most users would expect to have to pay or even be able to pay for those graphics cards. So, graphics card or no graphics cards, do you even need one? This could also depend on your games. We had a member here in the community, Keisha, not Keisha, I'm sorry, Kev. Um, pardon me, I don't remember their full name, but we had a um, we had a user here on the chat that had an i3. They didn't have a graphics card, and they were describing their shortcomings in the games they were playing. So they would be under that category, this category right here, if you're buying or building a gaming PC, and that's, do you even need a graphics card? It very much goes to, top, to tip number one, and that was research your games, your resolution, and your refresh rate. Remember, all of these tips aren't meant, necessar meant necessarily to deploy as individual tips and strategies, but they are meant to work hand-in-hand -hand with one another. For example, graphics card or no graphics card when you're trying to decide your build. Do I even need one? That, you know, that answer, the answer to that question should be, you know, did, be predetermined off of your answers to your question or from your conclusion from doing your research in your games, your resolution, and your refresh rate. Ways we talked about doing that is look at your PC gaming's minimum and required specs. Does the game require a dedicated video card? What type of video card does it require to play the kind of game you want to play? Right? If it was, if I, mis if I mis remember distinctively, yes, it was Control. I said you can, at minimum, which is probably 1080p, 30fps, GTX 780 has two gigabytes of VRAM or three gigabytes of VRAM. I can't remember off the top of my head, but a GTX 780, right? Very much would have to find one of those, obviously, on the used market. So when considering a used graphics card, consider an older, an older generation GPU as a stopgap until the market returns to normal. That's if you made the determination that you absolutely positively do need a graphics card. And you say, you know, I, I can't get around it, or you know, you're you're um, you're like Kev who had who was gaming on integrated graphics. It was an i3 10100. Um, you know, you're going to adding a dedicated video card is going to like two three extra performance. What I recommended Kev do is game at 720p. 
just to compensate for not having a video card. So even if you consider an older generation GPU as a stopgap, like the GTX 780 or a GTX 970 or an RX 470 or an RX 570, right? What I had recommended was you look at your minimum and recommended specs for the game you want to play and try to be within the generations that they recommend. So if Control was a 780 and I believe the um, recommended was a 1660, ironically, you want to be somewhere in between there if Control is a game you would want to play, right? And you've already crossed your T's and dotted your I's to make sure you have a fast enough CPU, at least a fourth generation or higher. So a CPU between a fourth generation and seventh generation Intel or first generation, more surprisingly, a 1600X, so the better bend version of the game. So consider an older, gener an older generation GPU like the GTX 780, okay? Remember how we talked about you may need to compromise with some of these? Yeah, you may need to compromise, but there's nothing wrong with that. For example, let me switch back here to eBay, which I guess you guys got to come along with me, huh? <laughs> let me switch back here to eBay <clears throat> because on the used market, if you figure a GTX 970, which should be fast enough to keep up with most modern, most modern, uh, CPUs, especially on that list of, of CPUs, if you're trying to hit your mark for your minimum or, or you know, your minimum or recommended specifications, you're at a, a healthy $200, $220, right? And this is just a stopgap. Now, this is so much better than running your integrated graphics, running like 630 or 730 or even 620. UHD graphics, integrated graphics. But if you wanted something a little newer, and we talked about this in that conversation, so we're not going to dive too, too much into it. But GTX 1070s, okay, still can be had for decent ish prices, okay? $400 buying now. This is like an OEM GTX 1070. But $400, is that a lot? I mean, for right now, it is sure. Right, but again, how uh, GTX 1070 still has good couple years of life expectancy, and by then you could best believe GPU prices will improve. Now, don't take it you know lightly, but do expect it to improve by then. We're talking two years from now, okay? Or you can step it down a little bit and say, you know what? No, I don't. I don't want to do that much. Well, consider RX 570. There are some risks involved with buying a used graphics cards. I don't want to make it seem like it's all just straightforward willy-nilly because it's simply not. You, there's definitely signs, warning signs you're going to look for. Try to ask questions from the seller. Pictures showing that the graphics card is in operating use with a time, with a date, with a time stamp in, in, in the today's date or a close date also helps go a long way, right, with your giving you confidence in your buying decision. But... um. There are some risks involved with buying used. Tiger Nation says made it a little late, but better late than never. Yeah, I mean, late is better than sorry. It's better than sorry I didn't make it, right? But uh, welcome, 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 because we were in tip number five, and that's do you, you know, buying a graphics card, buy, you know, when should you buy one? Do you need one? Some of these options are still very much high, but not as high as, say, if you wanted to scour the market for a 1660 super for example and they're still very much selling for over 500 dollars, which is ice so that's a hard buy um for a graphics card that was probably worth 400 which did not too bad but the 1660 ti 1660 super were graphics cards that were meant to compete in the 400 dollars class of graphics cards, especially with the 5700 XT, although the 5700 XT had eight gigabytes of VRAM and they only had six, they were still the faster choice. Now, if this is still all too much for you and you say, but this is still gonna stop me, Lab, from getting into PC gaming. I can't get into PC gaming with the price of these graphics cards. If you're telling me I need a, a GPU that's gonna be fast enough to run the games, what other options do I have? Now, integrated graphics as an alternative option is something we talked about a lot too, in um, in that same in a previous conversation about graphics cards. Now that I think about it, and let me switch back here. 
because you could go with the infamous 2400 with its four cores and eight threads tiny tdp right but what makes the v the vega 11 uh a solid option right now is that it's onboard graphics vega 11 graphics which means it has 11 compute units um which more compute units ne doesn't necessarily mean more fps but more compute units will help with improving fps because the higher the compute units the higher it just enables the graphics to do more to render more so it helps with like open world environments the more the more cus the better vega 8 has 8 cus and vega 11 has 11 cus but the what makes these graphics what makes these cpus special is again onboard graphics they are way more robust than intel's uhd graphics and what makes them worth and what makes them worthy are their prices because you can get a ryzen you can get a ryzen 3400 which is the newer generation version of the vega 11's integrated graphics you can get a, a ryzen 3400g for 300 dollars and you will just need your motherboard <laughs> you can get a b450 motherboard like an 80 dollars b450 motherboard like the gigabyte ds3h or the asrock pro 4 for like 80 bucks your ryzen 3400g which is four cores eight threads and you can get those both you get the motherboard cpu for 380 dollars throw in maybe 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz cl16 ram and you have a near complete base system for under five hundred dollars or you're pushing it you're very you're very close to it you're there you're about four hundred and fifty dollars there factor in you still have to buy your case power supply unit and storage but you're like under seven hundred dollars for vega 11 graphics as much hate that they receive you can very much game at 1080p. You may have to lower the settings, maybe turn off all the settings, depending on the game. But they very much are 1080p integrated graphics. Intel's integrated graphics CPUs, not so much. The UHD 637, like maybe on 11th gen, they've gotten better. But anything prior to that, a 2400G or even a 2200G is going to serve you better than gaming on intel's integrated graphics if you already have an integrated graphics or you're if you're already gaming on integrated graphics like kev was in the example i used earlier and that's pers that's perfectly fine but it's one of the reasons why i recommend and i said hey <laughs> consider adding a dedicated video card okay no matter the slice it's going to 2x your performance and in this case you can consider a ryzen 5 2400g even for slightly less money for $200. So you figure 2400G, four core eight thread CPU has onboard graphics. So you don't need, you know, a video card. You just got to make sure your motherboard has an HDMI out. And you have everything you need. Now, the 2400 combo might be better value for your money when you want to add a dedicated video card because then you also could upgrade the CPU at the same time, say a 2600 or a 3600 with the motherboard BIOS update. So this is why this route may be better in the long run, whereas Intel's might be better in the long run because you, it, short, short run not so much because you're not going to get much out of UHD graphics historically. But with Ryzen, the game is going to be better for you early on, but in the long run, when you're ready to upgrade your GPU or upgrade to add a dedicated video card, you can also upgrade your CPUs where Intel, if you're gaming on, say, like a 10900K or 11700K on, um, you know, integrated graphics, then your performance, your performance off the bat is not going to be that great. But when you go to add your dedicated video card down the road, you're already in a better position than having to, say, upgrade the CPU and a graphics card. So really it's going to boil down to what again the type of games you play your resolution and your refresh rate depending on what upgrade path you want to go first of all if you're looking to game on integrated graphics no matter if that's team blue <laughs> or team red okay doesn't matter either one you're likely on a 1080p 60 hertz monitor okay you're not exceeding that refresh rate what i recommend though is for either even both of them especially on intel graphics and this is what i recommended for Kev earlier, I was hoping he was able to stay on or they were able to stay on because I wanted to kind of rap with them at this point and speak directly to them when I tell you this because, again, Intel's integrated graphics historically have not been that great. 
and really should be used as a last ditch effort like excuse me i really want to get into pc gaming but i can't get into pc gaming i just want to get started i don't even care if i have to game at set a lower resolution so long as i could improve my system later down the road if i'm able to save up like 500 dollars in two months or 600 dollars in two months you'd be surprised at what that can really do in terms of your system but with limited compute units and share bandwidth with the cpu either one either Intel's integrated graphics or even AMD's Vega 8 and Vega 11 graphics, which is just much more robust. Okay. You are going to have, you are going to, you are going to have to expect to game at lower resolutions. 720B indefinitely. This is what I recommended uh, Kev to do as they shared their frustrations, their pain points with their i3-10-100. Um, he described it as lag, but I had to clarify that is dropped FPS you're experiencing. So lower your resolution um, to 720p as a starters and low settings to see if you can gradually just improve the FPS output. But don't expect no more than maybe 15, 20, 22, 30 FPS max even by doing that. Okay, and then even then you can maybe start it there and depending on the game, maybe say, all right, I can go with a console-esque or a console-like um, resolution of 900p and have the settings turned all the way down or low for a playable frame rate so you're getting slightly better graphic detail and sharper image quality but you're compensating the settings by turning them down to then not let your fps take a hit so what it's achieving that balance of playability on integrated graphics is tricky but the key is lowering your resolution dropping your resolution down Starting at 720p and maybe even lower fan. Maybe you got to go at 480p, which I don't know what that would be like. I don't know if I can do it. Hey, jump on the used market. See if you can find yourself like an old R7 260 or 280X or a GT. Maybe a GT30 would, you know, serve you well in that scenario, even just to be able to get to 720p. But, you know, if you're somebody that wants more frames and you're not so much concerned about the visual the visuals in your games then yeah drop your low, drop your resolution down and this is going to help you improve or increase your fps uh dr dramatically right like drastically i mean but um uh, but yeah i mean it's again the 2200g just is a phenomenal a phenomenal system as you can see here 2400g and i may even have to find one just to prove a point fam the 2400g at 199 dollars that's a sleeper cpu the 3400G with four cores, eight threads, and you know improved Vega 11 graphics, is even is an even bigger still. But given how incredibly thin the GPU market is right now, and I'm seeing so many, well, I can't build or I can't get into it, and I can't do this. Why not? You know, if you were able to save up to get a gaming PC, you can likely save up to upgrade your gaming PC because it's the gift that keeps on giving. You built your thousand dollar PC, cool. Now you're gonna have to go buy games. Which, if you need help with knowing there's some of the best places to buy games, we did a whole um, live stream on some of the best places to download games. I believe that live stream was titled "So You Built a Gaming PC." Where do I download the games? If you need to, if you need an answer to that question, and you're on the and you're here on the replay, or you're here on the live right now, head over to the. Uh, most recent playlist down in the description box below and give that conversation a watch because it's the gift that keeps on giving you don't just build your pc and your the, the cost is done with it you have maintenance costs uh it's a machine machines break down like cars so it's a, you have maintenance you have other things you have to take into consideration that's going to cost you money it's the gift that keeps on giving so if you were able to save up you know two three months eight hundred dollars you can save another month or two and save three hundred fifty four hundred dollars and make the necessary upgrades but at least you have your gaming pc and that the cost barrier is not hampering you from enjoying this hobby i would show you the no player in the wild bracelet but it may be a little hard for the camera to pick up on camera i don't know let me see hey inside the lab no player in a while i guess i should switch back and show it on the on the y cam right like no player in the wow right inside the oops inside the left that's what we mean when we say no player no player in the wow that's don't let 
the cost barrier, the price barrier to entry prevents you from getting into this hobby. Don't let the nuances of knowing where, when and where, how and where to, in affordable places to download and buy games. Remember the process of building a gaming, the, the process of building a gaming PC is challenging and difficult. Don't let everything else about it be, okay? No player in the wild. But as you can see here, 2400G, $200. B450 motherboard, so you'd be able to upgrade to like a 3600 and a 3800X, even a Zen 3 5600X, dependent on the, the vendor, dependent on the manufacturer. And this is at a cost of $280. What are we missing here, fam? Case, right? Case, storage, memory, okay? And power supply unit. You need those things, and depending on what it is you're trying to target, you'd be able to get your system in a very console, at a console S price point of about $600. Very possible. Very possible. And that's with a system that you can take and, say, upgrade with, you know, a three dollars $400 budget and add more RAM to your system, upgrade to a... a at this point, if you're on this configuration, first and foremost, your next step should be trying to procure a GPU, whether that's a used one or just a dedicated one in general. Hey, yo, Zeisty is in the house. It's good to see Zeisty. Zeisty made it. Welcome, Zeisty. Zeisty, you uh, came towards the back end of our live stream, but that's all right because we normally don't do live, go live on Sunday. So I'm going to quickly recap as we finish up here with integrated graphics. But Zesty, welcome, 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 Zesty. If you have any questions, Zesty about any of these things do let us know it's been a while zesty i don't know if you were on last were you here with us last week zesty and are you in our discord are you in our discord let me know if you're in our discord zesty but 2400g don't sleep on it okay you got vega 8 vega 11 um vega 11 is what you want to go for especially if you want to game on it but this is where this cpu is especially um, helpful if you have a family member who doesn't want to play games, but they need a computer and they're not quite sure that they're, they're looking for a trustworthy person to help them, you know, fulfill those needs, then this could be right up their alleyway as you don't need a dedicated video card, right, with, uh, with this configuration. And that's along the lines of a Vega 8, okay, Ryzen 3, Vega 8, 2400G. But if that person that says, well, yes, I do school work, but yes, I'm also going to want to maybe jump into some Fortnite or I like Minecraft or I like Robuxes, right? If you like Roblox and, and Minecraft, this would be the CPU for you. This would be that, you know, that configuration you would want to start off with to help you get into PC gaming. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when I when I got back into modern PC gaming, I was over my setup, my configuration within a month. I probably upgraded from like October, to like November to like December. And then <laughs> like it just went from there. Like I just never had enough. Like I just wanted more, more, more. I keep looking up here. I don't know why. The chat, the chat's not happening up here today, fam. It's had to happen down here because YouTube going to be weird with the chat. But Zesty says, hey, what's happening? I'm not in the Discord. Can I join? Zesty, are you on our email list? Zesty? Because our Discord invitation links have gone out to um, email subscribers first. Last week, the invite link, link went out. It was on a Tuesday. And the link has already expired. So between tonight and tomorrow morning, I'm going to send out another invite link to give those of you time who are here right now, or if you heard me blabber on about it at some point during the live show, to sign up. If you haven't yet, sign up. If you are signed up, then you can expect that invite link between today and tomorrow, or tonight. Okay, if you are signed up and you want it even sooner, send me a message over on Instagram, at Inside the Lab YT. This is for Zesty and anybody else who wants to join in Discord. OK, but it's very it's very exclusive and it's very private. And here's the reason why I'm doing it behind the allure of my email list. Um, I very much prefer to keep it that way, especially until it goes behind a paywall. OK, and it will be go our discord invite will go behind a paywall, probably starting halfway mid June. So if you're on the fence, you always got to now to consider if you want to join. But we have so many different fun activities and games that we're going to employ over in the Discord. You can consider our Discord is like a community within a community. 
where we all live, if that makes sense. And one place we all can occupy without, say, me having to be actively and present there. A lot of good conversations going on there, Zesty. So, yeah, definitely. And anybody else, please, 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 if you haven't yet joined, please join our Discord and uh, pop in and say hi. You know, we're no judge, no frills environment and community we do have a guidelines channel so when you do join definitely be sure you give the guidelines section looks is over and i keep forgetting but i have to make an announcement over there because i would like all discord community members to um you know give a reaction to the guidelines so that i know that you at least seen it um but yeah zesty sign up for the email list if you are signing for the email list you the invite link will be going right back out i'm going to try my hardest to get out tonight if this live went on saturday my goal was to send it out sunday morning um so i, I am going to try my hardest to maybe get it out by tonight so sign up for the email list y'all what you waiting for but yeah 2400g uh and b450 motherboard the, the, the chipset the, the motherboard gives you upgrade options plenty you know what I mean? This is a good starting point, especially if it's to play vanilla games, not as graphically demanding games. Fortnite, even 2400G runs very smooth on playing Fortnite. Minecraft, Roblox, all the games that are popular right now. Among Us, if you want to play Among Us on the PC, you don't need a BV system to play those games, especially to start off with. Let your needs gradually grow to warrant making those beefy and pricey upgrades worth it. Right? Like, let your let your needs gradually grow, okay? You don't necessarily have to start out with, oh, I want to play Minecraft. Oh, I need an RTX 3070 and a Ryzen 5 3600X and 32 gigabytes of DDR4. I mean, all those things are nice to have. Trust me. Don't get it wrong. But if the cost of having those things are preventing you from getting into PC gaming, then, my friend, priorities, is you should take a better look at what it is you're trying to get out of a system starting out okay again the 400 series of b450 motherboard you have options you can go with up and down start if you started off with the 2400g so long as you make sure the micro code the bios is updated to support the next generation right in this case which would be three th ryzen 3000 and or ryzen 5000 right you take getting a 3600 and say an RX 570, an RX 580, maybe if you can find one at between the two to four hundred dollar price range, it's going to three times, three x your experience. Even open up the possibilities of a higher resolution, even if you will. Right. So that's just something to consider. I'm a big fan of integrated graphics. While I wouldn't use them personally, I think that their purpose, the purpose they serve, is one that's important and vital to the PC gaming community at large. Not everybody can afford. You got to understand, everybody ain't built the same, fam. Everybody's built differently. Just because you can afford a $500 CPU or $2,000 graphics card, the RTX 3090, just because you can afford those things doesn't mean everybody else can. And that, that doesn't necessarily make mean that what you have is better than the other person's just because you can afford to buy it or you are dumb enough to buy it. In my case, an RTX 3090, right? But there's nothing wrong with starting with a modest build and working, you know, building up from there. And with that said, let's jump over into our final thoughts. Because at face value, PC gaming is expensive and a bit challenging to get into or a, a bit challenging to get into the space at the moment. But any of these five tips we covered today could help you navigate the challenge or challenges of building a PC or getting into PC gaming in 2021. Now, to quickly rehash during our final thoughts, what those five tips were they're a little out of order because remember somebody stole my visual aids earlier if you weren't here for the live stream my visual aids were stolen from me fam but number one was research the type of games you want to play the resolution you want to game at and the refresh rate that you're trying to target all right look at the minimum and the recommended specs from each of the game it is you want to play you do want to take it with a grain of salt, though, because it's in my opinion, these developers, they're not always upfront or as transparent as we, we would hope that hope them to be. But this is a good starting point to give you an idea of what CPU class 
or what GPU class or how much RAM you're going to need to successfully be able to play or run the game, okay, at a refresh rate that's playable for you and a resolution that is right for you because we all enjoy different kinds of games. There's only really three essential resolutions we have. No, no, you can you have 8K, but 16K, but come on, let's keep it 100 here. 1080p, 1440p, maybe 4K, okay? But each of us are very different on the type of games we play. I mostly play single-player games. I don't need a, a high refresh rate monitor. I am very, I am so content with my 3440 by 1440p, 100 hertz monitor. It's a perfect balance between the type of games I want to play, single-player and multiplayer. 100 hertz is like a decent balance for me. But number one was decide on the type of games you want to play and your targeted resolution and refresh rate, okay? Number two, research and choose your platform. Is that AMD or is that Intel? Price to performance is the name of the game, okay? And normally, historically, that wasn't always, but most of the time, that was AMD. Intel's kind of taking a cake a little bit with that. Or we're in a very tricky um, period with CPUs, right? But very much price to performance is the name of the game here. Rather, that's a 5600X and a B550 motherboard for a platform cost of, what did we say it was, $519, or a 10700K and a Z490 motherboard for $488. Now, where's the value at here with <laughs> Bad Habit AMD? <laughs> Bad Habit says AMD all the way. All love. Gotta love it. But where's the value at here? 10700K, two more cores, four extra more threads for it's about $20, $30 less as opposed to a super fast platform and a 5600X and a chipset that allows you to, at this point, you could go as high as a 5950X, which wouldn't necessarily boost you a significant performance boost. This would help you if you want, if your aim is to do more with your system other than just gaming. But, um, you know, again, you have to weigh which one is important, right? There is not just clock speed, but historically, AM, Intel has relied on strong cores and IPC um, and not value or the cores we're in. And AMD has taken and or started off with an approach with, rise, with first generation Ryzen by one to offer the most value for money. They're starting to get away from that, but depending on where you are and how much these parts cost, because the 5600X originally is a $300 CPU, but I did extensive research research before um, leading up to this live stream, and you just still can't find it even from sellers like Micro Center for $300, although that is what its MSRP is rated for. But um, you know, if you want the sim if you want the fastest CPU for gaming, that's not even here, fam. You can go and even drop it down to say at 9600K. For $219 is the example we used here. And then you have, oh, you got to find it. There we go. Because that's the, that's one of the visual aids that were stolen from us, fam. Base your CPU on your needs, okay? Base your CPU on your needs. That's going to be very different than you, I, myself. I create content. I stream. So I need a multi-core CPU to help improve, you know, the content creation workflow and speed up the delivery of content essentially. But do you need eight cores, six cores, or four? Do you need hyper threading or, you know, simultaneously multi threading? It really depends on your individual needs. Remember, clock speed is the key, but, excuse me, clock speed is the key. Clock speed is the key. Clock speed is the door. IPC is the key. Okay. It's not always about when you're making the determination of what CPU is right for your needs. It's not always about the clock speed that you should look into. Knowing what the IPC is, knowing what IPC is, is just as important. And if you weren't here for that segment, because that's if we have a few people join us um, as we're going through each of the five tips and of each of the five tips. But even if you don't know what IPC is, IPC essentially stands for instructions per cycle. And the analogy, the way I broke the comparison down is I said IPC could be compared like this. Clock speed is the door. IPC is the key. The performance is what is hitting behind the door. The two literally need to be executed in tandem and able to unlock that performance, okay? Your clock speed is measured in hertz. So you have, I'm sorry, gigahertz, because if your clock speed runs at two gigahertz, as we did the math, or I did the math outside of the live stream and 
put it in my notes because I suck at math, right? Raise your hand if you're good at math, man. Kudos to you. <laughs> but if your clock speed has a frequency of 2 gigahertz, then it can carry out 2 billion cycles per second. And that is what's important, friends and fam, okay? IPC is like miles per gallon for CPUs. It's how much bang you get for your buck. It's not always about having a CPU with the fastest clock speed. Another analogy I made is that you can you can de you can determine which CPU has the faster has faster IPC, right? And that's you take two two CPUs that have similar core um, core structures. For example, let's use our 5600X because six cores were in at one point. Now it's like eight cores are what's popular these days. But six cores are what was in. Um, before the advent of temp generation, before the 10900K came on the scene, and you know AMD got spicy with the 12 core 24 thread 3900X over on Zen 2, but six cores is what was had. That's what was in at one point. So you can take the six core 2600, six core 8700K, six core 5600X. And the way you can determine which of those CPUs, because they all essentially can run at the same frequency, that is what's just important. You can run that 2600X at 4, 4 gigahertz. You can run that, um, what did we say, 8700K at 4 gigahertz. And you can run that 5600X at 4 gigahertz. So we are keeping the frequency the same. But one thing we are not going to change that's going to determine which CPU is faster it's going to be the IPC. And if the 5600, which, spoiler alert, it would, the 5600X is displaying that it's perf displaying 7 to 10% more frames on average compared to the 80s, which would be greatly more compared to the 8700K and the 2600. Probably be like 20%. Um, that just means that, that the IPC is so strong in that 5600X because you're eliminating the frequency and being a determinant factor of how many frames the CPU can output. If you increase the uh, frequency of each of those CPUs, yes, it will help them. Will it help them meet the FPS output or the computational output, performance output of the 5600X? No. It may help it kind of, you know, catch up, but it won't help it surpass because the IPC is what's going to be just as important when it comes to unlocking that performance. So hope that hope I'm able to explain IPC in that way. Super confusing, but if you need more instructions on it, always willing to help answer any questions. If you're here in the replay and you made it this far, whew, shout out to our replay viewers and also shout out to those of you who are here with us right now. But that's IPC instructions per cycle. And then the fifth the fifth tip that we had gave that we were just in, or I'm sorry, fourth tip uh, was buying a pre-built gaming PC. Okay. Buying a pre-built gaming PC. Somebody asks, is it even worth it still buying a pre-built gaming PC right now? Or what, what scenario does it make sense to build one? Uh, the Tech-Demic. <laughs> There's no graphics cards that are available at affordable price, right? We priced out a pre-built gaming PC here on the live stream that was $959 that had a 1650 Super, 8 gigabytes of DDR4, and a Ryzen 5 3600 for $959. What makes that deal so good is because a 1650 Super alone, if you tried to configure that system out yourself, a 1650 Super alone is going to cost you um, probably half of that. From the example we saw, we saw one that was 450, we saw one that was five, we saw one that was a little over four. Um, this is why I said go with a slightly older generation CPU because they're not as heavily scalped. Everybody wants the newest, latest, and greatest. So this is why 1660 Ti's and 1660 Supers are still very much going like over $500. Um, whereas you have 9 series and 400, 400 series RX Polaris based graphics cards selling for slightly less than that. A little bit more respectable price point. But um, when buying a, a pre-built gaming PC, consider, um, you know, consider getting the fastest possible CPU for your money. $1,000 may or may not be enough as pricing is, can, you know, it gets worse every day. Okay, $1,000 made it worked out when we did that live stream two months ago, fam. But now it just simply isn't. So expect to spend about 20% plus more on top of that, right? We were looking at systems within the $1,200 range that were coming with dedicated graphics cards, 1660 Super on up. But starting at at least a 1650 Super, which we have one here. If you're interested, any way to see, you know, and that's something I've got to maybe keep surfacing up, although you can't buy it. 
maybe somebody wants to know how the 1650 Super is able to perform. Maybe I need to do a rever, uh, uh, you know, a 2021 look at the 20 at the 1650 Super. If it's really an option that's viable here in terms of getting a system with a dedicated video card. Okay. And again, we talked about if you don't get the parts of system or configuration you were searching for, then don't worry because you can make upgrades in the future to enhance your experience or improve the aesthetic of your build. If you say you don't like the case it came in or you don't like the keyboard it came with or you don't like the cooler it came with, like your cooler is perfectly fine. This isn't like a, you say, lab, why do all upgrades have to bring some level of performance? That's not necessarily true, fam. I'm not saying that. You can buy a pre-built. Let's say you don't like the air cooler that comes along. Maybe you want to overclock and you still had to get a pre-built PC. Maybe you want to overclock. Perfectly fine with one or two and improve the aesthetic of your build. Although that falls under the criteria of also enhancing your experience because with that improved cooling solution is going to get improved thermals, which is going to, even if it's in a minimal form, is going to translate to improved performance. May not be a lot, but it will. Okay. But this can be a slow burn, slow burn because um, you don't want to upgrade your pre-build immediately after you get it. That's not what I'm saying. Buy your pre-build, it comes in the mail, and then two weeks later you're like, oh, I gotta upgrade my cooler. No, let this be a slow burn. If it's not the like an example where I just laid out where you want to improve the uh, change, like an aesthetic part, a certain aesthetic feature of your system, right? The order of succession I would start with is like RAM. PSU storage, RAM PSU storage, maybe RAM storage, even PSU, if it already has, uh, you know, a dedicated video card. Okay. Consider only a PSU upgrade when you're ready to say upgrade a core component, CPU, or maybe graphics card. Okay. CPU or maybe graphics card. And then for our fifth and final tip that we were giving out here today for our weekly live experience, and that's everybody's topic, and that was graphics card or no graphics card. Do you even need one? It really depends on the type of games you want to play. If you want to play graphically demanding games and you already applied tip number one and you did the research and you said, ah, well, this game requires me to have at least a uh, GTX 780 on higher. So I know a GTX 670 is not going to be not going to have enough horsepower to run this game. Maybe I can get a 960. Right, maybe I could pick up a GTX 960. Right, that's the one downside to, in this area. You're going to have to compensate. You're going to have to compensate, especially if you don't want to pay over $400 for a GTX 1060 or over $450 for a GTX 1070. RX 570s, four gigabyte variants. I've been seeing them go for between $200 to $250. So if you're on the market for a graphics card and you need a recommendation to start with, do your research on an RX 570 four gigabyte perfect not perfect but it's a great 1080p graphics card i did test the card out but it was in year one so a lot of the games experienced patches and updates and i didn't test some of the modern games but maybe there's a graphics card i want to get my hands on because there are a lot of them out there you may end up with a mining variant but an older generation gpu can be a good stopgap until the market returns to normal until the market stabilizes that could be six months from now which given how fast this year has blown by us. Think about it, Laugh Fam. Six months from now, we're going to be almost in the next quarter. We'll be in quarter three of a lot of Nvidia and AMD's, uh, you know, next next quarter of profit. So a lot can change six months from now. Okay, we're not talking about you marrying, being married to that graphics card for a long time. No, this is a stopgap measure. Okay, if you're not familiar with that term, it just means this is something that could just kind of fill in the gap, stop the gap. Band-Aid on the bullet wound, for lack of better words. But this will very much still improve your performance, especially if you're, you don't want to game on integrated graphics or you're also in an upgrade scenario where you want to upgrade to. Maybe you're on a super older generation graphics card, like a R7 270, right? Or a GTX 670 and, below, and seventh generation and lower. So the used market could very much be a much, much better solution for you versus, say, going with integrated graphics. But if money is a concern and you can't go with integrated graphics, we talked about how you can jump on the integrated game with a Vega 11 
right? Four cores, eight threads, Vega 11, 11 computational units, low TDP, so you can get over, you get away with using the stock cooler, and it'll come in at a very low cost to entry at about $280 for your your base compo components. This is almost like three components in one, fam. This is taking care of your graphics, your motherboard, and your CPU to where you only then need storage, case, power supply unit. Storage, case, power supply unit. Yeah, you just need storage, case, and power supply unit. And you're good to go. And RAM. Sorry, that was the that was the seventh component I was trying to think of. And then you'll be good to go. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be. I said 2400G because it's $200. Fam, that's a low cost. But even then, if you want to level that up and say, nah, I need a little bit more, cuz. Go with the Ryzen 3400G. Okay, that's a $300 CPU. Compare that with a B450 motherboard, you're looking at a $380 uh, platform cost. Very much still viable. And again, what made this combo a better solution or better value for your money, and that's because you can always upgrade, when you upgrade your graphics card, you can also upgrade the CPU at the same time. Intel graphics, while not great, let's just keep it 100. They're not that good. They're, they're, they should be used as a last ditch effort. But if you find yourself stuck on Intel integrated graphics and you're like, you want to go that route where I mentioned where going with Intel with a mod like a 10th generation or 11th generation, 9th generation, it kind of stops there. 9th, 10th, 11th generation integrated graphics for a short, short term, long term solution could work out for you in a way that when you're ready to add a dedicated video card, you already have a fast CPU. Right in the form of 11700K or an i5 11600K or 9900K or a 10900K or a 10700K, you already have a fast CPU. You're just adding a fast or you're adding a dedicated graphics card to the mix, right? That could be in a form of like a 1060 or a 1650 Super. You may need to toggle your settings a little bit to avoid any possible bottlenecks, but depending on what you go with there, you're finding balance. The key is finding balance. And if you can't find balance and you are absolutely positively stuck on integrated graphics, lower your resolution, 720, 1280, 1280 by 720p or 1600 by 900p. Lower either of those, start with 720p high settings, that way you're getting the most out of your system. Or if that's still not enough, not or you know if you have a little bit more headroom, they consider 900p turning all your settings down. And yeah, I mean at face value, PC game is expensive. It is expensive, fam. It, it always has been. It always has been. But woo. Well, that was our five tips you should know before building or buying a gaming PC. Right? We just ran through them all. And if you just now join us, this live stream will be left up as a replay as is. So you can always jump back in and, uh, you know, give the replay a look. She's over should you feel spicy enough to do so. But I highly recommend you do it. But uh, as we close up here, let's close up with house cleaning. Please don't bounce shit. Let's close up with house cleaning really fast here. Let's close up with house cleaning. Super expensive graphics cards. Yay, they are expensive. But earlier, if you missed our housekeeping, we're wrapping up, so we're in house cleaning. If you want to sign up for our Discord, if you want to invite to our Discord, sign up for our email list. The links to all of these things and more are down in the description box below, along with additional content that should you want more PC gaming content. Of course, you can find links and everything down in the description box below. But Unity does start with you. Sign up for our email list. All I need is your email and your first name, okay? The invite link, the Discord invite link went out about a week and a half ago. It's going to go back out again between tonight and tomorrow morning. To those of you who are here and you managed to make it this far on the replay or you're here with me right now and you have yet to sign up, you're like, you know what? I got to do that. And you're going to do that after this live stream. Keep a lookout for the invite link. Check your spam inbox just in case. I don't know why it goes to spam. I, there's nothing spam malicious about the email spam malicious. That's a... I don't think that's a word, but there's nothing spammy about the emails. Um, but just check your spam in, uh, inbox just to make sure that you received it. Um, more updates and new programming as we roll it out here on this channel as a brand as they roll out. Email lists, email subscribers will be notified first. The Discord will go behind a paywall after June 
So I'm trying to give dedicate. I'm trying to give our core members, our core audience, an opportunity first to join. Hence the reason why it's coming in this format. Still behind a wall, but all I need is your email address and your first name. And this way, this helps me, you know, vet the process. And that way, I know if you're signing up, <clears throat> you've at least experienced the content in some form in some shape or form so you're familiar with the community you're familiar with me as a host me as a content creator as opposed to me just you know tweeting the link out in the air or just dropping it in my description box anybody can just come in and you might you know you might be a little toxic or maybe the content and community is not for you we're not i'm not with any of that fan so get the band really fast if you want but the discord is an awesome place and i look forward to engaging with everyone everybody um <clears throat> outside of the content and one thing i like about the discord community is that it can uh excuse me it can exist <clears throat> even without me being there unlike here if we all want to get together fellowship and talk it has to be in the form of a live stream or in the form of a video but um here in the discord community you're free to just jump in and the either PC gaming channel or the general chat convo channel and just say hi. We're, we talk about literally anything in a general chat, but it's it's, it's, the, it's the exclusivity behind it that makes it so special. So if you're here now and you're not in there, go sign up now. Leave. Yeah, you have my permission. Go. I will not be upset if I see the number of the viewers drop a little bit. Um, if you're not signed up for it, go ahead and head there now. And then, of course, our merch, which we have stickers, fam. Can you believe it? We got stickers. So even if you want to support your boy on a very small scale, buy a sticker. Buy a sticker, take a picture. 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 But no, seriously, buy a sticker. Anything you buy, you take a picture of it, tag me on social media, and I will reply to you with a uh, customized video reply. Like, you know, I pick my phone up and be like, yo, shout out to Blank for, uh, for you know, picking up the merch. You look good, fam, or you're going to look good, whatever the case is going to be. Um, take a picture of the merch, and if you've already bought merch in the past and you did not do that, still very much, take a picture of your merch and tag me on any of the social medias. Obviously, if it's obviously if it's not on um, Twitter, I will not be able to resend a reply message, and I wouldn't make an individual Instagram post every time to do that. But um, you know, if you tag me on your Instagram, you don't have Twitter, I will still come over to your uh, Twitter and thank you very much over there. The the merch really supports the, supports the channel in a small but significant way, as all of our merch, the lab wear, is priced affordably because i want to make it accessible to as many people as possible here in this community but i have my favorites i really love the, the plug hood, hoodie i gotta give me this hoodie it's getting hot here where i'm at so i may have to consider you know the t-shirt but I, I really like the hoodie this is really dope so yeah if you want to know how you can support the channel um because we're not monetized yet so if you want to know how you can support the channel even a small way buy a sticker you know it goes a long way even versus a monetized view um, buy a sticker and of course we will have things like channel memberships coming up where you can support the channel in a reoccurring basis and even get a little bit more value out of it so we also got mugs and we also have more hardware based items like this coming up in the future so if you want to support feel good look good playing and feel good gaming head over to the merch section check out the merch 499 sticker 499 sticker i mean we know come on slap it anywhere take a picture of it and then, of course, you can head over to the website, which is an extension of the content. You can find the merch, the videography, my social medias. Contact me in an informal way if you want to tell me how bad I suck at creating content. How bad I suck at creating. <laughs> I'm not even good at that. But you can contact me if you want to even, to, in all seriousness, to provide constructive and destructive criticism. It's all good. Um, all good there. Um, learn more about me and I say this every time I'm not going to click on it right here right now during the live stream I'd much rather you go over there and read a little bit more about me if you want to know more about me as a person um, But yeah, check out the website the traffic there helps the channel in a significant way And you can also always find out what the most current or most recent upload is by uh, finding the first video on the home page and of course each live stream is up after it's aired here as well. So if you don't want to head to YouTube or you don't get the notifications or it's still very much a little muddied, head over to the website and uh, find it all over there. 
but yeah all of these and more you can find the link down in the description box below i i can't stress it enough join our email list so you can come over into our discord i really want to get our discord community on and popping but yeah but all right so there you go Whew. <clears throat> well fam i think the ride is slowly coming to an end right I know we lost a lot of people, and I can't do my end shout out normally like I like to because I got to use Streamlabs chat, which I got to admit is actually a little easier to just scroll up. But uh, early on, before the live stream started, um, we were a little late, so we had like Crazy One K, who's Bryce, and Thunder, who's LT, my son, Tricion, you all know Tricion, and Z Fluent, who's Zion, and Bad Habit. Man, I appreciate all you guys being here so early on. I get excited when the, the viewership is high before the live before the live stream starts. But um, you know, there was a delay in the start because the, the moment I was getting ready to hit go live here in Streamlabs, um, I saw that the restream chat like went out and on my window here, and then next thing I know was like, bam! It was like cannot reconnect. The moment I was getting ready to go live, so I had to restart the router, reconnect the router, reopen Streamlabs, and so we did start off at about 10, 15 minutes late. So I do apologize. But Crazy One K, Thunder, Tricion, Z Fluent, Bad Habit, Mrs. Moderator. Shout out to our moderator. Um, let me see, XLRA Gaming, who is Cliff, Ron Richards, Myron. Shout out to Myron, Cliff, Bad Habit, Tricion. The name Kev, who was new, we, we had the opportunity of welcoming a newer viewer who also subscribed, which is awesome, which if you just, if you just not join us and you have a chat, either on your way in or your way out here, still very much give this stream a like. It's going to help get it in front of more replay viewers after it's already went live. Um, let me see here. Who else? Who else? Let me make sure I also don't miss any questions because I hate missing questions. I really do. I hate saying hate because I hate, hate, hate using the word hate, but I hate missing questions. But uh, the name Kev, let me see who else we had. I believe that's it. Sparta Rules, of course, it was always good to see my guy Sparta Rules. Ant, Ant and some of, some of you are longtime viewers and longtime uh, just viewers of the channel or viewers of the live show. Because remember, if you, <clears throat> another shameless plug, if you haven't yet, um, watch the anniversary live stream. I would love to get as many views on that as possible. I'm always I'm happy with if a video or live stream even gets one view or if one person sat in to hear me talk. I'm like, hey, cool. <laughs> it's like a one on one tutor like scenario. But, um, you know, the more views, the better. I just I had an awesome blast on the anniversary live stream. And uh, I know a lot of you who are here present today or if you're still here now, I know some of you are present for that live stream or you watched the replay. But, um, you know, share it with the mate, share it with a friend who you think could benefit from joining our community or could benefit from the content if you think that my content is will vibe and resonate with them um start there start with the anniversary live stream um i kind of pour my heart out so if you haven't seen it you definitely want to jump over and see that the champion zone john it was good to see you john your highness was always good to see your highness your highness where you at your highness you still with us and i believe that's everybody oh and zeisty can't forget my guy Zeisty and or my, my friend Zeisty and of course Tiger Nation 87. Tiger Nation 87. It was great seeing all you guys come on board. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. If I don't have any more, if you guys don't have any more questions, I think that's about all of the necessary plugs. I'm gonna get in <clears throat> for this live stream. Before we go, again, I do want to apologize for flexing the live stream. Um, you know, creating Creating content can uh, be a struggle at times, right? Like you'll be in modes where or things happen in life and you have to take care of those things first. And here when I'm on a live stream, I just want to make sure I'm in the right state of mind. I'm in the right mindset to go live, not just going live for the sakes of going live. You friends and fam don't benefit from me doing that, okay? You benefit absolutely nothing for me just going live for the sake of going live rather i have something personal <clears throat> that's popped up or has sprung up or you know i'm dealing with insecurities or as a creator there's so much that goes into it that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like have a session with my community because at the end of the day it doesn't matter whatever the sacrifice is it's worth it but um you know uh, before I had said that we weren't we weren't going to flex any more live streams and I still very much stand by that 
Um, I, I wrestled with the idea anyway yesterday before making a call. But um, I did know that one of the benefits of flexing is that we can start our live streams earlier and it's able it allows me to stay live longer for those who need to come in and out who maybe couldn't make it at two, but maybe you can make it at four and vice versa. Maybe you can make it at four, but not at two to even still come on in and retain some of the value that's being shared. And I see you say uh, you too, bro. PC Lab fam. Yeah, man. Same to you, John. You're certainly welcome. Um yeah, definitely. I appreciate everybody coming on, and and uh, it it bothered me that we didn't have our live show because talking to the community in this way is very much still one of my favorite things to do as a creator on this platform anyway. But um, you know, bad habits. Thank you for another great live. Yeah, bad habits. It's my pleasure. Bad habit. I know you saw the uh, anniversary live stream. I know you was. I saw you watch the replay. Champion Zone. John, you haven't seen it yet. You want to watch a good story? Watch the. Uh, if you got a Netflix hour, I call it a Netflix hour. If you got a Netflix hour, give the uh, anniversary live stream a watch. It's not in the traditional format, but if you got a Netflix hour, give the anniversary live stream a good look. He's over. But all right, we said our dues. We thanked everybody for coming in. Yeah, uh, bad habit. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. The live streams continue to work on it, getting better with the live streams. Getting better with the content, getting better at life, becoming better, get better people, being a better person, because that's what it's all about, right? But thank you for everybody who came out. The ride is coming to an end. Thanks for hanging out here during the Inside the Lab weekly live experience. See, Bad Habit says, yeah, I, I, uh, I miss it, but I watched the replay. Yeah, it's cool. Um, because we normally didn't go live and it was like a special live stream. Um... It was a special live stream. You didn't really miss much because it wasn't formatted traditionally how we have our live shows. Bad habit. It's bad habit. I'm, forgive me if I, I might, if I came across your full name. You don't have to drop it to us an hour in the chat, but definitely come into the Discord, man, so we can get on first name, first basis with each other. Because that's the vibes how it is over on the Discord. We on first name, first basis. <laughs> I mean, we could be like that here, but the Discord, again, it's like our community within our own private neighborhood, man. It's pretty awesome. And, of course, Bad Habit, being a longtime viewer here on the channel, I would, of course, would love to have you on. So come on with it. But, yeah, the replay is – there's there's a lot of replay value there. The anniversary live stream is not structured like a normal live stream. I don't address the, the chat like I have been here where I'm like, oh – I have it says I missed the, I watched the replay. I didn't really do that, so the the anniversary live stream is just formatted. <clears throat> excuse me, a little better, just straightforward. So, but all right, guys, we're a little over five and a half hours in. So, we'll throw the credits up. If you haven't seen them, do enjoy the credits. I'm gonna hang out for the chat just in case anybody has any more questions. But thanks for hanging out during this YouTube live. <laughs> I do hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, y'all know the vibes. Be easy. Whoa, wrong window. <laughs> wrong window. There we go. Hey yo. Everybody enjoy your evening and most importantly enjoy the after credits. For our email list, I dropped, <clears throat> excuse me, I dropped the link in the chat. Sign up for our email list, no no, so you can join our Discord link so we can call you something other than no no PP. Okay, no no.
Yeah, sign up for our email list. And I do believe you did see the anniversary live stream. But I'm gonna drop that link in there too for anybody else who would like to head over there and raid that video to give that a watch. But no, no. Tell me if you're still with me. Tell him. Tell me if you're still with us in the chat, man. Let us know if you're still busy this whole time. I like to salute you and send you off as well. No, no. Appreciate you being here. Hey, Anthony, part of Rules 1993. Same to you. See you later, brother. Anthony, you're in the, you in the Discord? Yeah or nay? I'm not sure. I'm working on trying to uh, put the names, the names of the faces that we're, that we're having. But are you in the Discord? Yeah or nay? And if you are, you might be in there in the different names. I don't think I see your Sparta Rules hand in there. But part of my ignorance, sorry if I'm wrong, but if you're not in there yet, come on in. Love to have you in there too, bro. Peace out. And that's anybody else that's just now joining us. I just want to add that I dropped the anniversary live stream link over in the chat. Just head over there. Give the anniversary a watch. If you got a Netflix hour, it is good times. Get a recap, get a year in the recap, get a year in how we done in year two as we are already officially in year three. Let's go. And I, I will do that because I I'm gonna give you a vote of confidence here. I'm pretty sure you're on our email list. Um, as the email list invite did go out, so if you are on the email list and you want to check it now, head over there. But do be do make sure you're on the email list because sending going out to email invitees first. But uh, you've been around the community for a while, so I will either way make sure you get that invite link, brother. Okay, but obviously the more the more the merrier on the email list. Appreciate you, bro.